Aloha, everybody. We are now live. Well, TF Nation pre TF Nation 2023 live stream. I am indeed joined by, unfortunately, Tony. Um, <laughs> I'm joking, man. I love you, real. <laughs> Tony from <laughs> FG1. Um, Hello, you uh, insouciant long pigs. <laughs> and then Gareth for uh, Alpha Prime 88 as well. How's it going, everybody? And Paul from the Transformers The Show. Hello, thanks for having me on. <clears throat> Currently there's nobody watching, but give it time. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so just, yeah, so the whole idea of this is just to hang out, just talk TF Nation, anything, any pickups, anything general like that, really. It's just that type of chat. So um, if anybody wants to take anything away or anybody wants to talk about anything specific, go for it. Oh, I've got one person watching. We've got Jinxed in the chat. Evening words. And we've got Welsh Chris as well. Um, oh, America's ass himself. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got two people in there. So right, so we'll go, we'll go around everybody and we'll just uh, talk a little bit about what your thoughts are, what, what you're looking forward to the most with TF Nation this year. Um any bots that you're looking for. So we'll go with Tony first and take it away, Tony. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing all everybody there. Is is the primary thing? Let's be honest, um, yeah. because you know the, I've never met a finer group of sexual bastards in my life. And, and <laughs> everyone that attends, but especially me, of course. But um, but it's just it's it's, it's the, oh, I'm so excited. You know, I can't even, I can't, I've got no words. But you know, and yeah, it's just going to be great seeing you guys and just sitting in the bar talking shit. You know, you know what I mean. Several bees oh, in here, and, you know, just having a just having a laugh and 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 stuff. But pickups, though, it, it's just see what they've got really at the minute. You know, there's nothing on my radar that I must own apart from um, Legacy Dragstrip and Wild Rider because they've eluded me for this amount of time. Um, but other than that, there's just probably first stop is always is Typhoon, and you must buy from Typhoon, and uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just see what G1s and sort of latest G1s, you know, like Pretenders, Action Masters, that sort of gear. And just see where it goes from there, really. And then, um, you know, meet Sue Blue as well and get my uh, epic, epic DVD signed. <clears throat> you know, get this one signed with added to uh, that lot. You can see it. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you can find the lost piece. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Nice one. So, Gareth, do you want to talk a little bit about what you're looking forward to and such? Yeah, well, I'm the same as Tony. Like, obviously, uh, I've had a not so great year myself, and I'm looking forward to just sort of having a nice blowout chatting Transformers with a great bunch of fellas. Like, so uh, every year that I've been, obviously, I didn't make it last year, but every year I've been has been absolutely fantastic and enjoyable. Uh, so really, I didn't know it was going until probably about a month or so ago, and then that's how I got the the nod to go, and I was like, definitely. So <laughs> I've been absolutely buzzing for this last month, whatever. Um, as far as bots, probably, uh, if there's maybe that fans hobby stalker, that if if they manage, they somehow someone with you know Kapow or someone prime time to, prime time toys is there. If someone unmanaged to get a couple of them in, I'll maybe go for that. Uh, there's nothing really massively on my want list as such. Um, I don't know, maybe a box G1 Grimlock. And as Tony said as well, Toy Fu, there's always something. There's always a, some little uh, pickup there that you would never have thought you would have seen. They always seem to find some great figures. like So there'll be a pickup there too for me. Um, oh, Toy Fu are just amazing at doing that. Mm. Oh, big time. Like every time, <clears throat> no, every year I've went, there's always something. Always, and mm. I think one of years I had two or three things off their table. Like, um, as I say they always seem to find all the, the really, really nice or rare to find sort of stuff. And the same as you, Tony, I've got my 86 DVD that yeah. has got signed, not as many signatures as you, mind you, mm. but uh, I've got quite a few signatures on it. So I'll take that and try and get Sue Blue to sign that. So that's <clears throat> pretty much it for me. Like, sweet. So, Paul, do you want to? Carry on with yeah, that. just 
Oh, well, I'm so excited to see you guys. Excited to see you. Like, I, just, I was just thinking, like, the, one of the best bits is when you first get there, mm. I kind of, like, get tunnel vision and, like, try and join the queue. I don't want to look because I don't want to see who's there and spoil it already. And I remember last year, like, I saw Ian <laughs> arrow fire. He's like, hi. I was like, shut up. I'm in the queue. I'm going to do this. <laughs> and you get to the end. And then check-in takes, like, 10 hours sometimes, doesn't it? So mm -hmm. <laughs> it did last year um, for me to go ages. Because oh, there was so many people oh, last year. Yeah, it was some huge, the biggest queue I've ever seen last year. I think that was the most they've ever had um, at TFM. But yeah, I saw, I saw my friends and I was like, oh, waving to them, get this queue done. And then uh, it's just the best bit, isn't it? When you get to finally embrace them and um, have a beer with them. But in terms of what I want to pick up, um, I always used to have like one or two things I'd really want to, aim and try and get but this year and last year probably i've just been a bit more floaty like there was a robot i wanted recently and I, i'm not going to pick it up because i'd rather save that 60 quid take it to tfn and see what i get and mm -hmm. like toy foo is just oh it's, it's like a gateway drug isn't it because i never used oh, to have absolutely. any beast wars stuff and like, i'm on the toy foo and i've picked up a rhinox and i've never had that before of course like, oh, it was the thrilling 31 mm. loved it and i picked up a few more so uh, i don't know what robots Toy food will get me into this year, but um, I'm sure they'll take me down some <laughs> dirty alleys and I'll be thankful for it. Oh, yeah, I think Davidson's just got a knack for doing that, hasn't he? Yeah, it's <laughs> so sweet. Um, I think I'll just carry on with that then. So, to be honest, I don't go with a um, how can I put this? I never go with a shopping list as per se, you know, because I've learned my lesson from the first like two ever. Auto assemblies, uh, where you know when you kind of get like hit by that that like you go through the into the dealer room for the first time and you kind of get hit by that feeling and you just kind of like I've never seen so many toys in my life. Yeah, it's like a and kid then, in a candy store, isn't it? About, like, quite literally. Uh, yeah, and then about a thousand pound later, you're like, I can't afford food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, been there, done that, son. Yeah, <laughs> I think everybody's done that in the first yeah. year. I did that two years on the trot. Um, because yeah. I just kind of just completely, yeah. So now, nowadays, I try and kind of just well, nowadays, I'm a lot more, <laughs> a lot more thingy with my money when it comes to that now. But, um, but no, I mean, there's nothing, nothing particular on my radar to be honest, looking for anything. Uh, I'm always on the lookout for anything Beast Wars. I love the base, Beast Wars basics toys, uh, anything obscure or really weird, you know, like these little guys. You know that I got that guy from TFN last year. I forgot my guy's name though. It was off. T it was off Toy Fu of all places. Don't know if you can see it. You must buy from Toy Fu. Yeah. I've forgotten the guy's name though. And somebody in the chat might probably tell me. But no, I, I like the obscure little bots. So I'm always like, looking for them. Um, oh yeah, and I got more. Um, this little guy as well at Minicon TFN Minicon. Oh, Optimus Miner. Optimus Miner. Miner. Um, <laughs> but no, so I'm not looking for anything specific. I just like I love my Beast Wars, obviously. So I'm always on the lookout for anything Beast Wars. And then uh, <clears throat> I would like an SS86 Rimlock, um, <laughs> most because I've seen the prices on eBay for him at the moment, and he's like over 100 quid, cool. with or without wheelie. Um, so yeah, um, I'm, I'm, go I'm gonna see if I if he's not too badly priced. I mean, even if he's just in a little baggy on like Space Bridge or something, I'd, I'd be happy. Um, but no, but that's pretty much pretty much that for that. But I mostly go now mostly for the people. Yeah. Um, TF Nation is kind of like my social thing throughout the year. It's like I don't see many of these. Unfortunately, I see Tony quite regular because he's only down the road from me. I can't get away from him. Um, I love you, really. <laughs> but no. no um... <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it's for me, it's just it's, it's for the people. Um, you know, I've made some great friendships, thankfully, <laughs> going to these things ever since 2010, right through to now. And uh, those two years where we didn't have a physical event, you know, yeah. something felt really wrong in those two years, you know, even mm. though we tried to do the best we could. I've never felt no. so depressed in my life, those two two TFN weekends. You know, I mean, yeah. hats off to yeah. Billy and the gang for putting stuff on because they didn't have to do anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, it wasn't the same. And, and you know, watching... it was Although it was 
quite fun. I mean, I'm sat here, I've got my me, me TV and my computer here. So I've got the, the main stuff going there and then watching Toy Fu Live going, want this, want this, want this, you know. But it still wasn't wasn't the same, you know. It's not like you go down to the bar and, you know, you just, what you've been buying, cool, they're cool, you know, you know, and then getting a few beers in you and just nice. I don't think you don't have the atmosphere. It's yeah. the atmosphere, you know, with all the people around you and everyone talking about robots. And yeah. That, the, all right, you can put on. It was good that they put that on. It gave you something mm. for yeah. that weekend, but it just isn't that atmosphere that you get at TFN. Like it's. And last year, though, I know you weren't there, but last year, I've, the, the 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 energy in that room, it was crazy. It's like because yeah. we missed each other so bad, uh, and it was just like you know you could have harnessed it and powered a walk car. You know what I mean? That's how much energy. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was just walking around smiling, weren't they? Everyone was just literally oh, and <laughs> we're alive hugs again. And kisses and uh, you know, gropes by grown men, and, you know, <laughs> and those young west, you know. <laughs> but, I'm uh, a bit too excited, dude. I can't help it. Yeah, but you know, but it was just like I said, the love in the room was just palpable. It was crazy, but good crazy, you know. Yeah. And yeah. and it's the daft little things that I enjoy, like watching Transformers the movie again. You know, but in a big screen with loads of other people who lo know it as well as I do, you know, singing yeah. on to the songs singing and, and rhyming and, off the lanes and yeah, and, and doing Mystery Science Theater and somebody shouted, Hot Rod did nothing wrong and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Fantastic <laughs> fun, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, but, um, you know, it's the daft things like that. And, you know, and, it's, and, and like I said, going around the dealer's room and finding something that you never thought you'd ever see and go, what is that? It's on your fiver. I'm having it, you know. Like them mm. last year, them was it off uh, in demand. I had them weird combiners with the shark and the vending machines and all them. Yeah, yeah. I've seen loads of people had them from videos. Like it was like the thing they buy last year. For yeah, because they were so stupid <laughs> and so ridiculous. Like two, sorry, two things that shouldn't go together, like a shark and a vending machine. Put them together. <laughs> oh, it's you know crazy, but amazing. But you know, it's oh, like oh. And there's like a hamburger and a and a taxi cab. You know, and, and yeah. the beat on stuff. That was great. It was great fun. Only in Japan would you found something like that, really. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and TFN, it seems, as well. And then obviously the, kiss, the famous Kiss players came from Japan as well. Yeah. <laughs> this year, so on the Saturday night this year, we've got um, a gig, haven't we, to go to? There's um, Jay Hans doing um, yeah. a rock gig. And like that's quite exciting, because we haven't really had that since Stan Bush. No, yeah. Yeah. Out and Mosh out. So I'm quite excited by that. Yeah, yeah she's good as old as old Jay Han. Known Jay Han a few years now. She's a good lass. Yeah, she's good. I mean, it's going to be interesting. I mean, um, what what exactly she does? Obviously, she, she I think she I might have like a guitar thing going on, so it might be like an acoustic electric kind of deal. But yeah, it'll be fun. Um, yeah. I actually, I've I've seen a couple of her videos and covers and that on her channel, but um, I haven't really seen her in person performing. Like, so it's going to be. Interesting. <laughs> Underway. Sorry, it's my sorry, Tony. That's Trek. That's not Transformers. I'm gonna have to mute you now. Yeah, sorry. Oh shit, everyone. I have to mute it. Sorry. <laughs> so professional. Yeah. Uh, ah, I thought it was Welsh Chris. Sorry. Uh, you, you you can boot me from my own stream. Um, but no, Christopher Johnson's just come in saying I've uh, never made a TF Nation. Been struggling with my mental health for a long time now. Getting depression got me to start TF and Free Puck. Formerly TF Repuck. Um, one day I'll have the confidence to make it. Dude, yeah. you should come because th there is so. I mean, there is. There's a few people that have. I've had stories very similar that couldn't get the, mm. the courage to go, and, and then it was just like, "What was I doing? It, it's the best thing mm -hmm. ever, and I've enjoyed it." And they've come every year since then. So yeah. Yeah. it just takes that first step. But we're all, you know, um, lovely, wonderful people, except for John, and. Um, Okay, sir. You know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm only joking. But we are uh, a bunch of lovely people. We all love plastic robots. There's no malice in the room. And nine yeah. times out of ten, you know, you go, what have you got there? And you're into a conversation. You've met some yeah. five new friends, you know? 100%, yeah. You'll not be there for ten minutes until you sit down at a table or someone speaks or whatever out there and you're sucked straight in. Yeah. It's, 
definitely. There's no there. elitism like, either, is there? No. Like, that's one of the things I've been to con- um, conventions before, like PlayStation ones and Star Trek ones. Star Trek ones aren't too bad, but when you get to like the hardcore, like the inner core who know every single thing about Transformers, at the mm. end of the night, there's no one sitting there like, going, oh, we don't know you, we're not going to talk to you. They involve you and chat to you. There's no elitism. It doesn't matter if you don't know anything about Transformers. You nope. just turned up because yeah. you um, well, share your love. The collection is three figures yeah. or 3,000 figures. There's no... Most people go, hey, have you got that? That's cool. I've always wanted one of those. And then again, you're yeah. in, you're convers- yep. conversing with somebody. You know, although I did it's my little bit of it. elitism just one time is when I paraded my Black Zark through the bar. <laughs> 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 you have a Black Zark? I have an OG Black Zarak. One moment, oh, I shall grab no him. No way. Was that <laughs> last time? I remember good. you getting it. I remember you walking around with it. Uh, I remember been... watching the video afterwards, too. You're like... <laughs> awesome. Oh. <laughs> there he is. The gold's still there. He is. He's, still... <laughs> yeah. he's remarkably OK. Hang on, let me just put him down. Can you, I can just ima- I can just imagine the post like it comes over from work one day and it's just kind of just fallen off the off his oh. shelf somehow and it's just like him well going if that, that happened <laughs> the creator where Hull used to be <laughs> <laughs> I'd go super saiyan angry but no he's remarkably he's a lot more steady than people think he is it's just all the accessories are gold plastic and the um the joints in his tail you know the big ratchet joint scorpion yeah. cars. Those are all gold plastic, so you have never transformed him. He just stands there behind uh, Star Saber. So. No, yeah. he's just he's a nice big trophy just standing up there. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, off Toy Phil as well. I thought I'd never, never, ever own one, and there he is. I know, where did they get that? £22 bargain. If you watch <laughs> the video they did, I think 2018 with you, and they're opening all them boxes, and there's like Star Sabers come flying here, here, here there in 20. That Black Zarek is the one that I just showed you. Sweet. Yeah. Well, yeah, I just, I'm just going to kind of just alliterate on what Chris was saying there um, about confidence, mental health issues, and then we'll move on with. I've got a couple of other people as well. I've got Jinx there as well. But, um, but yeah, I, I completely agree with where it's coming from with the whole mental health depression thing. I do suffer from depression and anxiety, um, but through going to conventions like 2010, I was incredibly nervous. I was very, very nervous. I was literally that guy in the corner of the bar on my own, just me and Sam, both of us pretty much. Um, I, I've described this feeling before when I've gone, when I first got, went into the bar and I saw everybody sat down having a laugh. And this was back in, uh, when it was off New Street, this was the Holiday Inn Hotel when it used to, Baltimore Assembly used to be there. And um, so I walk in and then I just get, kind of get hit by this like invisible wall. I don't know what it is, but I kind of like I just got this jerky feeling. And I was like, a very uneasy feeling came over me. So I'm guessing it was like could go on for a panic attack or something. And then I just kind of like just looking around and very silent. But, you know, but eventually people started coming up to me that recognized me on YouTube, my videos and things. And then I started, like, the first people I met coming through the door to the, just checking in was Jared Wolfgang One, uh, R- Roddy Wave 666, Johnny, the Dwarf Porn Star, as he used to be called. The Dwarf well. Porn Star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, what, what a ledge. And Magic Man Jamie. And they were the first three people I met coming through the door, and they kind of like made me feel a little bit more, having a laugh and a bit better. So as soon as I went into, into the bar, I had my little episode, and then I eventually started talking to people but for going every single year since 2010 it has mess- massively helped me with my meeting new people for the first time mm. um coming up michelle more being a little bit more able to approach people nowadays i'm just if somebody comes up to me that i've never i don't recognize i'll just stand there and talk to them for hours you know it's that i'm completely universal flip as i used well, to you've do got you've got the perfect icebreaker as yeah. well it's what have you been buying? That's a cool figure. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or where yeah. did you get that? What table did you get that from? You know, it, it's so you've got your perfect icebreaker. You're already there. You know, you don't need to introduce you or anything. But I don't know, it is weird yeah. though. It's being recognized off YouTube. Yeah. You know, I thought that, 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 autographs was weird for me. You know, I'm not taking <laughs> me on but you know. I, I had to get an autograph, knows it. And 
Yeah, that'll be, be £27.50, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's me aging on the phone. It's just overhead it. That's going to be 100 quid. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, I completely get where he's coming from. But uh, I'll move on with the rest now. So we've got... We've got... Is it, is it Dean? Uh, F. Stop Corona at Cornea. I think that's how you pronounce that. Hi, everybody. How's it going? And then we've got Jinx, who's actually named the figure that I put on. Uh, it's uh, Transmetal 2 Iguanus. Oh, there you go. There we go. I, I, I picked him up just out of pure impulse, which you do. And then there's a oh, oh, Beast Wars related, definitely. I'm getting it, as I don't have it. But uh, I do, sometimes you pick up names and you just don't know. <laughs> I just pick up lots and you're like, I have no idea. Uh, Christopher again, I'm just bad with crowded places and new places. I'm sure I'll make it one year. Lots of people I want to meet in person. What I would say to that is, if uh, I'm pretty sure there will be a TFM Minicon again in the future. They might maybe announce something at the event itself. Maybe if they did decide that. So if there's going to be one in March again next year, that's only a one-day event. That might be best for you to just ease into it and then possibly come to a bigger event if you can do that. Um, because from what my because you didn't go to the minicon, did you, Tony? No, I couldn't afford it at the, at the time. No. So obviously this was the this was the first one in the history of TF Nation, the minicon. So it was much smaller, much smaller venue. The bar wasn't as big, um, but, but obviously Paul was there as well, wasn't he? So you can kind yeah, of you can really get where it come from. Uh, but I think when it comes to people with like uh, phobia of confined spaces if you will and crowded places mm. and stuff. um i think even though it did get a little bit busy at times but if it, it was a lot easier experience for some yeah, it was never frantic before. yeah so i'd say probably a minicon probably might be the best chance to go first off if you can do that um and then move up to a main event also, so. also there's one thing you could do as well if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed a bit stressed you can always go up to your room for a bit and then chill out and then come back down exactly. again you know, that's, there's yeah. always there's always there's always remedies. You know, mm. I think that's the right word to use. But you know, what I'm saying it's it's you know if you do feeling a bit overwhelmed, you know, go for a walk. There's a nice park just nearby. You know, at the hotel or go up to your room for a bit. You know, there's no there's not going to be you know judging if you just need to nip out for five minutes. None of that. And even if you just want someone just to hang out with, like if you just want almost like a buddy. I've always done this. Like I've said to loads of people on mm. Facebook and Christopher runs. I just realised who he is—a brilliant um, Transformers third-party Facebook group. But there's always yeah. like, I would always buddy up if someone came said I'm coming for the first time. Mm. I say, look, just hang out with me for the whole time. I'll, I'll happily do that. Yeah, um, yeah across it. the whole weekend. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Because, because I know straight away, within ten or fifteen minutes, they'll be off chatting away to people <laughs> and introducing. But if you just want that anchor at the start, yeah. that was anchor, not wanker. That anchor at the start. <laughs> then I'm happy to be that anchor for you. Uh, well, so well, loads of people are. And loads of people do that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, that's exactly it. I mean, TF Nation, I found them I in like, even though we're all there for the same thing, Transformers, obviously, but we've all got other things that we like. So, like, if you like, say, I don't know, you're an anime fan or you're a Power Rangers fan, Star Trek, Star Wars, whatever it is, you know, there's always a way to kind of probably get yourself into a conversation. And then obviously, there's people doing board games at Card Against Humanity is a good icebreaker because mm. uh, you can just kind of like get in there and have a laugh, and you can kind of, you know, it's better. Mm. But like I said, there's always an opportunity to just approach people, even if there's a couple of people in the corner talking, playing with toys, you know, it's a good way to get in. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can understand where he's coming from with it all. Yeah. It, it can, it can be a bit much at first, but once you go to these things and you start making friendships, it makes it easier. Uh, where, where are we going now? Christopher again. What are your Grail figures? Question to us all. Man is Studio Cell Unicron and Fans Toys but, uh, School cru- Cruncher. Too good, too good ones there. Uh, so mm-hmm. Tony, do you want to take that one? Well, my holy grail is I've just shown you it's my black Zara. <laughs> <laughs> so I've achieved my life goals. <laughs> no, um, I think now, um, you know, you've got to shoot for the moon. I, I really want a G1 Grandis, you know, but yeah. that's probably not going to happen. So I might have to settle with the Dagwan base, which is basically the same toy, um, from Brave. So, um, yeah, you've got to shoot for the moon, don't you? 
Um, <laughs> and I would like I would like a star convoy as well at some point. Uh, you know, all the rare ones. <laughs> yeah, but Toifu is likely to have them at some stage. You know, if Thu does that video with Toifu and that grandest whatever shows up, your messages. Oh, message, message, message. Yeah, mine, mine. <laughs> Because uh, that's what I did with Black Zarak. I went, mine. <laughs> I want Black Zarak that, uh, that has to give me dibs on it. Yeah. If you see Tony running around, he doesn't do that very often. But if you see him running around like a headless chicken, you know exactly what's happened. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the, he's got the... Um So, Gareth, do you have uh, any grails? Um, not, not really anything um, massive. I mean, well, now that. Robus and Grimlock because I'm never going to be able to afford it. Mm. That's like I, I have Grimlocks all over that shelf there. Um, the latest one there at Spark. Um, Grimlock's just my character. Like, so as soon as I heard Robus was doing one, I was like, ah, definitely getting it. Definitely yeah. thinking it was going to be around the same as the Prime, and then it comes out it's like five, six hundred quid there. And I was just like, mm. yeah, just put me out of this whole run of it. So I maybe speak really, really nicely to the Robeson people maybe when I'm over there, but uh, mm. that would be a grill piece. Or maybe a, a G1 Death Source. I have Star Saber and I have a Victory Leo. So a Death Source would be nice to go with those mm. three. Yeah, I'd like a Death Source as well. Yeah. It, it's always so expensive. Like, so, yeah. uh, it's because it's not so many, you know, they, they breastplate things they're easy lost that's why it's so yeah. expensive and of course it only ever released in japan so exactly but if if the opportunity ever come up probably the one the, one of those two would be pretty cool for so me the thing is though they had one at auto assembly a long time ago and i'm like nah i'm not bothered and then now i'm going don't <laughs> why didn't you buy that it was probably a lot cheaper then too yeah probably it was yeah expensive, but not as expensive as they are now yeah, but, uh, you know, it's one of those things, it's like, you know, when you first go to these things, like John says, you have a list in your head, and it's like, right, I need this, 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 and this. Mm. And of course, you don't find them there. And then you just end up going, oh, I'll have that, I'll have that, I'll have that. And you get some good stuff, don't get me wrong. But it's kind of like, yeah, it's one day I'll get it kind of thing. It's like, I'll, I'm focused on this part first. And then you go, don't, cheaper, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How about you, Paul? Have you ever got any grills? Uh, yeah, I, I probably do. Um, it's not probably a grail because it's probably you can get them. I could go onto eBay and get it now. Is but I'd, I'd love to pick it up. Is the Decepticon Battle Squad the combiner ones, the Micro Masters, which I had mm. when I was a kid, and I've I've got them bits of them, but they've kind of fragmented to about two two different combiners now. But all three of them, I would love to get them. Um, if I saw it, and it probably is a bit grayly, is the Cloud Hot Rod, which was the Fleeing Thirty version of Hot Rod. Oh, um, nice. they released Springer. Yeah. Springer's that's cool. it and it's that's based on the springer mold and yeah. um, i bought it once about it must be about it was before covid i bought it from thailand and it never came um and i couldn't get my money back and i, I must have spent oh. about 100 pounds on it i always wanted it oh, um, so it's kind of soured it a bit it's the only time yeah. i've ever had an issue with something not turning up so i know it's rare and the amount we guys probably buy to have one thing go lost it's just mm. frustrating it's that one so it's a bit of a bit of sweet i've never got it so if i saw that at, um TFN. That feels like the sort of random shit that would turn up on Toy Food. Oh, yeah. like yeah. Inbox um, and hot rod. Uh, so if I see that, um I'll pick that up straight away. There won't be any thinking about it. Definitely. Wait, um, <laughs> uh, I don't know about me. Um I think if, uh, if space wasn't a problem, which is a thing for most collectors out there, <laughs> if space wasn't a problem. Um I'd I'd love to get one of the I think it's a figure that's similar to what he was talking about the massive big Unicron the mate that they released. Um, I think it's the Studio Cell one, is it? The one they're on about? I can't remember. That's now. the third party one. Oh, yeah, and it's, yeah. It's the, awesome. I think it's the one that Alpha's got. Yeah, yeah that one. <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll I'll happily give you five pounds if I can have it. <laughs> <laughs> that's how currently I only have five pounds to my name. Um, well, you're not going to buy much at TFN then, are you? <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, you, just, you haven't got enough for a beer either. There, no, no, you wouldn't even get a beer. No, exactly. I don't think I'll get a, I don't get, I think I'll get a pint of coke either. But, um, well, no, anyway, but uh, but yeah, I definitely said the Unicron there that Alpha's got. Um, would I'd love to, I'd love that, and I'd probably love all the like Fort Max, Grand Max, all that stuff as well. The big, massive bots. 
I'd say probably they're probably the ones I'd love to get, or an entire collection of Beast Wars, which would be also be good. Um, like all the lines, because I'm Beast Wars mad. If you didn't know that already, um, <laughs> nearly every nearly, nearly every video I'm talking Beast Wars uh, at this point, especially when it's like Rise of the Beast coming out and everything. Um, but anyway, so let's move on with what else is saying. Uh, Jinxed again is back. I remember walking walking in uh, early last year with my dad, and he didn't feel confident enough, and I didn't feel confident enough to talk to anyone. Saw someone I recognised, spent time with them, and then made friends, helped my confidence. So yeah, that, yeah. that's the whole right. thing. Be a fan. Jinx has got a, a table in the forge too, doing some artwork and stuff. So yeah, if mm. you're there, definitely stop by his table, check out his artwork. Is yeah, hundred percent. I mean, like I said, I mean it's. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I love the Forge. I think it's a good idea. Um, yeah. Even though they had something similar with Lord's <laughs> Assembly, where they had, like, like a, a little off bit where, like, people that are not as professional artists, but, you know, people trying to get get their foot in the door, if you know what I mean. Um, but then, obviously... I like what they did last year, though. They, they, um, I've had a lot of people going, you know, have tables on the stall going, well, nobody, nobody showed up because it's usually in a little annex room nearby and nobody, you know, goes in. But if it's part of the main hall, people are more likely to see it. And it was last year. And that was an excellent move, I thought. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's nothing wrong with having a little adjacent room, but that's you do for, you know, like the Gundam wing they had that time. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, for the forge, it has to be within within near where you're spending money because you're more likely to go. Hey, what's over there? You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, because I mean, you do a lap of the room, like, and you all go past the tables, like. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, how often have we gone into the the dealer's room, bought a load of stuff, and gone right? I'm going straight to my my room to dump it all. I go to the bar without looking in that room. I mean, I'm guilty of that myself, you know. And it's not anything that I don't. There's nothing in there. I don't want to see or anything. It's just like right. I need to go there. I need to go there. You get stopped by somebody. You know, you know what it is. You, know, you start right. talking, and then you know the next thing you know, you forgot what you were doing. You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's usually me trying to keep um, keep on track with the times for panels and things. Last year, I missed everything. I missed <laughs> every single panel because I was too busy talking to people in the bar. Uh, yeah. I literally, I remember. I remember. I think it must have been the Friday, and I was like, "What time is it? Oh, it's six o'clock. Shit, I missed everything." <laughs> well, I managed to see. Um, there's a triple takeover pod, um, panel they did, which was really fun. Um, mm. they're back again, aren't they? just insane, insane quiz, which I didn't do too badly on last year, to be fair. And then, um, you only think you know, Transformers to tactic, Chris, yeah, Chris McFeely, yeah, yeah, um, good lad, known him a long time as well. Fun, um, fun enough, that's who when I started getting back into Transformers comics more than meets the eye. Yeah, it's actually, him that I bought it. He had like a wee stall inside one of the shopping centers near me. Oh, all right, and, cool. Uh, I that's I started buying my comics off him, and then huh. one day he moved it to another like a comic shop, uh, or a DVD and you know, sort of figures and whatnot shop. And he just had it up there at the back, then selling the comics mm. from there. One day he just wasn't there, and I remember messaging him and saying, Hey, what time are you open today? And he says, I've moved on to bigger and better things, and that's when he. Then I started noticing he was on YouTube. Mm. <laughs> he also does the commentary on that DVD as well. Does yeah, he? Yeah. <laughs> the metronome. Set, yeah, yeah, I got it because I got him. I got him to sign it on on the book booklet there. And also, there's, <laughs> a very, there's a very early auto assembly on the special features of the metronome, isn't there? Not this one, no. But there is on the DVDs. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, very, I remember, very, I remember very, watching that because, funnily enough, obviously this is before I ever went to an auto assembly or convention. Never saw it before. And obviously, I've got the metronome set with the Transformers the movie in it, and a part of that it for years. And I remember picking it up when I was relatively before getting into YouTube and everything. And I'm, I'm watching the special features, and I'm like, auto assembly. I'm like, oh, where's this? This must be an American convention. And then I'm thinking, oh, this everyone's British, everyone's English. And I'm like, this, that's, this is England, and it's auto assembly. I think it was like 2006, seven times. No, I think it's earlier than that. I think it's 2000. Yeah. And... Three, I think, because if you yeah. look carefully, you see a very young, wild Dave Wallace sporting yeah. the most epic, epic of mullets. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, see, you see a very young uh, Calperam. You see Sammy walking around school group, yeah. and then you see a few other people. Um, I've forgotten the name. I forget I was in there, but you see all these people, and I'm like, I've seen these guys on YouTube. Oh my god! And then 
I didn't realize this, and I didn't realize obviously I didn't I'd never met Chris Mc, uh, Chris McFeely until I went to like I think 2010 Auto Assembly, in which he was there and everything. And I, was, and I found out then that he was the guy who comment did the commentary and everything and specials on the on the DVD, and I was like, holy crap. <laughs> It's mad how it all kind of does like a, a complete reversal, complete round trip. You know, you, when, when you're used to something and everything and you watch it back and then you're actually in the room with that person, you're kind of like, this is weird. It's out, out of well, Blake. Yeah, it is a surreal especially, moment. Especially Madness. when you're in the bar, especially when you're in the bar with the voice actors and guests. Yeah. And you're kind of like, there's Grimlock over there, Greg Berger. And I'm like, and then there's Stan Bush at that table over there. And then there's like, yeah, what the hell's going well, on? I, I know exactly what you mean by that. That's yeah. you never thought you'd ever be in the same room as these people here, like, and they just sit like they just sit over there. Yeah, and you can go up it's, and say hello to them or whatever, you know, chat and stuff. Yeah, one just really moments. I one, of the was, the one of the surrealist moments I ever had was the first start with somebody. So they were talking oh. 2009, the first one I went to. And Greg Berger was there. And I'm thinking, you know, I knew that's the reason why I went. And my logic was like, how often am I going to meet a G1 voice actor was my and the reason for going in the first place. And then what he did was he materialised in the bar and then he went round and spoke to every single person in the bar. Yeah. Right? Not like, hi, I'm Greg, thanks for coming, next person, I am Greg, next person, you know. None of that. It was really genuinely interested in you. You know what I mean? And it was such yeah. a surreal moment. And then... Um, later on in the weekend, um, Dave Wallace did a podcast when he used to do um, Moonbase Two. So we did a podcast, and then there's, there's like 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 the fair Mr. of friends. All of a sudden, you know, I've met these people like the day before, and now we're the best of friends. You know what I mean? That's how that's how thing he is. And then you go knock at the door, and there's Greg comes in. It's like shit, and, and, and we're all like. <laughs> Listen, he's got stories and he's telling us about Wally Bear and how he'd got the how he got character and you know he got cast and all that. And he was I, and I'm like, I can't believe I'm sat in an auditorium with all these people from YouTube and Greg Berger. What is happening now? <laughs> Wake up. I'm like, yeah, that's it. But yeah, it was such and then that's the thing, it's sort of like everything that happened after that is just better the one before and I'm not belittling the, the thing before it's just like and this happened and Scott McNeil and this that and the other and then TFN come, rolls around and then they just materialise in the bar and hang out I mean we stood and talked with Venus Terza the year Venus Terza showed up for about seven hours stood outside you know and there was been you know people coming and going and we just sat and talked and she's talking to us like she's known as 20 years you know it's crazy it's Simon, Simon Fairman's like that isn't he just mm. Yeah. Always, it's up for having a drink, stops and chats, and if like the yeah. fact that he remembered that he'd met me before is oh hi Paul, how's it? And you're like, how do you know? How can you remember that you've met me before? That's mental. Yeah. You must yeah, meet also. so many people all the time. Yeah, mm. I know. I mean, Greg, when Greg came back to TFN, um, you know, he, he remembered me, and I'm like, you must see thousands of people. You know, every convention yeah, yeah. that he does, and how can he recognize who I am? You know, but there he is. You know. No, no. I, I had a, I had a bit of a out of worldly experience at TF Nation, and it was the year when Andre Sagaluzo came. Oh uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> Revenge of the Fallen Sad Swipe, and um, and he came as a, as a special guest, and uh, I was just kind of like minding my own business and in the bar as you do, talking to some people, and Andre comes up to me and he goes, "You're nosy, aren't you?" And he shook me hand, and I went. Yeah, what just happened? <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for like a camera coming out from behind something, you know, like, like you're punked kind of thing. Um, I was waiting for that kind of situation and I was looking around myself. And I went, Yeah, I'm nosy. And I went, I, I look, I've seen your videos, seen your vlogs, I love your videos. And I'm like, Eh, I guess I'm on it. Recognize me off YouTube. And then he kind of like says to me, he said, Oh, come to my table tomorrow. Come to my table because I've got a, I've got a message for you and it's just for you. And I went okay. So next day, I go to his table, shake his hand as you do, got off some of the sand off him, and then and I got a picture with him. And then he says, oh, and he whispered to me and he says, oh, Greg Berger says hi. By the way, and I went, <laughs> what? <laughs> and he goes, oh, he's watching the video. And it, it 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 kind of if you I'm not one of these people that walk around with an inflated ego, but I was felt like an ego then. So, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm joking. But no, that was sometimes that does happen because even though they are people in their own right, just because they're voice actors or actors, For every reason, yeah. you know. But it's just it's funny when you're 
you're not the guest of honor they're the guest of honor you don't expect them to see you or understand who you are or whatever but when it happens it's a very weird situation yeah because i've obviously been, i've been to comic cons and stuff out there like it's just not the same and uh, yeah. from some of the people that i've met there that obviously i went there to get stuff signed with them and they're literally just you can tell they're just going through the motion you try they start talking to some of them, like not all of them not all of them obviously but there yeah. is some of them and they just sort of you know they're just they're there to get paid and they just want to get out of there again like they have no interest and in, yeah. but like all the ones that i've seen at tf nation and stuff out there they have all the time in the world they stand chatty mm. uh come up oh, to you and uh nice. they, you, they just make you feel so much more comfortable like uh, I remember because when I went up to Greg Berger at TFN, uh, my first time meeting him, obviously a big fan of Grimlock, and I got up to the table and it was just, <laughs> I couldn't yeah. speak to him. I was like, I wanted yeah. to get stuff signed on. And he goes, uh, he started signing, and he chatted me, and then he goes, Do you want a picture? And I said, I love a picture. He says, Get around here now. I, I thought I was going to do it from one side of the table. He said, No, no, get around here. And he just swung yeah. around me and stuff. Oh, and yeah, then, that's and great. Goes, right. oh, and he just he took the phone, he handed the Hank whoever was next in the queue, and he says, Here, would you take a picture for us? And I guess, uh, it's, it's, just... it's the same way with um, Peter Spellos, he just become everyone's granddad that, yeah, that he, yeah. as well. And he and the weirdest thing is, he looks like everyone's granddad, which is weird, <laughs> you know. And, and you know, there's, yeah. there's, there's but he's hugging everyone. I mean, when I got there, um, uh, that year, um, I was with me, my ex at the time. And um, we got there quite early, and because every every year that he's been, he's the first person to 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 shout my name, right? So there's a big American accent, Tony, like that, and I turn around, and oh, it's like shit, Pete. He comes on and gives me the biggest bear hug that you, you can ever possibly get off someone. And then he's chatting away and stuff like that. And he was on about doing his. Um, this is before things went bad. I won't say what went bad, but the two years that we don't talk about. And then um, he was on about doing his um, uh, improv workshop. And I said, oh, I'd love to make it. You know, I'd love to come. And he was on about doing it the next year. And, and he said, oh, I said, Manchester's pretty central. And it's, it's a lovely city, Manchester. You, you know, if you're there, you go on and wander around. You know, it's beautiful and that. And he was talking away. And as we're talking away, he gets um, sequestered somewhere else. You know, like like the dough sometimes. And they just, you know, he went off with Dave and stuff like that. And as as that happened, I saw him talking to, my, talking to Lindsay and... And I just out of the corner of my eye, I saw Greg Berger. And as I saw him, he saw me. So I was, and he just went like that. And I went like that. <laughs> Come over and give me a good. You know. So, you know what I mean? That's the thing. That's one thing I've heard that you don't get at other conventions. Like, the guests come out, like you were saying earlier, they come out, they do the thing, they, they sign their autographs, they do the panel, and then gone. You know? Yeah. Well, but, you, you get two you, different types of conventions, though, don't you? So. Mm. You get those where it's kind of like the Comic Con experience, where it's just like meet the guests. You've know, got like two minutes per per, per mm. person. Yeah, meet them, get a signature, move on. Da, da, da. And then you get the ones like that are more. They'll spend more time with you. That mm. makes sense. Yeah, I, yeah. Mean, I mean, I've heard TF Con is meant to be quite similar to TF Nation. A little bit of how they work. Like everyone's situ situated in the same place where it's where it's held, like in a hotel. So you might see some guests kind of mindling in the bar, maybe. I've had that similar situation. Um, but TF Nation's like its own thing. You know, no other conventions really handle conventions like TF Enders. The thing do you is, think it's because the guys are... Sorry, do you think it's because the guys aren't mega mental famous? So when you get like Simon Fairman or Greg like in the bar, like if it was a normal bar, Weatherspoons in Hull, yeah. Probably, not many people are going to go up to them, are they? Apart from no, the ones no. who know who they are. Exactly, so they yeah. can come out at a convention and not get out. Can you imagine if we went to a Star Trek convention, Patrick Stewart walked into the bar, he would just yeah, be oh, swamped, yeah. wouldn't he? He'd yeah. never get near him. There'd be paparazzi and stuff. So it's probably yeah. that level of like, famous that they actually probably love it because they can go somewhere like a TF Nation. They can act, they can they are famous. They can be famous there. They can yeah. communicate and talk to people. But then it's never going to be like stupid fame, like issues where yeah, they can't get out and stuff. They've got the yeah. best of both worlds. They're both famous, yeah. and they've got the an anonymity as well. Because, yeah. like you said, they can walk around in public and nobody knows who they are, apart from us, you know, massive nerds. You yeah. know, they can, you know, never get the world out to worry about it. And then you've got, like, say, you know, Patrick Stewart walks down, walks into your local pub, and you think, what? You know, yeah. it's Patrick Stewart. Yeah. What's he doing here? You know. Well, it's the thing. It's like when you're an on-screen actor, 
when you're on screen and you're in something as popular as Star Trek, even Star Wars or something like that, something very, very popular, you know, you're gonna put, you're gonna get noticed by people just walking down the street. But like I say, with voice acting, it's all about your voice. You know, mm-hmm. you're acting, but it's all your voice. So they're just stood in a booth, like a padded booth, like the schizophrenics, and I thought, man. <laughs> Because they're just kind of going, nice. ah, <laughs> you know, kind of doing that to themselves. <laughs> and uh, so they are kind of going boom, shit crazy in their heads. Mm. But yeah, you know, that, like Tony said, they've got that anonymity, if I can get my words out. We've got, there we go. Uh, they've got that. Uh, <laughs> they've got that. And uh, But yeah, so, it's, it, so they kind of can conceal themselves into the into the thing. But then as soon as they start doing the voices, some sometimes you might go, I recognise that from the childhood. Is that Scooby Doo? Is that Frank Welch? Oh, I kill yes, my kill everything. Um, but yeah, but yeah, I get the point. Yeah, I'm going to move on now because we haven't got because I'm going to be losing Paul in about 15 minutes, are we? Because uh, of Transformers the show. So I'm going to move on because we've got quite a lot of comments. We've had Adam White and a few other people coming in. Uh, so we've got Andy Morris. He just says hello to everybody. Andy hello. Morris. Um, and then Christopher again. Uh, it says uh, Robus and Grimlock. If I win the basically, if he wins the lottery, then he might get it, but it's not going to happen. Um, yeah, I'm in the same boss. Same boss. <laughs> mm. <laughs> With his giga power, uh, Grimlock. Something. I will have found the Studio I, Series 86 Grimlock. I'll be happy with that, to be quite fair. Yeah, same here. And then Legends of Cybertron are here, uh, saying I'm uh, here to support my boy Alpha. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then the hey Chris mate. Um uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, that's uh, I'm doing I'm doing a bad thing here. Anyway, all right, so Adam White he says uh, basically he was responding. Um so he says uh, when you're able to attend an event, let, let folks like these fine gents know in advance, so uh, sorting a few understanding folks to meet when mm. they get there, sorts of sorts of social base. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Come say hello, you know, and we'll, yeah. we'll find out, you know, if you like Power Rangers and sort of or Star Trek or whatever it is else you like and go, I know someone who likes Power Rangers, yes, you know, talk and then friends, instant friends. Yeah, there's yeah. even GoBot fans. There's even GoBot fans. There. Yeah, <laughs> they're hidden in the corner. Yeah, and the oh, dark corner. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> and Adam's back so this year. This year, we'll be meeting everyone apart from Nolsey, <laughs> as he doesn't have enough to buy me a drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't worry, I've got enough to buy maybe two drinks over the weekend, and then hopefully have no well, money. Well, must be loaded then. Must be rich. Yeah. Once Alexis has had six drinks, just go up to him. He always buys everyone drinks. <laughs> drink, honestly, oh, you see the eyes go. Just... <laughs> that is a sight to behold. I must have that is, yeah. <laughs> Full Alexis. Uh, Jinx is back. He says, oh, yeah, I'm in the forge this year for filling my artist's dream. Uh, we'll be selling my book and art. That's amazing. Thanks for you for saying it, Alpha. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's amazing. I watched his video, by the way, because he, he did his uh, answering to my second load of questions. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, so, yeah, he was showing off the stuff he's, gonna, he's got like t- 10. 10 uh 10 each set and prints and that he's selling and he's got his own book i mean he's a published published author and where am i still i, stuck in the the <laughs> <laughs> I would yeah. love to i would love to have a table on the forge at some point like but it's just i don't know i just don't yeah. have i just never got around to doing it as such yeah I'm, I'm, i don't have a big ego or anything but i'd like to have a table signing autographs for famous youtuber <laughs> no, that's not even just a one, one day, one day, one day. Get in there, though. You should just yeah. come, so make some uh, make make some a banner saying to Tony Samuel G One, and it's just like a, he's a big head stretched right out like that. That's something. That, yeah. Yeah. It's you like think we can yeah, stick it. Yeah. Stretched. Yeah, I think we could stick a table into the hall just and make yeah. a wee banner for Tony yeah. and just pop <laughs> him up the side one of the, the main I don't guests. think the I don't think the make table's big enough to fit through the door for Tony's stand so you know oh, <laughs> oh shots <laughs> fired <laughs> oh well that shields up <laughs> you've done the yeah. panel before though haven't you you've done the um, with yeah. um, Zort Rider didn't you well I was going to do one this year but um, you know I, I had a bit of a health scare and it sort of and it didn't 
that was the point where I wasn't quite sure if I was going to make it, sort of like if I could afford it or if I could actually make it. You know what I mean? As in be alive. As in be alive, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a lot better now, as you can tell, as you can see. Um, but yeah, I was going to do a panel. It was going to be on. Um, I might still do it for ne- see if I can do it for next year. It was going to be about collecting itself rather than collecting just transformers, just as. You know, what do you do? Do you collect, you know, um, you know, do you put shelves, do you just stick it in storage, that sort of thing, you know? Mm. Um, and it was just going to be like, um, you know, you just, just collecting as a whole rather than individual things to collect. Yeah. You know, yeah, are I you a hoarder? Do you collect every, every version of the mold or just, you know, your favorite character, you know, that sort of thing? Yeah, just pick one, one thing of the mold. But yeah. I remember actually, I was actually at that uh, panel whenever. You and Zord Rider were up yeah. there. Was it Smith no was doing the questions or something out there? Um Yeah. And I remember being I was actually in that room at that point. That was, yeah, it well was really it good. was kind of a thing of Rich took it upon himself to rip the ever living piss out of me that could that, that panel as well. <laughs> Did he? Yeah. Yeah. It was supposed to be a quiz book. Because and that, that they were asking well, questions or something well, out that, there, wasn't it? Like yeah. yeah. Well that that year. Because I was doing a lot of videos, he was taking the piss out of me doing videos as well. Now I'm quite, yeah. Anyway, I took it in good fun. There was one individual that didn't quite take it in the same amount. Yeah. Of fun. I mean, yeah. I'm, you know, oh, I'll get you next time, he man, that sort of thing, you know. But, but but all in good fun, you know what I mean? There was no malice in that. And then he took it upon himself that. But then I, but then I could I could see what he was doing, and then I sort of turned the tide a bit as well. <laughs> So I was like, sort of like, yeah, I'll get you back, you bastard. <laughs> but it was all, it was yeah. all in good fun. Though. I didn't, there was no malice there, and 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 Rich is a nice, is a, is a nice kid, you know. So yeah, all right. Let's so move on then. Uh, oh yeah, uh, Christopher again. I'd love to get some great artwork. There's some great, amazing artists. There isn't mm, there? Yes. Um, so I always, that's... I'm always on the lookout for new uh, prints, art prints. Uh, I love my art, especially when you get really nice dynamic posters of Transformers. Like I got one when Livia Ramadelli went one that one year. There's actually been twice, but I remember one, and he got. Uh, I love the sound wave. Sound waves, obviously, apart from Tony. Mm. Um, and I really love my sound wave. And um, Livia Ramadelli was there one year, and he had this really nice art print, and it was kind of like seeing. It's like there's like rainfall. And it's kind of like done in a way where his eyes are coming through the darkness a bit more. And oh, yeah, I've seen that. It's good, and then yeah. You kind of, in, then you see in his chest plate kind of like Optimus and everything. He's facing off against Optimus and you see like all his cassettes around him. And I'm like, that looks freaking great. So I, yeah, I'm yeah. all over that. Um, plus, I love Livia Ramadelli's artwork. A lot of people give him a bit of crap online because it looks a little bit not professionalish. You know, his lines are quite comic booky, you know, what you come to expect a little bit, but I think his art is real dynamic and really good. I really like it. it can. But every it's... artist has their art style, like and that's his exactly. art style. So he's not trying to mimic somebody else's so... mm. exactly you know, it's his own style. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Adam White again. So in that DVD extra is famous <laughs> Dave Wallace's and <laughs> <Yeah>. more. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Um, right. Have have you ever drunk, purchased, and regretted it later? Uh, Every single Fifth Nation, yes. <laughs> I don't regret anything. <laughs> I've drunk I... purchased, yes, but never regret it. I had Tony I... save me from a drunk purchase. I can't remember what I was doing. Yeah, ah, oh, yeah, it was Superion, but it was like the two thousand and four. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And, like, and it does, it looks good in the packaging. It was yeah. like 20 pounds. I was like, this looks amazing. You were like, oh no, just look at one review of that, and like it all falls apart. And mm. I almost did, <laughs> but you saved it. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah, yeah. Do you like the patron yeah, saint? That. Of, I have like, that drunk. One. See, it's a recolor of no, it was for the 2000, and I think it was Revenge of the Fallen, and it's That's the it, yeah. Superior Maximus from Energon. Yes, Energon. That figure, great, but the the they skimped out on the on the plastic on that one, and it is just awful. I have it; it's not good. <laughs> we save me. Yeah. That's yeah, one thing I might review because it's shit. So I like doing shit figures. <laughs> I think one that uh, probably was close would have been that open and play big spring sort of thing. And I'd seen people in the bar on Saturday night. Was it? We're messing about with it. Obviously, had a few drinks and thought, "Yeah, I'll get that tomorrow." And then it 
skinned it, then it was sort of sold out, and I got the MMC version of Springer now, and it's just better, I think. Mm. The salt, because the, if there's one thing I want to pick up, it's probably a um, an MP Springer, and there's the Saltus, isn't it? The MMC, and uh, yeah, that's the uh, I. That's, Everyone says I, that's I, good, the best one. I think it's really good. It's really solid figure. Like there's no fear. You can flip it back and forth and stuff. And yeah. there's no fear of breaking anything. Like it's a good solid figure. Like uh, the nice. car mode sort of suffers a wee bit, but not. I don't think any of the car modes are anyway fantastic for Springer, and any of the options yeah. like. But robot mode and helicopter mode is really really good. Like, right, yeah, that might be the one I go for. Yeah, mm. we shall see. <laughs> All right, so Jinx is back. This is uh, Turner's story is about uh, about Greg Berg, who reminds me of TF Nation 2018, uh, when Daniel Riordan uh, was just talking to me to my dad, and I like uh, he'd known uh, known us all our lives. He was such a great, genuine, great guest. What a guy! It's mad when things like that happen. You know, it's just you know, just kind of like with his dad or whatever, and he's just sat there talking to him like he's just like they've known each other for like 20 years or something. It, that happened at TF Nation. It's what massive. a big dude! He's massive. Like he I've got a dude. photo of him, and he's like like almost two feet taller than I am. He's <laughs> massive, dude. You know, and he played um, Duras in Star Trek Enterprise. He played a Klingon. There you go. Duras. Mm. Oh. Played Star Trek Enterprise. Yeah. Okay, Adam White again. If folks aren't aware of it, the surprise Greg Berger MB2 interview. Rippled through the UK community, then from then on, AA became essential for TF Nation fans, Did. the Transformers fans. Uh, I think what I was just going to say about, um, you know, a lot of the, I'm not going to toot my own horn here, but I, I kind of am at the same time. But when I do, but, but when I make videos and questions, well, and honest. everybody joins in and does their questions and stuff like that, it gets the buzz up. Yeah. It gets the hype up, gets you excited, and you know people who haven't done a video in five years come out and do a video. Um, and I've had a lot of people come up to me and go, "Hey, if it weren't for your videos, I would never have known about TF Nation." You My know? first video ever on YouTube was a video response to you. It's the first I remember seeing from the camera being so nervous. It was just a video response to That's one of your TFN. Yeah. But the thing is, as well, is although the lads at the TF kind of starting to do that sort of stuff, because I saw was it from last year. Um, Bet the Stormtrooper and Patriot Prime was doing the uh, single chip challenge, in the yeah. hot chip challenge, and they're starting to do it more because I've seen videos of TFCon and, and stuff like that, and it's just, hey, I'm going to TFCon, and then walk around the dealer's room, and that was TFCon. It was like, oh, is that it? Is that all you did? You know? Where's uh, the hype? Where's the excitement? What did you buy? You know, all that sort of stuff. Because it's because I look at it, I've said this in my videos before, but if you haven't watched my videos, I think of it like, because only you can experience it your way, right? Even if you describe it to me, I'm never going to get the same thing that you get, but I'll get my own way as well. But by doing a video, it's sort of like an insight into your head. It's like, how have you seen it? How did you enjoy it? What did you buy? And sort of like you get an overall experience of the whole thing rather than just your little narrow vision of it, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. That's, you know, then you that's see... something that gets me over the sort of the week after you come back from TFN is yeah. watching everybody's videos yeah because it sort of it still 100%. keeps it as you would call it a, a dopamine drip sort of yeah. just just to get past that first week and if you get back because it is it's a real come down when you come back oh yeah it's, you yeah. get that proper it's like back to normality and there's no yeah. idea to go this is the best part sort of leading up to it like right up yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like, like, well it's just like christmas morning isn't it so yeah, yeah. guys i'm gonna have to leave you i've got a show to start in Four minutes. Thank oh, you so much cool. for having me on. Thank you, Gareth. I can't wait to meet day, you man. next week. Um, yeah, I'll meet you for a beer. Uh, yeah. and uh, I'll see you guys later. Take care. Yeah. Cheers. Hey, Happy TFN. Bye. Bye. Yay. Bye -bye. Yeah. And then there was three. Um, I've got no better to them, so I'm going to be on the duration. So. <laughs> <laughs> But no, um, and as I was saying, though, the, the, the convention is, is you know, the TFCon lads are starting to do it a bit, you know, particularly like Bert the Stormtrooper and um, Car um, Carl Brown, Patriot Pram. Um, mm. If you've not seen those channels, you should check them out. They're really good. Um, oh, I'm subscribed to both of them. So. Yeah, me too. And they're starting to do stuff that we're doing, and, and it's nice to see that. You know, it's like, you know, 
you can see, obviously, see that we're having such a good time at this thing. Obviously, they're having a good time as well, but to involve everyone else and make it, you know, yeah, you know, because I don't want to be rivals or anything, but cause I've never been to a TFCon. I'd like to, I'd like to go. What I, would, I would like to go there too, like just to experience that part of it too. Like, but... <coughs> excuse me, but no, um... but you know, but you know, it's hanging out with those guys, and I keep saying to them, guys, you've got to come to TFN at some stage, you know. I know yeah. it's not. Oh, you know, I've not everybody can afford it. I understand that, but it's like if you can get there, come. You know, make one year the, the thing. You know, it's because it's nice to see those guys. It's nice to see you know people coming because I've had people coming up to me from all over the world. You know, there's a guy from Australia, Jason, who's seen my videos, and and then when oh, I didn't, oh, I'm getting messaged by everyone. Sorry, and then um, you know, and then people from. Texas, a guy from Texas came up to me last year and said, oh, I didn't know about this. I was going to go to TFCon, but you guys look like you're having the best time. And, you know, and it's like, well, yeah, because we're Brits, you know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> what we do best is drink. <laughs> uh, they yeah. definitely couldn't beat us there. Mm. <laughs> you know, but it's just, but it, like I said to you before, though, it's like the just, the, it's the little things that I enjoy the most, you know, like the sitting in the bar, playing cards against humanity, and talking bollocks, and sat there with a figure in your hand going, you know, playing with it. Well, you know, it's just such, just, you know, and like you said, the build up to it as well, it's palpable, yeah. and it's just, I can almost touch it, you know, it's almost yeah. there, you know. Yeah. And then, uh, and hopefully someone has cards against humanity because oh um, yeah and uh, definitely oh, Friday Nick's. night like I I haven't I've never I've never um, witnessed it I have never been involved in it so it's my first time that I'll be there on a Friday night so I've heard all the hype about it so definitely it's it's, it's a great game um, but yeah I think I think uh, t I think uh, Nick uh, Nick Snowden I think he's got literally all of it all this expansion packs and everything so he's got literally. <laughs> A huge box that literally kind of he must knock people out when he's walking by. Oh, it's, yeah, it's a real big thing. It's yeah. real long, but yeah. um, but no doubt at some point over the weekend there'll be a couple of games of that. And but people seem to bring other stuff to try as well, uh, other different card games like similar yeah. to Cards Against Humanity, but it's kind of like Cards Against Disney or Exploding yeah. Kittens and all that stuff. You hear? Well, I've got I've got a couple of games as well. I'm going to bring. I've got um. Um, Star Trek Next Generation Flux. Um, so I want to play that, and basically, it's just you get like a keeper card, and you've got to try and match. Um, um, but the game's in a constant state of flux, you can get Doctor Who ones and just general sci fi ones and stuff like that. And the rules keep changing, so it's like draw one, play one, and then you play a card that says draw three, discard one. You know, it's it's all it changes every every round, so there's no you know, you never play two games the same way twice. You know, it's yeah. you've got to get. A goal you have a goal to get, like, um, you know, like the John Luke Picard and the Enterprise, you've got to get those two cards and then you win, but then it could change, somebody could steal one, you have to discard one, and it all it's real good. So, bringing that yeah. one, right? Uh, we've got uh, Graham, hey, yeah. John, Graham, yeah. how's it going? <laughs> how's it going, man? Um, Graham, collect 75. If you're not subscribed, go subscribe. He's got some one of the best. G1 Transformers collections that I've, I don't think I've, I've ever seen. You know, yeah. he comes out with, and he's a, he's got a great channel as well. So check out Graham. Oh, yeah. One of the Absolutely. one of the old Absolutely. one of the last old schoolers as well. Sorry. <laughs> but no, he's, he's, he's a great he's, he's a great guy. I mean, I don't know if it's going to be in attendance this year at TFN or not. Or I don't know, but. You know, it's always good to see him mate, when if he does maybe pop up for the day or something like that, maybe. Yeah. But um but yeah, he's a great guy, a great channel. Um yeah, but it's always good to see him in person as well. I know sometimes he comes, sometimes he doesn't, might come for the day. But yeah. And there's a few people that do that now, isn't they? Like it's like uh, exaggerated elegy, George and Ray. They like I'm come up I'm usually I'm I managed to see Ray for like literally a second last year. I said hello. Yeah. He doesn't hang out anymore, which is a bit of a shame, but you know, each to the road, I guess. Comes, gets his game, goes, you know, and I didn't see George at all last year. I saw George and he was talking to somebody else and I approached him and I thought, well, I'll, I'll leave him too because, you know, I don't like to be one of these people that, you know, he, you know get involved in a conversation. Bad barge in, yeah. I, I don't like to barge in when someone's in, you know, in the middle of a conversation. <laughs> so, but right, I'll, I'll go off and I'll come back and say hello to him when he's free. Uh, that never happened. He literally kind of like I turned around and thought, oh, maybe I'll find him in the dealer room. 
gone. gone. So, <laughs> admittedly, but it's one of those things you can't talk to everybody. There's that many people, or if you do talk to them, it's usually kind of like, phew, like Sonic the Hedgehog, and you know, like, kind of like, phew, bye. You know, I mean, that kind of thing. The worst crime is, is like somebody come up to you and wants to talk to you, and, it, and it, this yeah. is no offense to anyone, this is just how, how, the nature of the beast. It's, um, you know, somebody comes up to you and goes, oh, I'd like to talk to you. And I go, yes, I know, I'm late for this, I'm doing that, I'm going to put this up there, I'm going for, I'll talk to you later. And you never get around to finding them. And it's and it's no offence to everyone. I try and speak to as many people as I can, but there's so many people coming in and out. And if I do miss you, I just, like, like I say, come and find me this year, hold me down and talk to me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Handcuffs are optional, you know. But, you know. <laughs> Stop it once. Yeah, it's not like you know. Dave has plausible nipples. That is a great. Song. It is a good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, you him. Good yeah. evening. Hope everyone is well. We're well. Thank you. Hope you're well, Dave. Hope you're going to be at TF Nation. It'd be good to see you if you are. Mm. I don't know if any of the Ingen crew are going. Like, oh yeah, Brad is going. Brad always Brad going. going. Uh, so Lucy will be there as well. So you know the the, the usual usual crowd are there. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Dodd is going this year as well. Oh, um, cool. I don't think he. I don't think he was there last year. No, um, he wasn't there last year. The Icelandic he, giant. He's a good lad, is Dodi. Oh, Dodi, it's funny. It's, it's, it's not going to be as funny because there's no uh, Sammy School going for her. Uh, and when those two kind of it, yeah, yeah it's over films, it's hilarious. Like you right. know, like kind of, what makes me laugh about Sammy? Sorry to interrupt, but what makes me laugh about Sammy? Sammy's been campaigning, campaigning for a musical guest for a long time. He's he's going. Can we get the Cybertronic spray? And he says. And then the year Stan Bush comes was the year he wasn't coming because he wanted a break. And then this year, Jayhan's performing, and this is the year he's on a break. <laughs> it, it, on, seems Sammy, to it, like, yet, it seems to be like a bookmark thing, doesn't it? When, when, yeah. Whenever whenever Sammy says he's not coming, yeah. next, you know what, next time yeah. he says he's not, he's not going to come, we'll they'll get weird Vince, out. They'll have Vince oh, DeCola there next time. Vince DeCola yeah. or Spectre General or Kick-Ass, whatever they're called now. Kick-Ass. Yeah. Kickaxe. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, right. For those of you who don't know, I'm going to say this. Right. <laughs> the re the band who does hunger and um, nothing's going to stand in our, our way. The the name on the on the Transformers the movie soundtrack is Spectre General, which yeah. they changed the name without telling the band to put on the CD. Right. Because oh. their actual name is Kick Axe. Right. Because Axe is a guitar. You, you know, axe yeah. band. You know. Yeah. And the reason the, the reason they changed the name is because they thought Kick Axe sounded too violent. It's a Transformers film of robots and, killing each other. So, and I'm yeah. like, have you seen this film? Telling off the main character to <laughs> <laughs> A whole planet is destroyed in the first few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, and it's just like, have you seen this film? And he changed um, Kick Axe to Sector General. And then there's the famous shit. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, shit. <laughs> like the Have UK you seen version, John. I know, but like even the UK version was censored with the shit, wasn't it? <laughs> well, well, years ago when we were kid, when I was a kid, so we're talking long, long time ago. When the film was on VHS, there was a rumor circulating that in the American version he swears, and nobody and I'm like, he's whatever. It's just one of those things that kids make up, you know, when you're a kid. Yeah. You know, because you do, you're full of shit when you're a kid, are you? And then it wasn't until I think it was this version actually that came out on um, DVD that had both the UK and the US version in. And I'd never seen the US version. That's what the, you know, because the UK one has the evil new force in the universe, you know, all that. And then it was like, holy oh, shit, yeah, he does swear, you know. <laughs> well, you know, 30 years of go. going, this is calling bullshit, and there it is, you know. All right, Christopher again. Uh, Alpha Prime, does the Scorpion up behind you have the upgrade kit on? Uh, no. No, he doesn't. No. Uh, <laughs> it's the standard, the standard Scorpion up. He's just about making the stand there, like. So uh, I don't know whether it's his final spot. There's a few shelves here that are probably going to get moved about, but no, he's just on that. So he's actually, I don't know if you put the thing, he does get bigger than Fort Max, obviously. Hmm. But and I don't buy a lot kit of upgrade kit. kits, to be honest. Like, unless it really needs it, then mm. I buy the upgrade kits. But I don't think I have too many. I, I want the upgrade kit for Black Zarak. Because he gets the gun and the rest of the bits and that. Yeah. 
Aye, that wouldn't be a bad one to get. Mm. Smith now. Oi, oi, boys. Oi, 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 governor. Oi, oi. <laughs> ah, wheat. Ah, wheat. Ah, wheat. Uh, Christopher again, some great stories. Yeah, there's some great stories. I mean, you're missing out with not coming to TFA. Yeah. I mean, you're going to make some great memories. Right, here's the story. Yeah. This yeah. is this is Auto Assembly, I think. Let me see now. Was it 2013? Yes, I think it was. Um, Remember, John? Remember yeah. Gareth showed up and he had all them Beast Wars figures, didn't he? That he was selling. Yeah. Right. I managed to pick up um the original um purple T-Rex himself, Megatron. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I got him, and then somebody said, "Oh, there's Batman stood on the balcony," and of course there was nerds uh, going, "Oh, what's yeah, Batman? Uh, justice for dad, one it or something?" Dad, yeah, d- d- yeah, justice for dad. Yeah, and so, right, and so, then he says, "Oh, it's night owl," and of course our next question is, "Which night owl?" Because as nerds are, you know, not well, not qualified. <laughs> you know, which version is it? We need to know. So anyway, we went outside, and there's a few of us, I don't smoke, but I was stood talking to people who were having a smoke outside. And there's a bloke on the balcony, pacing up and down, just like Night Owl, and he's Fathers for Justice, that's it. Hmm. And he had a banner on. Right. And then he's walking up and down, walking up and down. And this big, barely cop, we're talking, going, you know, is he there? Because they're, cause they're doing a um, thing at the NEC um, about that, and, and and they were leaving as we were turning up. Yeah. So... We go to fire, we go. So we're talking away, and this big belly copper comes over. This big fucking dude, he's built and he's fucking tall. Comes over and he goes, uh, Are you part of this uh, demonstration thing? And I'm like, No, no, we're here for toys. And he's like, Oh, right. And he goes, Oh, for the NEC. I said, No, just in this hotel. Yeah, it's, it starts tomorrow. This is Friday. And he goes, uh, Oh, right, cool. And he, and he, and he said, Oh, I got to NEC. He's a big James Bond fan. And I was like, I'm sort of chatting away, you know, sort of nerds, you know, lining. And then, um, so later on, this guy disappears. So I go up to the room and I've got a couple of toys in my hand already. So I thought, well, I best go put these in the room. So I went up to the, to the room and I got stopped because that was the year I was sharing with um, Simon Ski. He was a good lad. I don't think he's coming this year. He's just had a baby. Bless him. But anyway, um, so I got up to the room and I get stopped by housekeeping and she goes, oh, what room number is it? And I'm like, well, it's whatever room number. I can't remember. I found And she goes, oh, no, you're all right. And I said, wow, what's happened? And she goes, oh, you know that Fathers for Justice guy? I was like, right. He set the sprinklers off and he's caused, she said, £10,000 worth of damage, right? Ooh. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting. And then over the weekend, it's like, oh, he's done 50 grand, 100 grand, a million pounds, you know, and it's kind of like there was no definite answer. And so what happened was is he put, obviously, sprinkler systems on and wet a lo- load of rooms. And luckily, man was just out of the thing because it annoyed me because Jamie, who, you know, Magic Man, who... um yeah. It was, a, I think, the next room of her. You know, he wasn't the next door, but he was the one next door but one. He got relocated to a fucking penthouse, didn't he, the fucker, that weekend? Because his, his room was, you know, wet. And I was just like, oh, damn it. If our room would have been wet, we'd got a penthouse. But, um, but yeah, it was just one of those things. It's kind of like, is this is this happening right now? Yeah. Is this going, is this really happening? Then there was the naked man. Do you remember the naked man? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? We were in the bar, and I think I'd... I'd either gone to the toilet or gone upstairs or something. And I, I missed and, this literally by about five minutes. I went to yeah, bed that night so, and I found out the next day. So basically, I found out the next day as well that this bloke, start bullock naked, comes downstairs and said he was locked out of his hotel room. And I'm like, <laughs> well, two things, right? Okay. One, what would you do when you're out of your room when you're naked? And two, surely if something's going on, you put your pants on and then grab your card if you're coming out of your room. You know, and he, but the, the weird thing is, is he goes down to reception and apparently he just stood there like like nothing's happened and he's, and he's on display. You know, not even trying to cover himself or anything. Like no, nope, just... not even can I have a towel? <laughs> just, there it is. Have a look. You know, and I'm like, but that that's what immediately struck me. I was like, but what was he doing outside of his room? Start bollock naked. You know. <laughs> Maybe, maybe he was having a bit of sexy time or something. And yeah, he, he didn't look like the type that, um, you know, would, would <laughs> let's, let's be honest, would get it for free, if that makes sense. <laughs> well, me then. It wasn't me, by the way, but, you know. I don't, I don't, I don't have that. I don't have that. You know, I wish I had the, uh, that, that, that guy's kind of that. Uh, confidence. confidence to kind of just go all natural 
around a hotel like that. No. <laughs> uh, no. no I, I think I'd mentally scare it's, it's everybody. Been, it's been some like, interesting times at these things, I must admit. Yeah. I think I just mentally scare everybody in existence and everybody, you just see people just kind of burning their eyes out with, <laughs> with lights. Oh, then, there's, then, there was the, then there was the dancers, the year, um, uh, well, what was it? The Stan Bush year, that was it, 2018. Mm. They had the dancing competition on and then, right, we'd, we'd been sat in the bar after Stan Bush going, it was amazing, fantastic. We'd been sat, because it finished about, I think, 11 or something. And the dancers come up, come there's a big group of them, and we're sat in a, you know, you know, there's about twenty of us sat around this thing. They come over to us and goes, "Are you going to sit there all night?" And I'm like, "Well, yes, you know, <laughs> we sat here for two, three hours already." You we know, are camp. you know, <laughs> and it's sort of, and then I could all, I didn't hear it, but I could almost feel it going fucking nerds. How dare they sit in the bar when we want to sit down? We kind of attitude, you know. Lewis, she walked off. Mm. You know, although I didn't, I did one caught my eye and and I felt and I nearly fell over. You know, I was like, wait, what? Like that, and just, you know, <laughs> tripped over the stairs, shall we say. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. But, know, yeah, but... and, then, and then coming out of the bar, you know, you know, the, you know when you come out of the bar, out of, out of the dealer's room, towards the bar, and there's that little, real narrow corridor that kind of goes like that. Um, mm. And there's a mirror, and there's a settee there, isn't there? That yeah. bit. Yeah. And there's a bunch of girls dancing there. And then the, I said, excuse me, and they went, they stood like this, went, like that, as if to say, well, I'd like to go past, please. And it's like, how dare you interrupt in our routine? It's like, well, you shouldn't be in the corridor, you know. You know yeah, there's an empty else. room right next to you. Go in there. Yeah. You know. Sorry, I'm <laughs> ticking over the convent conversation there. Sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think Alpha's buff, but Alpha's like, why did I say yes to come on to this? Uh, <laughs> well, I must be part Cardassian because I do like to talk. Yeah. I, whatever, I think the first year when it was like Quilt Con or something like that, there was like, oh, yeah, Quilt Con, yeah. Yeah, that was on in there, and that was, that was interesting to say the least. <laughs> that was 2013, I think the first time we clashed. And to be honest, they're all lovely. They were really lovely and they're really yeah. genuine. And they were really like, Oh, what are you here for? You know, what's these? Are these are you all toy designers? One one asked me. I was like, Well, no, we'll just need for toys, you know. <laughs> you know. Um and then I'll tell you what I did. This kind of stuck with me and it kind of like pissed me off a little bit as well. I'm in the lift, and you know, when you're going up to the room, you've got carry bags, you've got box under your arm, and you overload it, you throw out, dump all this and go back to the bar. And I'm stood there, and this woman gets on with two kids, and and Girl must have been 10, and the little lad must have been, you know, seven or something like that. And he's looking at my, you know, hall at this point, and he's going, like that. And he must, and he was part of the faith con, I don't know what to call it. And the mother, right, she, she without, well, this is what she said to me next, and this stuck with me. She grabbed them, covered their eyes, moved them away like this, went, don't look, children. I'm like, really, though? Really? You know? But that, that kid must be like so pissed off that just down the hall, down the corridor, there, a room yeah. full of toys that he can't go in and have a look at. Yeah. And I just thought, that is just, no, you can, <clears throat> if you enjoy your thing, fine. But, you know, I'm never going to say if you don't like Transformers, you know, you're wrong or anything like that. No, of course not. It's not what's no. our role. If you don't like them, fine. We love them. We're going to go every year. But you can't say to me that I'm living my life wrong because. I don't live it the same way you do. And that was the attitude I got from this woman, you know? Yeah. Uh, I remember I remember something from the same year when when oh, you know yeah. the religious slot over there. Yeah. Uh Tony's already got it. Mm. <laughs> um right. So this is from the same exact same year Tony's talking about. And um so I you know, as you do, get get up, get washed. Put, put some clothes on. Don't really think about what T-shirt you've got on. You just put something on. And so, yeah, go out my room to go for breakfast. Walk, walk down the hallway uh, to get to the lift. And I see this this family. Um, I think it was just a, a boy with, a, a young boy with uh, mum and dad waiting for the lift. So I come walking up and I'm like, uh, awkward. I just kind of get this feeling like, oh, it, it, there must be for that church thing or whatever it is. Um... So, right, I walk up and I go, all right, morning. And uh, I look down and I'm like, oh, this is awkward. And uh, I, 
The t-shirt I had on was the p- a pinhead Hellraiser t-shirt with, uh, God, with where it says, God is busy, can I help you? Um, and I was just like, this could not be any more awkward. And literally, um, I see the dad and the mother just transfixed on the t-shirt and then they kind of try to usher the child away as if not, do, there's nothing to see there, do not look. Yeah. And so that elevator ride down was the most awkward I've ever known. And then as soon as, as, soon as the elevator opened, and they they what they kind of like rushed off, pretty much running away. I was just burst out laughing. I was just like, "This is just brilliant." Oh, you should have had the, the lament configuration and go, "Hey, what a present for you?" <laughs> Here's a puzzle for you. Yeah. <laughs> Solve it and you get to see God. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, but that's the other thing about the, the quilters, lovely, genuinely interested in what you're doing, you know, lovely, lovely people, you know, and, um, you know, they're up for, you know, most of the old dears are up for a laugh, you know. And, uh, but it's the, disimpro- the disapproving looks you get from the faith connors that I don't like, you yeah. know. You know, because you sat in the bar and got a beer in your hand, you know, and they, and they go, oh, dude, how dare you, you know, kind of out you. And it's like, well, you love your thing, I love my thing, this is my thing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy myself, you know. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, well, if you've got, because I remember Mormons in it, that's what it is. I mean, if you're a Mormon, that's fine. I've got no disrespect to you, old Jay, you know, but you shouldn't be, this is what I said. I'm going to have a look at Dick in a minute. But if you go, um, if you're a religious person, that's up to you, it's your business, but you shouldn't be telling me how I'm doing it wrong. Because yeah. that's what you think he'd, I should be doing. Because I could say, well, you should be collecting Transformers. Same, you know, dog swings both ways. You know, that's what I hate about it, you know? You get, you Talk to me about even. it, sure. But just <laughs> don't, you know, I'll tell you why you you're wrong, but, you know, in a nice way. <laughs> in a nice way. No, I want, no, I want. You, could, you could bring that into the whole Transformers community too. You have, like, the yeah. G1 purists and you have, you know, Beast Wars and stuff. You know, people that don't like, like there's people... You know, they've come into the Transformers community through the Bay Bayverse movie. Yeah. Yeah. Now, a lot yeah. of people have their qualms with them, whatever, but I think as much as I don't think they're a movie, they're an action movie, it's about Transformers, you can go in, you can switch off, you can watch them. But um, a lot of people put a lot of hate on those. It's yeah. going, well, they sort of did re- revive the whole Transformers franchise. They you know, they put it out there again. And so, without the, the money that came from those movies, you wouldn't have got classics, you wouldn't have got um Energon and stuff, you know what I mean? So exactly. it's kind of without and, that yeah, you wouldn't get this stuff, you know. Exactly. We wouldn't be where we are now if it weren't for those movies, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think a, a lot of people that you see a lot of arguing and stuff in some of the groups and whatnot, and it's it's just like we all like Transformers. Okay, we've all jumped on at different points, yes, yeah. that or I mean I got a lot of the G1 stuff coming up mm. from watching my older cousins' videos. But the first ones that I would have seen on live TV would have been Beast Wars. Mm. Then I would have seen, yep. you know, the weekend we go out and stuff out there. But Excellent. I like I like G1 and I like Beast Wars. And Well, I think G, I think Beast Wars is G1 as well because they well, do yeah. ref, they do find the arc and you do see Optimus Prime. Exactly, and, yeah. So it's the same universe for me. It's, it's you you try to tell that some, some people no, no, like, yeah. they don't like that, they... But yeah, then you go, look, there's Optimus Prime. You know, yeah, he's in the there's... opening sequence of season three. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But, what, I no, but what gets me about that, though, just to just to, just to carry on what you're saying there, what gets me about that is, is I'm a G1 purist. I love G1. It's what I grew up with. When I think Transformers, I think Gen- Generation 1. Now, does that... I do like other stuff. I do like Beast Wars. I do like the Unicron Trilogy stuff. Don't like the cartoon. Cartoon garbage. Beast Wars, brilliant cartoon. Um... <laughs> You know, and the Bayverse, I don't like the toys because the toys were just overly complicated for no reason. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, the studio, some of the studio series stuff, great, great figures. Is it my aesthetic? Not quite. There are some figures that I have, I do like from those lines, but but the what? I mean, I love I loved anime, loved anime. I thought anime was fantastic. It was a real love letter to Transformers. I thought. Mm-hmm. But what gets me is, though, is, like, when you say you're a G1 fan, you get hit, right? Because there are G1ers out there that give, give people shit. There is that. I'm not. But 
I like my thing as much as you like IDW stuff or Beast Wars or whatever it is. Yeah. I like it just as much as you. And I go, well, why is it shit then? Tell me why you think G1 is shit. And then, I, but my always counter argument to whatever they say is, yeah, but without G1, you won't get Bayverse and you won't get IDW, you won't get Beast Wars. So, yeah. You know. Exactly. I mean, that, I don't understand. I mean, like I say, we're, we're all fans. We're yeah. all fans of the same thing. Yeah, I understand. You've got your generations. You've got people like, like for me, my first interpretation or my introduction, should I say, to Transformers was Beast Wars. Mm. You know, it came out about 95, 96. I had to be five or six years old when it came out. And that was the fair. <laughs> sorry, it's making you feel old, Tony. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, was uh, I, I was about <laughs> seven years. Oh, yeah, so. <laughs> youngsters, damn you, youngins! <laughs> damn you. But, yeah. Back in my day, we had to call it Beast Machines. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so like, like I say, I mean, I remember watching Beast Wars. Obviously, it was before they changed the title, it was just called Beast Wars, and then they called it Beast Wars Transformers later. Um, but it was just called Beast Wars, and I was just for transforming animals. Love it. Love my dinosaurs. Love my animals. I used to watch a lot of documentaries about stuff like that. So it, it got my attention. So watching it and then and then obviously as I got older, I got back in, you know, kind of got I got back into Transformers about 2007 time, about when Transformers Animated started. Um, and that's when I started collecting again. Um and then but it was thanks to kind of when YouTube started back in 2006 that I kind of Introduced myself to G1 to our ad. Uh, obviously, I used to watch Robots in Disguise as well, which was 2001, which was the series mm. after Beast Wars that I remember, the Unicron trilogy, so on. Um, but in, uh, but yeah, so basically, um, a lot of the stuff from like G1, for instance, I, I remember when G2 started, and it was like when Fox Kids mm. got all the so you got all that them them weird like G two space cube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. So I remember I remember kind of watching a few couple of episodes, like the first couple of episodes of the two part of the first two part of season one. Uh, you know, when you see Wheeljack and Boom will be on, on Cybertron. And uh, I remember watching them, a couple of them, and and then I kind of went back to it and watched G one later on, back when everybody started pirating and uploading the episodes to to YouTube, as you do. It's the of it. um, you can find them anywhere. I managed to find them somehow. I managed you know what to find them. What means, you, couldn't, yeah. you couldn't buy them on VHS at the time. You couldn't, yeah. um, you know, you just couldn't find them. Occasionally, like Fox Kids would show them, or, you know, some channel would, like, show them at stupid o'clock in the morning. But it was just, you couldn't, there was, like you say, sorry to interrupt you there, but, but there was a gap of nothing. Yeah, there was. You know, literally nothing. I mean, yeah, because in the UK, it's hard to... In America, they showed it all the time, but in the UK, we didn't get... I don't think we got um, our ID to what, 2003, I think, something like that. Mm. You know. I mean, Japan, I took over, Japan took over the Transformers media um, pretty much out over America, didn't they, if you think about it? Because it was like, when Beast Wars came mm. out, obviously when G1 came out, then obviously it went to Headmasters, Master Force, and all that. Uh, the Takara trilogy, hmm. and then um, and then after that you've got Beast Wars, and then obviously you went to Beast Wars Neo, Beast Wars Two, which and they then... haven't released in the West yet because they released yeah. Headmasters and Super God Master Wars Victory, but never Beast Wars Second and never Beast Wars Neo, which is yeah. bizarre. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, and then uh, then obviously went two thousand one RID, which was Japanese and anime basically, and then it went the Unicron trilogy again. Uh, Japanese anime, mm. uh, so you, c you can kind of see when back, like when it came back, it, it back like it was an American produced series. Was when like uh, animated came out, when it came back to kind of mm. being fully animated or fully done oh, in America. Um, and then obviously animated was kind of what kind of brought people back. Some people were a bit polarized by animated at the at first. I mean, when I first saw it, I was a bit like, hmm. I, I don't get the animation style a little bit. Yeah, the, the animation style was, it yeah. was real sort of Weird. drastic and super yeah. different from what had yeah. been before. And, but it did tap into the Justice League um, cartoon sort of style. You know, big chest, little bodies, that sort of thing. Yeah. But yeah, so like, like you get like the animation style and everything of animated and it's just like, 
At first, when I first picked it up, I was like, right, I'll check the first episode out, because at the time I had Cartoon Network. So it was before we got rid of Sky. So I managed That's to kind of watch. Yeah, so I managed to watch, like, uh, a few of the episodes and everything. And I was like, actually, this I'm warming up to it. I'm liking it. Obviously, David Kay's Optimus Prime. You know, some really good voice acting talent coming out of there. Like, you know, Phil Lamar. I think he played jazz. Oh, Prowl. It was Prowl. No, uh, no, 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 no. He was right the first time. It was jazz. Phil Lamar. Um, uh, it was Jeff. Oh, it never escapes me. <laughs> I keep getting mixed up. Yeah, I can't remember his call. The first name is Jeff. I know that much. Played Ultraman. Uh, played um, uh, Prowl. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Sorry, but but yeah, so, you know, so like you've got Tom Kenny as well. Starscream. I, mean, I, I think it's he's ne next to Chris Latter. He was perfect. Um, he pretty much kind of embodied the Chris Latter Starscream, in my opinion. Um but yeah, so that basically that series got me back in, and then obviously the, the announcement of the 07 movies. I remember going to see the first live action film. I was uh, really no, I've got a story there. about that. Yeah, uh, go on. That. Right, okay. So back when Dreamwave was out, um we're gonna be here a while, Alpha. I don't know if you've got anything going on. <laughs> right. So back when Dreamwave was out, we're talking 2004 5 ish, right? You remember forums? You used to go on and go, you know, tap on and go, you know. Yeah, and then him. somebody said, Oh, there's a the guy, one of the producers has got his own one for the Transformers movie. Okay, I went on and we sort of built up a community on there. And basically, it, it was designed to be, um, right, as fans, what do you want to see? What don't you want to see? And it was us on there was like Peter Connors Optimus Prime. That is whatever you do, that has, has to happen because at one stage. I think they were talking about Kevin Costner playing Optimus Prime at one stage. That would have been a bad at least on the forums, anyway. I don't know if that, yeah. that was true or anything, but you know, there was going, "Oh, what about Harrison Ford?" But this guy, you know, there was all different talk about things. And but most of us were like, "No, it's got to be Peter Cullen. That is just the rules." And um, and when they showed, because they showed us the artwork of Optimus Prime, how he was going to look originally, and we went, "No, that's bullshit, mate. Sort that." Anyway, long story short. I get an email from Don Murphy, who's because it was donmurphy.net saying the premiere is in London. Would you like to go? And I'm like, what the fuck? No, how? I, this, what? Anyway, I was invited to the well, it wasn't the premiere, it was the press screening. Sorry, so it was kind of like the premiere before the premiere, if that makes sense. Or was it yeah. just after the premiere? One, one of it, it was an early screening of it anyway. And goes down to London, and there I am. And I'm like, I'm meeting some of the lads from the from the forum and that. And I'm like, this is super surreal. I'm see. And then as we're going into the thing, right, uh, into the theatre, you know, Jonathan Ross walks past, um, Chris Moyles walks past, and then um, Michael Bay walks past. It was just like, this is what is happening right now, you know. <laughs> Although I didn't get to meet meet them, they just kind of walked past me, and I'm sort of surreal, going, "What is it?" So we saw it, and we I saw it a month before anybody else, even before it was released in America first. So, and I'm like, and I come come home, and I just went, I couldn't put it. I put it on Facebook. I'm like, I've seen it, <laughs> <laughs> seen it, and I enjoyed it. The first movie is great. I must admit, I've the first movie the is pretty good. Like. Yeah. yeah, popcorn movie. There's bits in it I'm nitpicky about, but yeah. I can go, well, you know, I've, uh, I mean, I do love um, Barricade. It's great in it. I, I, love love the, I love the hologram. You know, each each Decepticon having the same guy as a hologram was a really good idea. Mm. You know, sort of like they've grabbed some poor soul off the street and scanned him and then gone, right, this is the guy we're using. Yeah. And he was real creepy as well, especially when he's the cop and he's just sat in the car and he's just got no expression on his face. Mm -hmm. Um, the attack on the base is fantastic sequence. Uh, Black yeah, yeah. That, the opening bit out there was absolutely fantastic. Like, that, that was a really good scene there. Yeah, he really when, when he's coming up. in and he's saying, you know, you know, you know, discard and, you know, throw down your weapons and you know, all yeah. that sort of stuff, and then they're going, Oh, that helicopter crashed six weeks ago, whatever it was, you know, and it's uh, um, and then just all that, you really hear that ting ting ting, and all the yeah. moving the blades all done. It's just like that's that's class. Yeah, and then he's shooting that that beam that just disintegrates everything in front of him. It's a fantastic sequence. Uh. <laughs> and then and then it just cuts to Shia LaBeouf and you think, oh fuck's sake. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right, this is my problem with it. 
the whole Shia LaBeouf thing could have been completely eliminated. Because if it had just been on the army guys, it would have been a fantastic movie. Those army guys are great in it, you know? Yeah. When they're out in the desert and they're lost and they're trying to find out, you know, where they are and that. Great sequence when they get attacked by a scorpion and that. Yeah. It's just great. You know, it should have been about those guys. And then it just cuts to Sam w- Wiki going, Aah! you know. Um, I think with it. The movie's just pants. The live action from Raz the Beast was to, amazing. Yeah. They, they, I think they need to get away from a human with something and they have to get it to there. That's a, you know, if you look yeah. at each one of the movies, there's always something that's yeah. like an artifact and it has to, and it always has to involve a human to do yeah. it. Forever. You know, if they get away from that, I think it would be better. Which, which they did. <laughs> they did in like Rise of the Beast. You know, they, they did, and Bumblebee as well. Um, they did get away from that a bit. There was a human there. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I don't mind. But yeah. they, but like I said, they, I mean, they had the, they still had a MacGuffin, but it wasn't the fact that the human, the human, that, that guy just happened to be in the car that was, that was Mirage. He didn't have anything to do with the, because he could have had the same plot without that guy, but he was a good character and wrote him well, I thought. Yeah. It, it's certainly one of the better humans. For mm. me. I think, I think Charlie and Noah are the two better ones mm. for live action Transformers for humans. Yeah. Um, I think they had a good energy about them, and then obviously when it came to the seriousness of the battles, he kind of was more right. Let's do this because he was a military man. Uh, no worries, obviously ex-military, so mm-hmm. he, he, know, he knows he has. He's got to put a he- that head on when it comes to you know he's thinking about his brother and his mother in the rest of the world. So he's trying to you know it, compared to Sam and Michaela and whoever else. Uh, Another Victoria's Secret model that Michael Bay brings in as his girlfriend, which yeah. is what Rosie Hilton Whiteley is. It's just Victoria's Secret. And she's model. never done anything else since that movie. But be careful because she's married to Jason Statham, so kick your ass. Uh... <laughs> no, he's an actor. He can't kick my ass. He pretends. Yeah, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> But I won't like to. I won't like to put it to the test though, because I don't think it'd work work out in my favour. Yeah, I um, think we'll test them either. Plus, with it being a cockney, you don't know what he's got up his sleeve, like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you generalising there, John? Like, no, no, no I'd never, I'd never do Just that. Quite a lot of alcohol audience there. <laughs> oh, cockney's bad, according to John. No, <laughs> no, no, I don't know what you're talking about. The the. I'm fantastic. So you're people. racist now, John. How do you get involved no. in that type of thing? <laughs> hey, you're a racist now, Father. <laughs> yeah. yeah you got the right <laughs> Anyways, right. Um, but yeah, so I mean, Transformers, I mean, we're all a collective of fans. Mm. I like, like the word. Um, we're all a collective of fans. This, this and a yeah, and it's uh, it's unfortunate that you get some people that you get the elitists of, and they get the toxic part of the fan base it's unfortunate when that happens yeah but... i mean the, the toxic fans give us hardcore fans a bad name and yeah, yeah. We pa- but we're only passionate about the thing we love it's not you know like he's like the last three star wars movies i was a big star wars fan I still am but those last three star wars movies were great and then you go to twitter going they were a bit rubbish and then they go well you're the toxic fan how dare you say i don't criticize my film and all i don't no, all I said was I didn't like those films. I didn't say anything about the actresses, you know, the actors and actresses that were in the film or anything like that. I just thought yeah. they could have done better. It's all my yeah. thought, you know. But when that's the thing I don't like is when you criticize somebody like that and then they're all in your face. Well, we're not making it for you. Then how dare you say things like that? You know, our thing is the most epic thing ever and you should enjoy it. And it's like, well, I'll watch it. If I enjoy it, great. If I don't, then I'm going to tell you why I don't like it, you know. Well. You know, and that's what, and that's what gives us fans a bad name. You know, um, and I don't like that, and I really don't like that. It's like when, because I got it when the Ghostbusters reboot came out in 2016. You know, the, the the female one, right? And I was looking forward to it. I really was, and I had no problem with the cast. I will still do. And then I saw the trailer. I was like, "Oh, that don't look like a good film." And that's all I put on Facebook. I was like, "Oh, I don't like that. It doesn't look good." And I got hit by everybody going, "You don't, you, you're a bigot. You don't like women. You don't like this and this." Uh, and yeah. I'm like, "How did I he know. get that from that film? Doesn't look good, you know?" Yeah. 
you know, and I'm just like, and I took the, took the thing down because I just thought, well, you know, all I'm doing is expressing my opinion. If it differs from yours, fine, but you shouldn't tell me that I'm wrong because you think you're right, you know? Yeah. I'm the same with that. Like, I, I like the Ghostbusters movies, and I didn't mm. watch it. And it, as you say, the cast, the cast was good, and it, yes. was, it was enjoyable, but it just, for me, it just wasn't what I would picture when I think Ghostbusters, and it's nothing to do with it being a female cast. Like no. you were saying, it, you don't even take that into consideration when you're making that opinion of it. Like it's it. just, this, the story in general just wasn't... Yeah, because, uh, I mean, I watched... I mean, I got it on Blu-ray, because I had there were... I mean, the only reason I bought it is because I saw it at cinema and I just thought, this is, this is ass. Right? Mm. But then I thought... Then then I had to go to put an extended version on the Blu-ray. And I thought, you know what? I'll throw down on buy that and watch it, which I did. It is slightly a better film. You get a bit more backstory with the villain because the villain is kind of like, oh, he hates the Ghostbusters and he's not had any scenes with them. What? Where did that come yeah. from? You know, and he's and he wants to create the the, you know, if he was a Goza worshiper, fine. But he's just kind of like, oh, I, I hate reality. I'm going to kill myself, and then I'm a now 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 the, the big bad at the film. It's like. Well, where did that come from? Because if you watch the original Ghostbusters, it ramps up. He starts slow. You know, the opening sequence, you don't actually see a ghost. You see the books flying around. And then you yeah. see the light and she goes, ah, like that. Yeah, and and then it slowly it establishes <laughs> who the characters are. Yeah. It establishes the threat when they go to the library and see the ghost there, which is one of the, my favourite sequences in cinema. It's yeah, like, it's... Get her, she goes, like that. Yeah. It's fantastic. Because yeah. you're not expecting it as well, you know. Um, and it's a fantastic sequence. And then, then the, they're telling you about we can catch a ghost, and they get kicked out, and then go start a business, and then and then it all ramps up, and then Marshmallow Man at the end, you know. It's just, as it's been described, a perfectly tall joke, which is what it is. It's funny, and it's end of the world, and it's and it, and it does ramp up very nicely. And plus, there's some great moments in it as well. Whereas the new one... In of the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, <laughs> he's just standing there going, I, I couldn't get him out of my head. Yeah, that's it. The thing is, though, when, how, how it's the, the bit I like though is the subtle, <laughs> it's the subtle bits of it. It's like when they're going, you know, did you think of anything? No, did you think? No, I'm a man to talk the mic. And Ray's slowly backing away, <laughs> and he's just, and then and they're in the lift, and he goes, oh yeah, each of us is wearing an unlicensed nuclear accelerator. And he goes, all right, switch me on, and they turn it on, and the and they go. And then the back away, they're in the lift. Where's it? Where's it? <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucking fantastic say. It's just, it's so stupid and so silly, but it works so well for these guys. I have yeah. no idea what they're doing, really. You know, you know, they're not, they're not sure if it's, you know, the, the, you know, but it all kicks off because girls has come in and stuff like that. And you can see that they have no idea what they're doing. And that's what makes it funny. You know? It makes me one thing with the original Ghostbusters film. What I find interesting is that originally, you know, what would it have been if it all worked out the way they wanted when it came to casting choices? Because it's kind of like obviously Bill Murray is one of the best parts. Well, well arguably one of the best parts of that movie. He's just fantastic. But well, I yeah, think they're all good. I think it's not just Bill Murray. I think they're no, all no, no. Good. I'm, not, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not just saying Bill Murray's the best part. I mean, all of them play a fantastic part. But what I'm saying is, originally, I believe Bill Murray's character was actually meant for um, John Belushi. Well, John Belushi, but obviously, you think he did he pass away before? Well, did, did he, because they'd done they'd done um, Blues Brothers. They'd ri he'd written it for them too. It was going to be like. Because the original plot of the film was going to be set in the future, they could travel to different dimensions, and you yeah. know, and it was a franchise. And these two guys would go and defeat the thing. And like I said, Eddie Murphy should have been Winston, and then because he was doing oh no, let me see, Beverly Hills Cop, I think at the time. Mm -hmm. So they had to recast him quickly, and that's why Winston's part in the movie is so like. Man, yeah. Yeah, blink and you miss him, which is a shame because he was know, a good character. You know, I mean, I, I, yeah, don't, yeah. I don't get the hate that he gets a little bit of thingy online about his part. Like, you know, if you cut him out, the film won't be any different. But I generally think he's a good character. He does, he does like, like the whole that's a big twinkie, you know, yeah. he's got that line. <laughs> you know. That's a big but, twinkie. It has a big twinkie <laughs> because he's, he's supposed to be the audience, he's supposed to be us. It's like, imagine if yeah. we're a Ghostbuster as well, and we don't know anything. Yeah, and yeah, explaining what these things are. Yeah, you know, and um, and because you do need an audience representative there, you yeah. know, because they say, "Oh, what do you mean, big?" And he says, "Oh, you know," 
let's say this um, Twinkie represents the normal amount of psychokinetic uh, energy in the New York area. From this morning sample, it'd be a Twinkie, 35 feet long, weighing approximately 600 pounds. Yeah, that's a big Twinkie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I know that I've seen that movie so many times, I can quote it verbatim, you know. <laughs> But I like the bit when they get in the when they get in the fire station though, and he goes, um, you know, he goes, well, it's a bit pricey. What do you think, Egon? He goes, well, I think this building should be condemned. You know, there's a lot of load bearing members that um, wiring is substantial. It's quite, completely inadequate for power needs, and the neighbourhood is like a demilitarised zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just oh, it's brilliant. One of my favourite movies, absolutely, and I loved Afterlife as well. Afterlife mm. was good. I, I there's plenty of good nods in there too. Like um, they yeah. done they done it well. And I didn't cry. It was something in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> Afterlife was just obviously it's the it was his uh, a son on it who, who did the original two. Yeah, who's in um, Ghostbusters two? He's the guy who goes. My dad thinks you guys are full of crap. That's that's Jason Reitman. Oh, is it? I thought it was yeah. the baby who gets abducted. No, that's 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 just and because um Ivan Reitman's daughter is the girl with the puppy as well. Oh right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's kids in there, yeah. Um, yeah so, I mean no, I like... right. I'm yeah. not a big believer in after and an afterlife or anything like that, you know, God and all the rest of it. But I will say this when I watched that movie, even though Harold Ramis died was it twenty fourteen or something like that, mm. he was there. You know, I don't know how they did it. You could feel him there, you know. And even the the, the ghost at the end, the special effects were fucking fantastic. Yeah, you know? it was. And and you know, it, it, he was there. I don't know how to explain it, but I could feel his presence. You know. Yeah, you can tell it was a obviously it was a labor of love. You know, mm. it was kind of like uh, you can tell that they all had a hand in bringing that to fruition as a nice memorial to. You know, Howl Ramis and uh, yeah. and the legacy that he brought. Because you know, because even though there was a little bit of behind the scenes drama, wasn't there between Bill Murray and Harold Ramis and that, and they wanted to try yeah, and bring it they, together and say, right, let but, let if, Sargons be back. It, they fell out during the filming of um, Groundhog Day because Howl Ramis directed Groundhog Day. Mm -hmm. and they fell out during that, and, and they, they hadn't spoken in twenty before. years, and then. Bill Murray suddenly found out that Harold Ramis hadn't long to live and he went to see him. Mm. You know, he just showed up at his house one day and then and then they, they sat in a room and chatted for like five hours. And from what I understand, I, nobody's told, nobody, even Bill Murray hasn't said what they talked about, but I would assume that they, you know, reconciled, you know? I heard they had to just... Mm. You know, because I mean, working on a movie is stressful. I don't know if I've ever been on a movie set, but I can imagine how stressful it is. You know, you're learning your lines and you're doing stunts, and you know, you've got directors shouting in one ear, you've got you know, the director of, director of photography going, right, we're gonna stand there and this, that. so there's all these things. You, it's got to be the most stressful thing in the world, mm. you know. And then you and then, and then to go, oh, you filmed that stunt, and then oh, but the camera didn't work, we're gonna have to film it again, you know, all yeah. that sort of stuff, you know. Yeah. So I, I can think, imagine, yeah, you yeah. gotta be irritable yeah. and stuff, and they're just. You know, snapped, but you know. Sorry, I mean, uh, no, no. <laughs> no, I was just thinking as well. Is that I think some other part of it was um, Bill Murray. He kept like turning up on set late. Well, that's uh, his style. He's been doing that. Since the first yeah. But that kind of got under Harold's Harold Remus's kind of skin a little bit. Kind of like everyone else were trying to be professional, and he was yeah, kind of well, like. Showing up about an hour or two late, do his thing. Can't remember what was in the script. A lot of it was all improv, anyway. You know, well, a lot, a lot of the lines from that. him was improv. Well, he, he, he's done that since the first Ghostbusters. They didn't know yeah. they were going to get him until the day they started filming, and he showed yeah. up on set. And it's not like because normally, you know, the actors will get a script and go, "Yeah, I would like to do this," and then the agents bring back and say, "Yeah, they'll be fine," and they get the dates yeah. to when the film and all that. Bill Murray doesn't work like that. He. Yeah. You know, will decide tomorrow that he's going to go turn up. You know, it's that sort of thing. And, yeah, he, and he did that in the in the in the eighties for Ghost, the original Ghostbusters. So you know, I've heard what's interesting with Bill Murray. I mean, you know, the, the rest of the acting world, if you as 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 you will, or if you will, could probably learn a, a bit from Bill Murray in this aspect, where like if you want if you want him in your film, you know, he doesn't he doesn't kind of like um, you have to literally ring him. 
You have to physically ring him. So he's not on any social media or anything. You have to physically find his number and ring him and talk to him in person or go and uh, kind of see about meeting up face to face and then kind of pitch it to him, the film you're doing, and let him read the script. Then he might say, okay. Um, so he, I found that's kind of interesting with Bill Murray that even though he still gets parts, he's still. He's, he's, He's still active, actively acting, not as much as he used to, but he still is, you know. Um, but yeah, I found that's a very interesting approach. And plus, him being very picky about this, the stuff it projects it to be a part of as well means that he's got something about him when it comes to like he he knows what makes a good story and you know, what works. And yeah, there, there are actors out know. there that will just do a film because you throw enough money at them. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not like, you know, I think for Bill Murray, it's not even about the money. I don't think most of the time it's like, is this a good story? Am I going to be funny in it? You know, that sort of thing. I mean, it's it's like it's like the uh, Zombieland one and two. Oh, the yeah. cameos in each of those films are absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. I, I don't know if you've seen it, have you, Alpha? Yeah. Zombieland. Oh. Yeah. When, when I saw that, <laughs> the, bit, the funniest <laughs> bit he does in that whole film. Right, obviously they do the Ghostbusters bit as well, which is there. But when he gets yeah. shot and he goes, <sighs> well, that's fucking brilliant. <laughs> He's just so stupid. You know, like, uh, do you have any? Do you have any? Uh, what was it? Um, oh, I've got in the line now. He says a real funny line in Zombieland. Um. Oh, I forgot the name of it now. I forgot how it goes. Forgot how it goes. Um, have any? Um, oh, I think you know what's going on in my head. Anyway, uh, stop killing the cows out the window there. <laughs> you know what? We actually have a cat. It's not our cat, but there's a cat that comes to our house every day and it meows to get in. It tries to climb in through the window and stuff like that there, like every day. It's, I, I don't know. <laughs> It's someone round from us obviously owns it, like, but it mm. we can come home and it'll be lying there on our doorstep. Uh, yeah, do it, it. If they don't like their owners, they'll try and find somewhere else to go. Yeah, uh, it's it's mad. Like, only that my my missus is uh, allergic to cats. So. Mm. Anyway, we've gone a bit round the the the, the, yeah, get back on the Transformers track. Yeah, Transformers. Yeah. DF Nation next week. It is next week. I can't wait. <laughs> right. So what time? What, when are you get in there? Um, when are you two get in there? I know you. I know you're going Thursday, aren't you, John? Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm getting there Thursday. Uh, probably about. I should be getting to Digbeth Coach Station in Birmingham for about two, two p.m. Uh, so I'll probably be rocking up at the Hilton for about half two, three, depending on traffic. Mm. I'm getting um, a lift, so I should be getting there Thursday around about four-ish, I would think. Are you waiting for Lawrence, though? John? I've been, uh, yeah, I, um, I think Lawrence, luckily, from having conversation, I was hoping to get him on tonight, but I hadn't heard out from him. But, uh, but no, Lawrence, is, I think he gets in about the same time as me. Uh, oh, cool. hopefully, so hopefully we'll have to wait around. Well, he should be on the same bus because he lives Leicester, doesn't he? Yeah, but yeah. the thing is, he, the service he's getting is a different service to one uh, I'm on. Yeah. So I think it's just one of them things we just literally arrive at the same time. Or oh, around about the same time. When you get in there, Alpha Prime? I, um, I'll i be there about Friday. About, I should be at the Hilton for around two years or just afterwards. Like, so okay. just in time probably to check in and stuff. So. Oh, cool. Uh, Oh, it's going to be fucking awesome. I, I yeah. so excited. It's, but the thing, the thing for me this year is, is because I didn't think I was actually going to make it. Um, it's made, made it that much more special. If you know what I mean? Yeah. I see. I'm, you know? I'm in the same boat. Like I, I just honestly had it in, the, in my head that I wasn't going to be there this year and stuff. Obviously, I didn't make it last year as well. And uh, and then all of a sudden, an opportunity sort of come up. And I think, as you say, it's just a mix of that bit more exciting sort of yeah um just getting a real buzz off it and stuff starting to watch the videos were coming then just at that moment it all just sort of fell into place like so mm. uh it just raised the hype like and because normally i'm like 
a million videos in at this point. It's just that because, well, yeah, it's true. You, you, know did, I mean? you did something sleep stick or whatever. Yeah, well, I was going to do a video tonight, but you kind of, well, I still might do one. But um, I've still got to edit my re normal review for tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> um, so, yeah. But anyway, yeah, so what I mean is, is when I was sat in the hospital bed, I just thought, I just, you know, I'm not even in the mood to do anything for it, you know? It was just kind of... You know, not knowing if I'm going to go home, you know, it's that sort of thing as well. It's just like, well, you know, I'll see, you know, and then sort of recovering as well. Um, I'm still doing my video, my normal videos, but I just thought, yeah. And then just that, like I say, it was not knowing if I could afford to go and all that. And then suddenly it was like, right, it's on like Donkey Kong, get some videos out, you know. And but it's, but like I said earlier, it's nice to see that people are responding and doing their own questions and. And it's, it's building the hype, getting people excited, you know. And um, because, like I said, TF, TFCon and BotCon don't do that sort of stuff, you know. No. They, as you says, they they literally do the video after they've been. There's mm. no no hype build up to the no. actual convention itself. Like it's literally, hey, I was at, or maybe in their last video leading up to it, they'll mention, hey, I'm going to be at TFCon next weekend if you see me, whatever. And that's yeah. it. And then when they get back, then as you say, they do like a wee once around the dinner room, which is nice to see. Mm. But they don't do the whole, you know, uh, this is my experience. Oh, I met so and so, and mm. this is all the stuff I got. You know, yeah, that's it. And it's like I said, it's 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 a nice window into somebody's mind of how they enjoyed it and what they got up to, and you know, it's like. But then you kind of create a timeline of like, well, if they were going for food at it says five o'clock, what was I doing at five o'clock? Oh, I was just going i was going to a different restaurant i was getting gone up to my room and stuff so you can kind of place yourself you know as well right. you know, at the thing and it's and it's a nice to see like a whole event rather than just the way you see it you know because you will miss something that's just oh, the way it is massive you know? and there'll be someone who'll find pick up a figure that you didn't see and you'll be like yeah man that that was there i you know yeah you know, I've, I've had that a few is. times. I go, oh, wow, I, didn't, I went to that table six times. I didn't see it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I got one year, I got G2 Snarl and Slag. Oh, nice. I don't know how to say that on. Slug, as they call them now. But um, I found those. And, yeah. like, I, I think it was uh, it was Zord Rider Rich. And I, I remember coming out. I literally just bought them. And he was like, where did you find those? And I was like, mm. that table over there. Yeah, and he went back there. Yeah, there was only I think one of the I don't know a snarl or it might have been slag like it, you know the the green one. I think it was mm. just one there. I think he was looking for the snarl himself. But that's you know. the thing, you know, it, it's that's the thing about this that about the nature of the beast is is the fact that you could you could analyze every single table in that dealer room. You could be the first one in that room and just not see the thing that you're after, and then somebody yeah. comes in. You know, late Sunday afternoon, and buys the thing you missed. It just, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because there is that moment of, oh, where do I go first? Kind of thing, you know? Yeah. And I always say, right, because I do me do's and don'ts. I always go, right, do play Monopoly, go around a couple of times because the worst thing in the world is you pick a figure up and you go, oh, twenty quid, oh great, and then you go to the next table, it's down. They've got it for a ten even. Oh, shit, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. always, I mean, it don't, it's rare that that happens, but it has happened to me a couple of times, and it's just like, oh, damn it, if I'd have just gone round a bit more first, I could have got it for a yeah. cheaper. You know, but it's um, hard to get that mindset too at that moment because soon you get into that hall and you start seeing all these nice bots and stuff, and yeah. then you're just like, yeah, you start to sweat and you go, Monday. You, you, you almost kind of like throw it, you want to throw it all in the air and just grab a handful and run out, don't you? It's not, it's not that sort of like, you know. yeah. But I think sometimes, though, I mean, I've gone in previous years and I've had so much money, I've, there's, there's never anything I wanted to buy. I've bought a few mm. bits. You know. One year, I, sat, I think I spent less than 100 quid and I come back with like three or four things. And yeah. I'm like, well, there's not what I wanted, you know. But when you've got the right amount of money, you sort of. I mean that depends on how you, how you how you see it personally, but if you've got the right amount of money, you'd seem to be more cautious and you pick out the good things, the good bargain, the good, you know what I mean? And because sometimes when you got that much money, you just kind of go this, 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 this. Then you get home and you go, what about that for? You know? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, I mean it happens to us all. We all get like that. I mean sometimes you buy it for buying sake as well, don't you? Yeah. 
I mean, there's, there's been a lot of stuff. Sorry, there's been a lot of stuff over the years that I've walked away from previous conventions and that, like, like early auto assemblies and that, and I've hardly, hardly got any of that stuff left. I just didn't appreciate a lot of the stuff that they got. Um, oh, that's that one thing I bought from TF, from auto assembly and TF, TFN. I've still got. I no, still can't part with. Well, unfortunately, unfortunately, I probably would still have a lot of it, but. Um, over the years, I've had to kind of sell some figures off. Uh, you know, there was a couple of times where I was out of work and everything like yourself, Tony, and you know, mm. being out of work, and and I just kind of needed to kind of get money and sell. So I sold some figures that I knew would sell quite quite easily. But, but saying that though, I mean, I look at some of the figures I've got up there. There's not many because I'm rearranging things, but there's a few figures still up there. And I look at it and it's like it's a tangible memory. I know where mm. I got that from, yeah, and it reminds me of that moment. Like me, Black Zara, there's a story behind that. Um, mm. The Star Saver, there's a story behind that. And then these the stuff that people have gave, given me. And, you know, and um, and it's kind of like, I know where I was. I was in the bar or I was in the dealer's room. So when he came up and went, here, have this figure, you know, and or I've bought something off somebody. So it's kind of like, like you say, you're buying a tangible memory, you know? Yeah. Because you look at the figure and go, great, that's a Black Zara. But there's now a story behind it. You know, it's not just a figure you bought. It's a memory, you know, as well. Right. You know what I mean? Not to, uh, not to uh, inter interrupt there. Uh, just letting you guys know, we might be getting a surprise Billy appearance again. Oh, okay. With Mr. Billy Edwards himself, TF Nation. Uh, he is just having so much to eat, and so they might pop on for a bit. So uh, if we're still going, and we are, we're like two hours <laughs> in as it is. So. Uh, so you might pop in for a little bit. Um, but anyway, so I want to carry on with the comments because I've got bloody quite a lot of comments here. <laughs> well, I must get, I must get, I you I must get ready for Billy. <laughs> you gotta, you got to have the straight. <laughs> All right, so we've got review spot. It says hello to everybody. Hello. Uh, hello. He was worried that he was going to miss the stream. Of course not. You know, we're, we're still here. We're still going. Um uh, Collector 75, the UK conventions always seem more inclusive regardless who you are. Agreed. Different. Yeah, definitely. And he says as well, I saw Ian McClellan, I guess McKellen, uh, in the Rovers return and no one seems to bat batter an eyelid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised at that, to be honest. Ian McClellan. You shall not pass. You shall not pass. Um, Why do you come here, Charles? <laughs> Adam White. Sadly, I, someone like Peter Cullen would be torn to bits if he went into the bar at TF, uh, TF Transformers con fans convention or whatever. Uh, but the UK TFN and AA fans have seriously good reputation among voice actors, so they know they can relax a bit. That yeah. is true, yeah. yeah. Because like I said, they're just people and you just see them. Because I always say that, you know, if you see them having food, you can bathe, let them have the dinner, don't go harass them when they're having food or anything. But if they're stood in the bar with a partner around, go, feel free to go say hello, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Christopher again, sorry uh, my battery is flat as a fart. Um, that's kind of normal for me <laughs> as well. Uh, we'll definitely watch later, shared TF and free puck. Have a great live stream. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Hope to see you at a future yeah. TF Nation. You will be there next year. If we mean to come around your house and dragging you there, you will be there some. Come on. Play the game. You'll enjoy it. Come on. I, I mean, in the best possible way, of course, you know. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, Adam White it says, seriously, the power of your vids is often underestimated. Uh, you put a personal story to the experience of being an attendee. Well, yeah. It's also talking about me. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, no, there's also um, Al and, and obviously Alpha, obviously, you know, he's doing the vids as well. So yeah, anybody yeah. that makes a video regarding TF Nation, it's not just me and Tony. Yeah, you're right, yeah, you're right, yeah. But, <clears throat> you know, it, it just helps get the word out there. I mean, word of mouth is the best source mm. of it, uh, advertisement. Yeah. So, uh, well, you know, it's the best way to get out there. Anybody that does go, definitely make a video afterwards. Like, just mm. everybody, that's what everybody looks for. See, after the convention, yeah. like, everybody wants to see what what you got or how you felt about the convention. Mm. Because like like, I watch, I, I literally like, search up TFN and try and find every video that I can. That, I mean, so I've been watching so a lot of um, previous years' videos last few years. I, I've well. been doing the same too, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and do you know what? Do you know, what makes me laugh though, right? 
is I'm people, I'm one of the, again, to me on, I'm quite a recognisable figure when it comes to TF Nation, right? As in do all the videos and stuff. And I'm watching people's videos. I am in none of them. You know, there's one or two where you see me in the background, but I am in none of the videos. It's like, I'm sure I was at that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Must be the cloaking device, is what it is. The only time you see me, it could be like when people start posting the pictures afterwards, you know, because I uploading the photographs, like pictures are taken and that. And there's been there's been a couple of moments involved. There was one moment involving Adam White where I did a perfect photo bomb. <laughs> and I didn't realize he was I was perfectly in line with the lens and everything. And I remember he was taking a picture with somebody else. He was he was on the other side of the bar. Adam White, and uh, he was with somebody, and he's taking a picture, and I can see it was kind of angled in my direction a little bit. So I put, so I stood up and I just went like that, <laughs> and sat back down I again. And I thought, nah, it didn't <laughs> work. Again, that's part of the thing. You, you'll get that everyone just like in the frame in the background going, you know, <laughs> and, and and that's part of the fun. It's just you know, it's it's so much fun, you know. I know. I mean, I, I took all my photos and GIFs and videos and that that are on my phone, present, the wear on my phone, took them all off so I've got a nice, clean, empty phone ready for photos. Yeah, I mean, I found that funny. He's just like, he came back, he, like, I was just like, minding me of business, forgot about it. And then he just went, Nosey, can I just show you something? And I went, what? Hmm. Adam White just went, what's this? <laughs> it's fun. What? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's, I'm perfectly in line like this. Staring straight in the camera, and I went, I have no idea what that is, I don't know who that is. You know, <laughs> uh, no, you see, my, 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 my response would have been, Oh, it's just a glitch in the matrix. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always seem to kind of photo bump people without even thinking about it. I'm kind of like stood behind somebody looking like I'm about to murder somebody. Yeah, there's um, a famous one like, of you from, from 2010, AA 10, 2010. You and Sam have stood. Sort of at the, on the balcony, and you both kind of go in, <laughs> like not knowing what to do. And it's one of my photos, and it's like I think because he's Johnny doing so much stupid in the foreground, and he's going like this or something, and and then you two in the back going. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a picture of me someone took, and um, there was a there was a bee that kind of kept buzzing around me. And then there's Sam getting my pa getting his pass and trying to get in a glass, trying to get the beer away. So you kind of just see me going, <laughs> like, like, it's a bee, get the bee off me. Bee. Um, and then Sam's me, kind of trying to get it away off me. And it's like, seriously. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just one of those yeah. things. It's like, I've never known a convention like it. You know, it's. I mean, I'm talking about all assemblies as well, because a lot of people are the same. I'm mean, not talking about the actual event itself. I'm talking about the people who go. This is what I mean. I've never known anything like it. I've never known so much love for people, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You don't, I mean, I've been to Star Trek conventions. I've been to Star Wars conventions, Buffy the Vampire Slayer conventions, you know? And I've noticed that those, those events, there's a group of friends and they don't, Separate themselves out. They don't yeah. um, you know, talk they don't, to anyone nobody else. Nobody comes under the group either. Like yeah, it. and they're, they're I... sort of like they're all segregated around. And and whereas yeah. TFN is, you can walk two yards down the corridor. Somebody will stop you and say hello. You know, and yeah. it's brilliant. I love that sort of stuff. And in one year, it took me two hours to walk from the uh, <laughs> dealer's room to the bar to get getting stopped by people. Yeah, you know, and uh, I didn't complain. I mean, it was just one of those things. You know. Yeah, because I've been at comic cons, and as you say. You go out, you know, to the, the area where there's food and stuff being served mm. and drinks and stuff, and everybody just sits in little groups, mm. and there's no, this group doesn't talk to that group, and there's just, you know, it, and it's all, like, obviously their family's there too, and they don't really want to be yeah. uh, bothered or whatever, but I mean, groups of people around my age and stuff, and they obviously just stick to their little groups, mm. and, you know, they, if you say hello or something they way past, you're like, and just, yeah. they, they don't take you on, whereas the TF Nation, you're like, hello, and they think, oh, hi. How's it going? Whatever. Well, there. You'll get you'll get hugged by somebody you didn't even know existed five minutes ago, and then by the end of the weekend, you're best of friends. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's, it is. It's a completely different atmosphere, and that's, oh, is. that is the biggest pull for TFN is the community it, center. Obviously, it really is. Yeah, it, voice we, actors I, are great. And yeah, stuff, you know, it's all brilliant stuff, and the 
in the the bots the traders room fantastic but it's that community it's that sitting in the bar in the evening as you say and just everybody joining in and maybe mm. you can just puddle hop from mm. group to group and stuff out there fantastic if they could just turn the bar put the bar off to the side and just have one big massive section where everyone gets sit they would all probably just sit in that one big yeah. group that's what I mean. I mean, I mean, I mean, it's people buying pints for you, you know. It's just like, no, oh, dude, it's fine. And they go, no, yeah, here's a pint for you. Drink it, you know. You go, yeah, cheers, man, you know. And then you go, and then you're buying them for other people. And, you know, it's, it's crazy. You know, it's like, oh, so your videos, here's a pint. I thought, cheers, man, thanks. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's, mm, it's I, I, can't, I can't relate to that yet. But, but <laughs> lovely. It's like, I wouldn't, this is why I've been coming 14 years. I wouldn't change it for the world, you know. Yeah, and it's, and it's and it's and like I say, you can't to somebody who's never been, you know, who's not a Transformers fan. I've got mates that are not Transformers. Try and explain what it's like; they just don't get it, you know. Yeah. Um, so a few mates of mine are going to uh, Raymond T. You're right. Um, the the um, oh, I, saying, I have a few of my mates going to Bloodstock, and I'm like, they're the same weekend TFN is. And I'm like, they're going, oh, this time next week, I'll be sat in a field getting drunk. And I'm like, yeah, in the rain. So, you know, well done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, be sat, I'll be sat in a bar, nice and warm, with beers and getting drunk, you know. <laughs> you know. But I'm an Easter own. If you enjoy doing that, then that's fine. I'm not going to think it. But I'll oh, just like, friend. how wet did you get? <laughs> <laughs> how muddy did you get? Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, I, remember doing, I remember doing Downward Festival back in 2015. And, um, it started off glorious sun, dry, perfect. And, like, oh, and then, yeah, uh, and then all of a sudden, I was just like, you know what? I'm a bit can't, you know, I kind of wish it was a little bit rainy because you see the pictures and, you know, you know, all, all the mud would be quite fun, but good laugh. And then, uh, oh, an half an hour after I said that, heavens opened and it rained for the rest oh. of the day, and it literally oh. was just like a mud bath. It was literally just a mud bath. <laughs> And it's me. I remember that. I remember that because I I wanted to go, but I couldn't afford. It was either that or TFN. I'm like picky battles in it, so TFN. Yeah. And yeah. um and it was. I remember seeing all the pictures coming up on Facebook. So I know loads of people who went, and it was like, oh, you you set of bastards. Yeah, you're having a right good fun here. And, I mean, I had that week off work anyway, but <laughs> and I'm like, you set of bastards. And, and and in Hull, it was glorious weather, and I'm like, oh, you. <laughs> so the Friday, I'm looking going, oh, download it's pissing me rain. I'm like. Not here, it's quite nice, and I'm like, I'm sat there, but I just bought a fish and chips, and I've got a couple of cans of beer in my hand. I'm like, you know what? I think I made the right choice here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good with my decision, yeah. I said, and I'll be right back. I'm coming back. I just need to just step out a minute. Oh, oh. and then there was two for oh. a wee bit. Family, some peace and quiet. <laughs> 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 uh, Tony's a good kid, but my god, he can waffle. <laughs> he can waffle for full of time. Just looking at this the shadow glass side swipe, I'm going, yeah. there's just nowhere to peg Westbrook. I wonder if they'll change that for the actual Armada wheeljack. Yeah, maybe. <clears throat> maybe. No, no, like that's where he should peg there, like, but there's nowhere to actually. Yeah. Peg. So, and I got. I got mine on, and he hasn't got any issues <laughs> with yeah, the arm. Man, man seems fine as well. Um, the only thing yeah. with man is, uh, you know, when you put them into the combined mode, um, basically <laughs> one of the one of the gold fists, it just yeah. kind of like the hinge, kind of just like it just opens on its own. Um, right. So if you can't, if you, so, if, uh, I noticed it before I even transformed it. I was just kind of like moving it about, and I could see when it was inside the yeah. inside, it was kind of going, just knocking. Uh, but, 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 yeah, I mean it's it's, it's it's nothing it's nothing major, but um, but you know, <laughs> well, <laughs> mine are good. <laughs> I was just checking them as they're gonna read. I never went as far as that. They look at that wee bit, like, but now mine seems no. It's just, uh, no, just I noticed that for some reason, even when it, even when the fists were in. Um, like in the trailer, um, I could I noticed just like it was kind of tapping on the sides a little bit. Then I was just like, eh, yeah, maybe maybe it's okay. Maybe it's just one of them things. But uh, when I finally combined it and transformed it, um, if you if you kind of move it about a little bit, the figure when you're playing with it, it'll just on its own just keep moving like that. 
So, yeah. so, that, so that joint's a little bit loose on mine. But other than that, the figure's perfect. It is. It's, it's a really good figure. Like a, Probably one of my favourites so far in this last few while. Yeah. Uh, and that's saying something, because we've got a, quite a few Grimlocks recently. Like So he seems to be the flavour of the month at the moment. Like, but Oh, yeah. I mean, this guy, and that's not so great. Oh god, yeah. I think the mold's just done. I think they 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 should retire it. Definitely. Back. But even there, like it's starting to. I wonder if you can see it now. You can see it's already starting to come off a wee bit. Like it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Now to fix today. that. There's a fix for that. Is there? <laughs> Get on the joint that's in his in his arm. You know the one that's connected ah, to the actual plug. Yeah, the plug. Yeah. Get some um, some really shit clear nail varnish, right? And what you want to do is dry brush it, you know, get the brush almost dry. And it, what it'll do is, it'll, if you paint it around the, the, the plug, just adds a layer of thickness and it'll just pop yeah. straight back on. Yeah. Obviously, let it dry I'm first before you do that. I've got a house floor full of girls, so um, <coughs> there, should, there should be a clear, a clear nail varnish somewhere, I would expect. Yeah. And it's, you want the cheapest, nastiest shit as we can find as well, because. What it does, it just adds a layer of thickness, and then it'll then it'll add uh, something to grip onto. Yeah, because I, I don't have the I don't have the problem with the Orion part of yeah. it or the cup. I think it's just sort of because I've used it that much. I think they need to retire it. But to say it sits fine like that, mm. you don't touch it, sort of thing. Like, but as soon as you start to move him or move him about, or if I take his arm, like his arm yeah. is off in the box when I bought it. Like, I should do a video about it, but I use clear nail varnish to fix a lot of a lot of uh, ball joints, especially if you've got a loose ball joint. Obviously, paint it up, let it dry overnight is usually the best thing, and then you pop the yeah. joint back in, and it's perfect. You know? Yeah. Hmm. Like even, um, I don't know whether he's got this set and stuff, the shattered glass side and stuff. No, but he's on the list for TFN though. See that? See the way that these came packaged? They're literally just wrapped, and you know that paper stuff that they've done some of the weapons in. Yeah. They're literally just wrapped in that and set inside like an insert. They're not. They're not actually tied. There's no ties in it at all. Oh, is it not? You know, you literally just lift it out and unwrap it from the paper. Oh, yeah. I need that set because that. Not too bad about the side swipe, but that Rodimus looks fucking awesome. Yeah, I love the color scheme. The black, the silver, the gray, it, it, uh, the red. Yeah. And it looks. It's actually even better in hand and stuff. See all that. Yeah. It is. It's a brilliant mold too. Like I, I absolutely love that mold. Yeah, I've got, I've got yeah, the Studio rod. Series hot rod. Yeah, but that would be yeah. a nice pair to, to have Nemesis rod, hot rod as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Does he yeah. does he have the Lemmy face? Is the question. Oh yes. Let's see if we can does he really? Like, oh cool. Because that's one of the reasons why I bought the uh, the combiner. Is it the combiner? No, it's a Titans. Re not Titans Return. Power of the Primes one. Even though it's not a great mold, but that face just went. That is Lemmy. You know, yeah. from uh, Motorhead, and I might like, need that. <laughs> <laughs> Just see if I can get it out. In the picture. I can't even remember how to transform them right now either, like, which doesn't help. No, nah, because you're on the spot, you say. It's like when you get, it's like when you're doing a review, it's like you've been playing it for two hours <laughs> transforming it, and as soon as you get the camera on, it goes, it won't click, click back into place. Yeah, that's exactly it. Like, and you see that I've been doing some of them how to transform videos lately, mm. like, and the amount of the amount of text it takes to get some of those ones, like, and it's just like, ah, oh, why is this not working now? Mm -hmm. This was working when I practiced it there yeah. about twenty minutes ago. Now I just can't seem to get it to go. Like even there, I I done fans toys uh, version of brawn, and mm. I've been moving the head right the whole time before that leading up to it. And then as I done the video, and I went, to, I didn't notice it as much until I got to the end. I just went. I've done so many texts in this already, so I just sort of edited it in and go, I texted it later on. <laughs> it's like, I'm just not doing it again. Like, I just can't do it. Here we go. Here we go. The big <laughs> reveal. Oh, dude. He has yeah, I, need that. I need that in my life. That is, that is pretty cool. Oh. Yeah, yeah that, that is, is cool. pretty cool. That is Lemmy. In transformers, better. I had that. I had the helmet up. Yeah. Oh, that is, that is cool. Yeah. Just that. Uh, it's uh, brilliant. Love it. Yes, yeah, I saw it. It was on sale on Hasbro Pulse this morning. I got the email this morning, and I'm like, oh, I can't afford it right now. I mean, I can afford it technically, but it's just like 
I need to get to take in first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, All right, let's move on then with the comments because there's still quite a lot. <laughs> um, the story of Kickaxe's name is not true. Hasbro changed the name because there were issues with Pasha, uh, Pasha Records that legally didn't want to source it uh, source Kickaxe over the Scotty Bros record. Oh, right, yeah, fair enough. That's <coughs> not well, I thought that was the case. They changed it because it was a violent name. Uh, well, you learn something every day, don't you? And those are half the battles. Is the yeah, no. yeah, and nine is half the battle. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, all right, then we've got Mr. Jam Jar. Uh, hey guys, looking forward to seeing you all at TF Nation. Yeah, oh, yeah. you too, man. Yeah, you. definitely come up and say hi. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'll be uh, in the bar, so you can't miss me. <laughs> <laughs> doing me, doing uh, exactly this. Me, me and Alpha are fans to approach. Tony sometimes bites. That's why sometimes he wears a muzzle. Um, <laughs> Which convention are you going to, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> BDSM. <laughs> BDSM. Well, whatever flicks you say. <laughs> you know, if you come downstairs dressed as a schoolgirl, I know why. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Raymond again. So they changed the lineup and changed the name to Spectre General as they already had the rights to that name. Mm -hmm. Adam yeah, is a good lad. It yeah, was legendary. Uh, I know how it how he ended up there naked. Uh, so <laughs> talking about the guy that was naked. At, uh, yeah. Uh, no, of course, Gary, uh, of course, he'd know. Um, <laughs> Raymond again. Someone doesn't like Transformers. Fire up the Fitch Fox. <laughs> so who, who doesn't like Transformers? I don't know. <laughs> you know thing it was... I think it was probably that conversation where we were saying, you no, know, when you says that, uh, was it the dancers right about there? And you know, they don't like what, oh no, it was the the faith people, I think, probably was around that conversation. I would say that comment was. But they oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. When he says, you know, <laughs> people that don't like what you like, but Mm. Yeah, like basically the toxic, toxic thing we're talking about with mm. pure. Well, there's, there's, there's not, there's not going to be anything on at the same time as us. Apparently, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I've looked at the schedule and it's like we're the only one that's there this this week, this, that week. Yeah, because they released yeah. more uh, rooms and stuff out there, which would be non-existent beforehand. Like, you know, because obviously yeah. there's been an hour convention on there, but it had so much rooms as well. So, yeah, well, there's a lot more uh, runoff space now because a bit like extra hotel, which is like literally you come out on the way to the resort world, is that big hotel they built there as well? So there's a lot more space now. It's not uh, part of the same hotel; it's a different hotel, but they built that one there as well. I just like being in the Hilton because mm. you can literally just take the lift up to your room, as you say, drop off whatever you need, or just go in and chill and switch off for yeah, and then you're just down the lift and you're back in again. Yeah, that's it. You know, it's like um, John and. Um, Jermaine was up all all night, so Jermaine paid for a room for the other hotel and didn't actually sleep in it. <laughs> oh yeah, he, he, yeah, he, he, um, I remember that happening. You kind of we're just talking and we were talking till about three or four in the morning, or something at this point. You know, right? I'm, I'm gonna go try and get my head down for an hour or two. This is Jermaine, obviously. He said, right, okay, so <clears throat> he goes, and then <clears throat> about. What was it about an hour or so later? About an hour and a half, two hours later, he comes back. Uh, Jermaine, he comes back and he's in the bar. And he's like, <clears throat> like, I thought you were going back to your hotel room. And he went, uh, he's just like, I was trying. I have just spent the last two hours walking around Resort World, walking around the whole NEC, and there is no way out. I oh, yeah, they locked him out, didn't they? Out. <laughs> and the NEC was closed, so he couldn't get across to the airport side to get to the, the hotel. And he was literally stranded, and he, he basically stayed there till 6 a.m., about 6 half 6. No, actually, no, I think he stayed there. If he hung around till about maybe about 8, 8 o'clock in the morning. So he, he managed to kind of, like, stay up. And then when NEC and everything reopened again, and then he went back back to his hotel room, had an hour power nap, had a shower, and came back again for the rest of the day. So you think he only had, like, two-hour power nap. You don't sleep, that guy. No, he does it. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, Rich actually mentioned you in one of his last videos too. Knows it about that uh, whenever he landed at TF Nation the Saturday morning, and you were still sitting in the bar from the night before. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, I just walked into the hotel and there was no still sitting in the bar from that night. Hadn't been to bed at this stage. There's a, there's a couple of points of that. I've done full on all nighters uh, and then literally just gone straight into the breakfast in the morning before anybody else. <laughs> And then, then, then just kind of like went up to the room and just collapsed on the floor <laughs> in, a, in a food coma. I did up in a food coma. Um, but no, uh, there's been, oh, there was one time with me and Jared Wolfgang won. Um, uh, I, will, I, will, I will spare specifics. Uh, obviously, I was on, I was just on pure energy and God knows what was Jared, Jared was on, I don't know. Um, I won't go into specifics. But no, me and Jared were the only two people up. Everybody had gone to bed. And this was at like six in the morning. And coming up to, I think, either the Sunday morning. So it was the Saturday going into the Sunday, I think, maybe. And uh, or it was Friday going into the Saturday. I can't remember. But anyway, so it was one of, it was, yeah, going into the next day. And literally me and Jared had just sat there. And the cleaning team are cleaning round us. And we're just kind of like the early morning cleaning team. So it's me and Jared just talking to each other on our own. Everybody was in bed. And then we're like, it's six o'clock. The, the uh, breakfast all opens in half an hour. And, like, oh, and Jared's like, I'm, I'm not all that bothered. I think I'm just going to, I think I'm, I'm going to have this cigarette outside and I might go and try and get my head down for an hour. And I went, no, that's a good idea. And then, it, so that happens. He goes for a cigarette. Goes up to the room, so it's just me on my own in the bar. And then uh, I go, right, sort it. I'm just going to go and get something to eat. And then the breakfast before all the mad rush. So I do that, go into the breakfast before the mad rush. And um, <coughs> and then I go up to the hotel room after having something to eat. And then I just literally, I think I was sharing with uh, you, Tony, and Sam that year. I can't remember, but I was sharing with like those. Two other people in the room with us. Oh no, year. wait, no, no, I'd remember that year. Yeah, you came to bed and I'd go just... in the night to go to the toilet and you're snoring away. And then <laughs> you did this John, you going, ah, and then you went ah, ah, and quiet. And I'm like, laid in my bed going, oh shit, you're dead. <laughs> what the fuck am I gonna do? What, what? And I'm like, you know, and I'm like, and, I, and then you went, then you did this, you went, ah, and then I'm snoring, I was like, Christ for that. <laughs> I thought, I don't want another, I don't want to move another body. <clears throat> right, uh, where are we? Oh, yeah, here we go. So, uh, Collect 75, it says, Ah, Timmy Mallet, the reason they had to drop Transformers for Beast Wars in the UK. Really? Timmy Mallet? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Red Wars, but Star Wars is fine, but Beast Wars isn't. You know, mm. that's the... Yeah. Jeff Bennett was proud. Jeff Bennett, that's him, yes. Jeff Bennett. Yes. He, he's the guy who played Johnny Bravo, isn't it? Hoo ha! Jeff Bennett, I'm pretty sure. Oh, you wouldn't get that show these days, would you? No. no. Uh, Raymond, uh, no, they had pegged Liam Neeson. Yeah, to play there was talk about that as well. Yeah, I remember that. Liam Neeson. Um, Adam White, Zombieland. Yeah. That's the one I was on. Do you have any <laughs> Zombieland? Woody, do you have any regrets? Uh, that was the that was Can't the point. Really point. <laughs> <laughs> this is Ghostbusters too, but it wasn't Ghostbusters too. No, it was it's a a <laughs> I like Ghostbusters too. Ghostbusters too gets a bad rep, but I like Ghostbusters. Adam too. White said, "Can I insult Billy?" And just on that nutshell, oh, Billy's Billy. actually here. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, uh, Caliper, I'm nil vanish time. Ha <laughs> 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 There we go. Oh, Billy. Billy. Hey, bye. Hey, hey it's done. Oh, I'm very dark. You got stripes everywhere as well. <laughs> no, no, I'm terrified. I really have. Actually, it's you can hear me okay, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah I can hear you. Awesome. Yeah. So it was really funny because I do loads of these like meeting things for TFN, so I'm always on camera. <laughs> and like John very kindly said, Yep, yeah, come on board. So hi everyone. And like typically 30 seconds before I go live, I realise not only does absolutely nothing work with my browser, but <laughs> Because this isn't like a Zoom or a Teams call, I don't have my privacy background. So I best hide all this TFN stuff that you're not meant to see for another week. So Ooh. why my Ooh, what you got? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, freeze frame. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Later. Thank you for having me on. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Uh, how are we all doing? I appreciate I'm joining. Amazing. I have no clue what's been said beforehand. So 
Well, yeah. John's been insulting you and he's been calling you names. I'm like, you can't call me that. <laughs> I mean, that is the yeah, no, no, he does no. on a regular basis, to be honest. It's the only reason I follow him, just to keep an eye on that stuff. <laughs> no, we're just, we're just talking about how, you know, good experiences and how, you know, how much we enjoy coming and, you know, and, and, and it's just, it's that sort of thing, you know. You know, oh, we're yeah, doing videos good. and spread the word and all that sort of stuff. and um, Just build up the hype. And the hype, yeah. Yeah, just build well, up the hype. And to be honest, that, that's exactly why um, I try and come on this when I can. Like, I mm. like, you know, like a, a genuine <laughs> was late, but like, like you guys in particular, and there are lots of people, but certainly uh, you, Tony, and you, John, like the amount of like videos and hype you give us through the year and stuff, it's, like, it's really cool because like it's important for events because mm. the thing with events, People get bogged down to like ticket sales and all that stuff. And yeah, that's important. But at the end of the day, it's more about reminding people to come. Mm. You know, yeah. it's really weird putting a post out eleven months before an event to say, Come on this weekend because most people would just be like, Yeah, all right, and then forget about it. But then when you guys give it and you're like, Here's what you might have missed, here's who's coming and stuff. Yeah. Um, no, it, that's, honestly it means the world, so thank you very mm. much, I appreciate it. Well, it's good because it's like you say, it gets the hype train going. And like you say, if somebody um, say misses an event, like say you've announced a guest and they miss it, and we've got hey, this guest is coming, you know, they go, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, I'll, I'll book my ticket, you know. Mm. And yeah, there's been a bit of I don't know, there's one or two that have mentioned ticket prices, but for me, you could charge a grand and I'd still come, you know, because it's not about you break that down. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. But anyway. Just for you. <laughs> well, for that kind of money, I want special treatment. But you know what I'm saying? Though? It's just for me. It's not about how much I spend at this thing. It's did I have a good time? Yes. Did I buy some cool stuff? Yes. Did I meet some of the guests? Yes. <clears throat> did I have a fantastic time? Well, then money don't matter. That I've spent it. It's done. You know. And I don't look back and go, well, I spent this much on tickets and that much on figures and that much on food and whatever. Don't mm. that don't even factor into my brain when I come home and go I've had a fantastic time here's what I've bought and here's what we did and we saw this guest and we did this and this weird thing happened you know that's what it's that's what's important it's what you do and how you how you have fun you know it's a community thing at yeah. the end of the day and like all of those ex don't want to diminish anything that anybody does because everyone works really hard and the traders and the forge mm. everyone but like they're all like the pretty bits on top like without the community, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we yeah. bring for, for all the stuff. Mm. And like, and, and don't for one second, because I don't want to be misconstrued. But I don't think I'm saying we made the community. We didn't. Previously mentioned it. Like the, the UK Transformers community is what it is and has been mm. for a great many years. We're just in the privileged position where we get to like post it. Be like there you go like come, come along and, and come have fun and stuff so. you know, like sort of you need to give the platform for the community to all come mm. together at this one point point like absolutely I, and that really is what it is you know so like um that's why i don't want to sound like a machine like the ticket to there if you want them you want them it's, if you don't it's cool but like that's why on friday for example we always try and have some like fan panel type things um which is the perfect bit for it, for it as well, well. I think so because we've you've got extra panel time on Friday mm -hmm. as well. Um, now, obviously, Friday's a paid day these days, so we do try and give you some guests on Friday too to make sure you know you get your money's worth. Basically, I mean, I, I think that's fair. I think if you pay mm -hmm. it and then you rock up and I put no entertainment on, I think you've got a, a right to have a word with me. To be quite honest, so. <laughs> but I think the Friday fan panels. But honestly, that that kind of some of my favourite things each year. Mm -hmm. I've got a very boring, straightforward brain. Like, I, if you ask me how to do something, I'm not going to give you three options. I'm going to say mm. do this. Like that, that's just how my head works. It's not creative at all. So when I see people come up with these ideas, it's like I don't even know where you got that from. But like, run with it. That's awesome. So, mm -hmm. yeah, the well, I was, I was, that's all it is. Showcase. If I hadn't had any brush with death this year, I'd have, I'd have um, done a panel for this, for this year. It's just that. Uh, Poor excuse, Tony. <laughs> did, you, did you die? Well, no. Well. So, where's my panel? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
But I just, it just kind of blew the, the you know, wind out myself a bit. So I was just kind of like, yeah, you know, but I will think of something for next year. Do it, get in touch. You know, it, mm. it, it's one of them things. That we're really lucky that people do get in touch and stuff. So, uh, you know, it's always cool. Always cool to see what people have got. So, I don't know if, if I'm of any particular use on this, but like I say, I always jump on really just to say thanks for, for you guys supporting us through the year and stuff. Um, but while I'm not here, there's nothing I ask. I know. I'll tell you the absolute truth or I'll it's a promise. It'll be one or the other. It could be nothing in between. So, mm. yeah. I think it's pretty awesome that you sort of take the awesome. time yeah. even just to jump just on and to jump on and. Bit, just bit oh, sorry. You lost me. You're back. You're back. Hey. Can you hear? Can you hear? Maybe yeah. I should just stay frozen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so ask me any questions you want, and then if, if you if you come across one where I don't want to answer it, I'll just pretend you're frozen. <laughs> and then just move again and go and that's why we don't have. No, but I mean, one thing that really struck a chord, I think it struck a chord with, with everyone um, last year, is when you did the opening ceremony and then you said, we are TF Nation, then you went, we are home, the whole fucking place exploded. And it was just like, yes, we're home again, you know? I can tell you a little story about that, actually, if you want to. So... Our host, Dave Wallace, that was entirely his fault. Dave <laughs> screwed me over. Right. So, and I hope you're watching, Dave, because you're going to hear a cheap one now, mate. So, we had agreed that I should, because I don't do stage stuff, unless like there's an important thing that people need to know. Um, mm. I've still got me, sorry, you just look it for a minute. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah. I, I don't really do stage stuff, but we all agree um, I should probably call them. Say thanks to everyone for supporting us through COVID. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'd spoken to Dave because he's in charge of our schedule. And I was like, Dave, I've got a problem. I want to go on, I want to thank everyone, but I, I want it to make sense. I'm like, the Billy that you see on stage is kind of like a character Billy who's extra angry. Mm. So it makes no sense for me to go on with that people, but I need to do it. So I came up with this plan. I was like, what if I go up and thank people? And then I say, right, and as the ultimate thank you, I've prepared something for you. And then the video starts and it's the health and safety video. That felt like a Billy thing to do. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, yeah. I'm about to go on stage. And the health and safety video starts. And I'm like, Dave, am I still going on? And he said, yeah, yeah, right after the health and safety video. And I'm like, that was my one gag, and he's taking it from me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to make something up now. So everything there was completely made up because Dave did me in. Right, <laughs> right on, during live entertainment. So, it's, so if you enjoyed it, I can't take any credit. Dave's fault. No, but it really struck a chord with people. It was just like, you know, after the, the COVID years, shall we say, and it was, um, you know, the whole place just went, when he said that, it was, it was like the love in the room was, un you know, indescribable. It was weird because I, uh, the first person I saw when I came off stage was Tori, for anyone who doesn't know, who's the TFN organiser. I'm like, yeah. just kind of walked up and was like, no, okay. Because I didn't know what I was going to say. And she was like, that was really cool. But I think it works. Like, that's fine. Mm. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> as long as they know it wasn't taken to me, that's fine. Like, so. Cool. I'm, well, I'm glad that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. No, it was good. <laughs> it really was. And it's just like, you know, it's, yes, I'm back. Let's do this. Come on. You know. <laughs> You know, it, 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 felt, it felt amazing, to be honest. I don't know, I'm getting a lot of echo. Is anyone else getting that? Yeah, I can yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can anyone on the other side get that? Because I suppose uh, we were around. Um, I, mean, I don't know. I haven't changed anything. There's a buzzing. I can hear a buzzing. It's my speakers. That's in your head, man. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, uh, you know... Well, I'll be buzzing. Well, I'm, I'm buzzing for TFN, that's what it is. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's just a week away. Yeah. I'm so excited. I just, it's just because, like I said, like I said earlier on, um, I didn't think I'd be able to make it this year. And the fact that just suddenly I can, you know, makes it even more special. It was really touch and go for me. Yeah. You know, and I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be, you know, here in the world, let alone being able to get to TFM. Yeah. <clears throat> And, uh, I mean, uh, you and both, I, two out of two. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just, uh, it, it just you know, for those two years with the, uh, you know, with the whole, with the whole online event online and everything, event. it just felt there was something it missing. missing. It just felt there was something just missing. Just not missing. Not being in Birmingham, surrounded by people, that friends and everything. Um, and everything. Um, but no, it's just just something felt missing. But when when we finally came back last year after the absence, it was just amazing uh, to be back in that hotel and by everybody again. It, it's I know it's some people that said. Oh, uh, Adam said the buzz says feedback from Billy. From me specifically, that big fight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right. That's a, that's How's that? Can you hear me? Sorry about that. Yeah, no, don't technology don't mix. mix. Technology don't mix. <laughs> I've got, I don't. I've never got an echo from I'm getting echo still. I'm getting echo still. I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand what's going on. I think it's Billy again. It's Billy again. Man, shall I log off? Try that. <laughs> <laughs> no, stay there. No, stay there. It is actually, it is actually much better. It's just a thing. It might be maybe uh, feedback through the speakers on your side, Billy. Maybe, but it's fine. It's fine. Well, it's not really. It's it's bad. Awesome. I'll come off. It's, I don't want to upset people. <laughs> either, <isn't> it? <laughs> it's not fine. We aim for perfection here, surely. Um, <laughs> Okay, well, let, let me know if it's bad. If it's bad, I'll just switch off. If it's not, I'll crack on. But let me no, know. No, 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 no. It's fine, don't worry. No, I'm really looking forward to what you've got to film this year. I'm really looking forward to the robots. Yeah, 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 robots. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the 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 robots. Yeah, Oh, we didn't hear nothing, 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 nothing. We didn't hear nothing. We, we, we didn't hear nothing. nothing. We, we we nothing. nothing. I'm, I'm allowed to say stuff. As long as I don't say what the stuff is, it's fine. So, uh, oh, yeah. They've been working on some cool weird. stuff. <laughs> it is actually, the thing is, with the RoboSense stuff, I completely get it when people say, oh, it doesn't transform. But when you see it in person, it's just incredible. Like, mm. Genuine. And I don't have to say that. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'll be yeah. rubbish, I'll tell you it's rubbish, but it's just incredible. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll try to head back in. That helps the feedback in one sec, guys. Oh, he's uh, technical issues. He's muted. Yeah. Uh, um, I Robeson, like, uh, that Grimlock is definitely, if there's some way of me. Anyway, yeah, that in some shape or form, I would definitely be all over it. They they look absolutely amazing. The fact that Grimlock actually leans forward and growls mm. before he actually transforms in on the robot mode is unreal. unreal. Uh, it's just, it's just, it's just the fact that you know, it, you know, it, well, he's got Greg Berger doing the voice for what? The fact that you know, it, it, it emulates the the cartoon almost perfectly, almost perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Oh, and the fact that he can put his crown on from the comics and he still stays on when he transforms on the way, isn't it? It is amazing. But if they did sound like I would beg, borrow, steal, kill, sell kidneys to get that bad boy. Adam's coming in saying, the enemy, the enemy. really gave it. Hopefully, the enemy is not echoing, but if I am. No, no, don't worry. Uh, uh, I don't worry about it. Uh, 
Right, no. He's talking about technical stuff now, saying anywhere to boost the sound, Billy, on your side. But uh, it's fine. It's really loud. It's, no, it's, it's, it's fine. It's, I think uh, this is some sort of uh, audio thingy with it, it, it's it's my fault it's because the uh, well actually john it's your fault but i'm no, going to take responsibility this time because <laughs> <laughs> um, my computer doesn't work well with Streamyard, so it, it doesn't recognize uh, my normal mic so i'm having uh, to use these which are rubbish so mm. yeah yeah, 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 no, yeah so it's my fault it's blame me. me tell me tell me when it gets annoying <laughs> and i'll leave until then we'll oh, no, 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 no. don't worry about it I never know. Never know. Oh, I know. Billy. The community is not just a UK one. It's no, yeah, because it's from Holland. Yeah, it's from Holland. Yeah, it's not. That is true. That is true. And I have to say, need to credit Raymond for those. Um, those. How do I phrase this in a trademark way? What do we call them? The, um, the city view glasses which may or may not look like our glasses which we put on sale that was oh, a raymond yeah. t idea oh, yeah. so have to uh have to say thank you for oh, that I idea did. it was so cool i will be def definitely getting some of those you will <laughs> struggle my friend they're about to sell out oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah like we i put them on pre-sale thinking right. Right. don't know if they'll sell so we'll put them on so people have got chance yeah, I think there's like six pairs left or something. Jesus. Yes. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I haven't told you how many. I could have only ordered seven for all you know. But like, <laughs> I, I have. Because um, because foolishly, I've drawn all my money out. So then I can't. When I'm in town, I can't spend it. You know. So. Uh, damn it. <laughs> well, I'm sure you know. One, one of them sure, things. Yeah. Well, I'm sure somebody might go missing us here then. <clears throat> no, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have some reserve stock anyway. We always have a few extra per, so if you could. Oh, good, like, yes, yes. Desk, so. How much does that I think they're 15. Hmm. So, like, I'll be, I'll be completely honest with you. I'll tell you how we priced them. Okay. Look at the more calls that we needed. And they're yeah. 18 pound a pair on amazon and i was like <laughs> no um and then i was obviously able to find the world and i still don't feel like 18. i'm gonna knock it down a bit but still make it so obviously they're worth doing and so yeah, that's yeah. How I came to 15, so yeah ah, cool. I, I like the thing is if you're buying like a t-shirt like they're expensive aren't they let's be honest t-shirts are not mm. cheap if you get one with front and back printed so yeah. like I always like to try and do some merch slightly on the cheaper side because I always remember when I used to go to conventions, my favorite part of the weekend was on Sunday afternoon when they said we're closing in half an hour. Mm. I had like seven, seven pounds left in my hand. I was like, right, we're some mini bots, bro. <laughs> what, what can I lose <laughs> this seven quid on? So I always, I always like that. So, Bag it yeah. away. Bag it away. exactly. exactly. <laughs> I, I like doing that as well. When when the, when, the, when you just see some of the stalls just start packing up, and you get in and grab that excellent deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but then again, you know, it's all. I mean, I mean, buying the stuff's great, but then you, but then you look at it and go, right? How am I getting this home? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I remember, oh, I remember that. that. This wasn't an. This was one a TF Nation, but it was like back when, like 2010 art assembly, my very first, very first thing. I had to. I had to. <laughs> I had to buy I had to a, buy a second a suitcase second to get everything suitcase. home that I bought. Uh, I, I went uh, with a I massive with suitcase. A massive and I'm packing, and it, I'm away, packing it away, and it's me and Sam it's kind of staring, staring at each other, staring 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 staring. there's all this stuff all still this stuff on the bed, on the bed. <laughs> for yours and mine, both of our beds were still full of toys, and I was just like, how the hell are we going to get all this up? So we had to go across the road, obviously New Street days, so down the road, there was a TK Maxx or something in the corner, so we had to go in there and pay about... 50 quid, 45, 50 quid not for another suit because <laughs> they didn't have any, any ones that were cheaper there left. 
so, so we had to, we had to right, 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 we'll right, just buy right, anything right, we can. Right, and look, so there's me with a rucksack up on my shoulders, two suitcases, going through New Street Station to try and get two trains back to Hull. Well, lumbering all this stuff. So after that experience, so after that experience I, uh, I, uh, I was like, I'm not doing was, trains again. Well, the thing is, the, thing is, the secret I found is you travel light. So if you take as little as you possibly can to get to bed, if you're traveling by train, bus, plane, TARDIS, or whatever, if you travel light, you can put most of your suitcase. So you're coming home. So you can it home. The thing is, I don't spend it. I don't buy as many toys as I used to nowadays. Um, I'm a lot more sensible for it that way than I used to be. I don't know what that means. Oh, oh. Well, no, it's a space well, no. issue. But Alpha Panda, you don't seem to have that issue. So um, I envy <laughs> that room. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's about just about full now, so I'm a lot more pickier now of what I get. But... Oh, no, I think you can get Trust me, those shelves, the most those shelves are not full. Oh, man, my, my, my collection is just in boxes and all of them are down in the room table. Right I'm just going, trying to sort it out and move things around. And around. There's a few boxes up here, but you can't see it. But, you know, um, it's just, just, just getting the place and fitting it in. And, in and, you know, I bought shelves that I bought six years ago and I can't pull up yet. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm floating oh, shelves. I bought two of those about six years ago, and I thought, oh, I'll put all my figures up. They're still in the package downstairs. I've got, I've got six, uh, six floating shelves, and then my computer table is literally full of Beast Wars stuff. And then I've got, I've got a glass, like IKEA detail for the army and stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. I'll probably have to move to the right as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, just, it's just a mixture. That's that's the problem with that's, that's one of the things I was going to talk about during my uh, the, the panel, which I'll do for next year. Is where do you put the shit? <laughs> <laughs> you struggle. Directly. No. No. I'll tell you what. You fifty minutes on where you put stuff, then and sold. Right. That sounds like a difficult panel to me. Yeah. Where do you put uh, it? Answer. Where do you put it? it? <laughs> That's what I was going to call it, something like that. Like, where do you put this? And then just... Ah. just, uh, just Raymond, the yeah. Raymond says, you are Raymond welcome. I love welcome. the idea of the pies. No. Nope. See, now, awesome everyone, everyone is... is, is, is it's more, more it's more, more everyone who buys a pen has to do the pose and go, pose. but Cup and Hot Rod are still outside the city. They have to do that pose. <laughs> that is the rules. That is the that's rules. when people pick them up, that's what they need to tell them. There's, um, <laughs> I can't remember the exact wording, but like, I put a load of legal disclaimers down the bottom. Okay. Like, okay. you know, don't look into the sun when wearing something. Yeah, oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. And one of them is does not actually allow you to zoom outside the city. <laughs> I'm just like I'm, I'm doing it. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> but like it. genuinely, genuinely, I made a joke. Rather, that I was like, let's let's say that the text graphic covers right. And after I did it, I was like, I'm going to try this, and I put a pair on. I got a pair here actually. Where are they? Pair on. People are going to want to screenshot this, so I'll so. so I'm there, I put them on. And I, um, I get a text back there in the back of the box. And I'm like, that genuinely works really well. Like that, that works better than actual text back decoders. So, awesome. <laughs> awesome. They're, they're worth it, just for that. Like, if I'd have known that, I'd have like, I'd have got the guys to make some kind of text spec thing for the screen so you could wear it, but... Oh, cool. Hey, hope for the future. Yeah, that's a cool idea, yeah. Uh, Adam White's back Adam saying, White's back to give context to the effort involved, involved, how many hours of work, many hours of work across, across the team, team have gone into this gone year's, into year's events? I guess yeah, that's I too was, I was gonna, Yeah, I was going to dodge that and say it was for you setting up the stream, but what, the word event kind of ruined my joke there, so I guess I just <laughs> <say it. Yeah. laughs> I think I think the word I think the word is lots. I'm, I'm all right. Lots of hours. <laughs> lots. Uh, this has been 
we'll probably get asked this on the Sunday, but I'll say it anyway. I genuinely, genuinely, this has been the most difficult event I've ever planned out of all of the men. Wow. Oh. Including Stan Bush, full concert thing. No, this year, like, so difficult this year. And, and you Jeez. wouldn't think that at first, because you'd think, oh, well, they've got some voice actors, they've got some traders. Like, you, you wouldn't necessarily think that, but I promise you this has been so difficult. Um, I have basically worked full-time on this event. Um, and then if you add up the hours that everyone else has done, like, I can't put a number on it. It's just, like, mm. every single day. The thing is, every hour that I'm on the phone to someone, that someone is on the phone to me. And mm. then they go away and do the work that we talked about. So, like, whatever I'm doing, they're doing double. That's yeah. just ridiculous. Like, I don't want to fall into that trap of naming <laughs> people, because I know that that's bad and you forget people. But, like, particularly, like, the guys and girls doing the program and doing, like, the artwork. It's just crazy the amount this year. It's mm. like, well, it's one of those where the Billy start of the year it looks good, but the end of the year it's terrifying. Like, no, no, well, all I can say, Billy, is, is thank you to you and the rest of the gang who put in all these many hours and days and weeks and months to give us yeah. the thing. You know, so, so. No, well, thank you guys for coming because yeah. it doesn't happen if you don't. It's that simple, That's isn't it? it? That's so, it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it's it's a universal it's thing. Universal it's thing. It's like uh, you put it on. With, if you if nobody if comes, nobody then the effort's wasted. If that makes sense. Um, it's a really expensive weekend for me if no one comes. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, it's, like, it's like the world's worst barbecue. Oh. <laughs> well, imagine, I'll, imagine I'll, I'll still come. come. If, if you yeah, still in this twenty twenty four, the world's worst barbecue. <laughs> Starring Tony Thrussell, apparently. Yeah. Well. well. <laughs> You know, I was going to say, I, when, if you're still doing I'd this when we're all in our 80s and that, I'll be wheeling my wheelchair down the M1 to come, you know. <laughs> but I like it, yeah. <laughs> I did it, did it, did it. But no, I, 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 I say this a lot in the videos that I make about, you know, post-events, post of nations. I always say, but it is true that it's the true, amount of work and amount dedication... Of you yourself, Billy, and everybody else, uh, Dave, everybody, uh, the two Dave, the two mates, <laughs> everybody. Um, at least two um, mates, at least two. At least two. <laughs> so the amount of the amount, the amount, the amount of time and dedication that you guys have all of you put into the event is, you, you know, you dedicate it and you, you sacrifice so much of your free time. And, and it's just a huge thank you to you and to everybody for putting it on. It's just such an incredible event. Um, and I wouldn't be the person I am today for, for these events because I've met so many great people thanks to these events. Have we ruined you that much? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was great before these events. <laughs> well, I did have a full, a, a full head of hair at one point before going to these events. So, uh, I like Black at one point. Don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> well, that's why I die, man. That's a nice shade of purple. <laughs> I don't really. I really you wear it well. Really you wear it well. Ah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it'll be well, on the no, review okay. on, on, on the Saturday night. So, yeah. <laughs> Where is this going, though? The white place with us? Place with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was looking at old yeah, photos yeah, and old videos photos, of us yeah. back in the day, and it's just like, we were so young. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was watching uh, Auto Assembly 2010 back, uh, my videos for that, and we're outside and the fire alarm went off and the fire began to come in. And, and I just, I'm just looking at myself and just like, what happened what to me? <laughs> I mean, I was like this baby-faced 18-year-old at the time, and now I'm 33 and I look about 60 in reality. <laughs> I'm like, what happened? What happened? John, John, you, you don't look a day over fifty, mate. Just oh, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh, I'm five, <laughs> Funnily enough, I, I was there the other day. I was I was in Birmingham, and I was in the port right outside. And that passage at the back of the hotel, like if you go in that hotel now, it's completely gutted. But like mm. that passage at the back is still there where we were for the fire escape, and it's like yeah. That's yeah. Crazy. 
Yeah. Just all came flooding never, back. Never, I was stood with uh, Chris and Jeff, and I've never heard Chris McFeely swear so much in my life. Because <laughs> he he just got there and he just come off he just come off the flight and, and he was and he all he wanted to do was put his gear in in the room and go for food, and it was just like. He just ran in. They've both got the gear there. I was right. He started my room. We'll go for food. And he goes, "All right, come on." And then we get finally let back into the hotel. And it stopped like, every single flop. And by the time we got to my room, Chris was just like, just, it was just expletive coming out every there and everywhere. And, Are we gonna go for food? That's, that's, I went, yes, yes. Come on, come on. But yeah, yeah. that was that was hilarious. <laughs> so hilarious. That was that was before Chris was there. Uh, famous Chris and Felix. <laughs> that's mm. that's my, my, my team of famous team more than before he clicked on that buying the comic from him. Oh, but his, oh, his, but his, his, his quizzes his are quizzes just are something, of, something of infamy. infamy. You know, they are yeah. like, like. I've never seen You think you know what Transformers and Chris pulls out, out something, something, and you go, Where did you find that? <laughs> Yeah. Like the the, 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 trans, the, trans, the original Transformers the movie script from, from last year, which was amazing, and, and it was just like, just like where, where, who, who how, 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 why, how, 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 you know, it was great though. Great. Was great. To be fair, a lot of the who have to give a big shout out to Jim Sorens. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because oh, yeah, 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 yeah. like some of the stuff he pulls out of that, and the thing with Jim is that like, like Jim goes to like all the conventions everywhere. Mm. Like, like he, he doesn't have to come to the UK to come to TFN. He mm. comes because he really loves everyone, and it's just like it's just amazing. You know, he still comes after all these years and finds stuff, and it's like I'm gonna let you guys showcase this. Yeah, like, yeah. you could do it anywhere in the world. Like Jim's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it wouldn't be the same. Though. Jim's part of the family. It's, it's, like, it's like he's part of us. Part of us. You know, it's it's like, 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 if he wasn't he there, 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 there'd be some a huge part missing, you know? I don't... Here's, here's a thing, here's a personal pet peeve, nothing against what you said there, but mm. I don't like it when people say, oh, it wouldn't be the same without, and then they name something. Right, it's right. for two reasons, right? Firstly, because it, it, it's a big thing, and one year someone's not going to be able to come. Yeah, yeah. And, and I still think we'll get on. But secondly... I have seen people say, I won't name names, but I've seen people say, it wouldn't be the same without this guest. Yeah. And I'm yeah. sat there thinking, that is the first time I've ever invited this guest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you want about? Um, so it's, yeah. that, that's just me. That's just, at least, but, yeah. <laughs> it's strange, you know, because people have the weirdest memories. Yeah, of things yeah. that didn't happen, mm. and like they try and convince me that I was in these conversations that never happened. It's so strange. Like, yeah, but then again, not, then again Billy, you are you kind are, of you've got about seventeen things, 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 and you're in seventeen places at once. I mean, I've talked to you about stuff, and you. Like, oh yeah, I did remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, oh yeah, like, I, trust me. Like, I agree. That happens. My head goes like a sieve at times. Come here, there, and everywhere. But like. I'll give you the example. Um, can I give you the example? If I say it in very vague terms, I can give you the example. Like, like someone was convinced one year that I went to a police interview with them to make sure the interview went well. And I was like, I will remember. I will remember. They were convinced. And they were so convinced I got, I got in touch with the police. I made a freedom of information request. And I was like, was I here on this day? And they were like, no, what are you on about? So I thank you. That's, that's all I want to know. I don't know who it was. I don't know what trouble they were in. And I don't know why they were with the police. But I can take no credit for it. It wasn't me. <laughs> Wow, it might not even have been that to mention. It might be something they remembered from somewhere else. I don't know. Okay. I don't know why I was in this memory. But... <laughs> Weird. I don't know. But then, you know, yeah. oh man, I just, I just, I just fuck out wait. It's exciting. We've got Sammy in the chat. Sammy. Hey. Hey. 
Hey guys, hey guys, hope you all have a wonderful TF Nation this year. Sadly, he's not going to be there this year. Won't be the same without this, Alex. It won't be the same, Tony. And then Adam White saying, During the fire alarm 2010, I was left holding a cash box on the first day of volunteer. Can I just well, it was four stress, last days. Four last days. <laughs> can I just stress that that was not a convention I was running? Right? No, yeah, was no, a different no, show. Yeah. Like, we wait <laughs> until was, day three was, before you hold in the cash box. I'll be honest. Yeah, but... That was that was the before times. <laughs> <laughs> that was the before times. <laughs> and hey, they were still good times. No issue. Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Look, they were good times. Yeah, good times. Yeah. And the uh, Ravens is train, train, snake, snake. Oh, okay. and, and so we, we need more we need rails. rails. We don't well, have enough rails. Well, well. <laughs> if if Hasbro are continuing to this trend of release, release, releasing unreleased figures, I I don't imagine them not doing one. Why not? I don't I don't know anything about figures, but all I'd say is keep an eye on our emails and stuff this week. Ooh. 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 Interesting. Interesting. Would it be cool if I now didn't send any emails this week and everyone was like, let us down, big style, huh? But uh, <laughs> I, have, I have seen things. You will see things. We will enjoy things. That's all I will say. Things and stuff there. And in stuff. Yeah. Mm. Interesting, Mr. Bond. Yeah, yeah. You will tell me. Adam T. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like teasing. It's like a week out. I can get away with it and it's fine. Like, is there anything else I can tease? If I think it's something, I'll do it. Because uh, it's fun. So. No, there's some good stuff this year. Um, Can't wait can't to wait. see. Yeah, I'm yeah. very much looking forward to see what's in store, what, the, what all the hard work has come to be. It'll be interesting to see where it all pans out. Fingers crossed. We've got, I think we've got at least one item in the schedule that's not quite finalised yet, so it's got like a cryptic name or something. Um, oh, is that is that the um, the, 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 the movie perhaps the new perhaps? Oh no! Have I told you the story about the movie? I'm sure I must have told you. Yeah, you've told me about yeah, it. You've told yeah. me about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Because people ask me every year why we don't make the movie. I mean, it's a really easy answer. But like, no one knows. But if I've told you, I've told you. That's good. Yes. Mm -hmm. But no, it's a uh, club call, I think. Ooh. Ooh. Like the you did put some I mean, the best tip I can ever give people is, like, on the schedule page, there's a little button that says read more. If you pop it open, it'll give you a little description of the thing. And, like, if it's a panel that, that's fully announced, we'll, we'll explain it as best we can to people. If it's one that's still in production, it'll just say, like, coming soon or something. Or if it's one which, for <clears throat> legal reasons, we're not allowed to tell you what it is, it'll say that. I'm, I'll clarify now. I know Tony knows it, but the movie thing is all of our movies are officially licensed. As part of the official license, you're not allowed to say the name of the movie. That's all it is. So it's weird, because if you don't pay for the license, you can say what you want, but you get caught in the end. So that's why our movies are the way they are. Um, so sometimes there are things in the schedule. I'll give you an example. Last year, one of the things that we were really not happy about, but we had to do, was you know the 1986 movie panel? Mm -hmm. But we could say what Because legally, the agreement we had with the person who owned the script was that we couldn't say what it was beforehand. We could only say what it was at TFN because okay. they owned the script. So it was up to them to put it online or whatever when they wanted to. Um, and that was absolutely cool. So we were 100% going to honor it. But it meant that it meant that we had to be a bit more cryptic than we would have liked. 
like we made a movie style poster, so hopefully mm. people have an idea, but like that was as far as we could go. Well, no, I think well, that kind of, kind of, kind of give it a bit more mystique about it, you know? It's kind of like, well, what, what's this? I'm going to go and see what that is, you know? Yeah, it, it's kind of a, kind of a double-edged sword, because, like, that's awesome. And some mm. people got in touch and were like, please do this again, we really like the excitement. But some people, quite rightly, said, well, I didn't know whether to buy that ticket, because I didn't know what was there, you should have told me. So it's, mm. it's kind of judging that line of, We'll tell you as much as we can, unless mm. there's a reason why we can't. So that that was what yeah. that was. Just a bit. but then again, again, you're right. You're right. Double-edged swords, but I kind of like the, the. Oh, there's a oh, surprise. surprise. We have to be there to, there to tell us, you know. And I think that's for me. It's like a reason to go watch these things, you know. It's like, oh, what have we got in store for us today? And they're not telling us till we're there. It's great. But like you say, some people like, why don't you tell us? Then, then. Then where's the where's fun? The where's the surprise? Where's the oh shit! I didn't know they were doing that. Kind of actually, you know. Yeah. No, I, I agree. It's like it, that was the only time I felt awkward about it because that was like mm. quite a big program item. So the bigger the item, the more I want to help people. Can I say oh, that? Absolutely. Yeah. But like, if you can sprinkle in a few surprises along the way, I, I like that. It's like, like you say, if, if someone's gonna give up. Give the people like a pop. You know, mm, mm. You're gonna make someone go ooh or cheer or whatever. Like you've got to go mm, for it. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, and ClubCon is just the ideal place for that because you've got everyone's attention. Um, it's just cool. So like, we don't always have those opportunities. Like I mean, to be honest, the first draft of the movie script. When's that gonna happen again? Yeah, exactly. When you find something like that. <clears throat> but um. But yeah, it's cool. If, if we get the chance to do something a bit weird, we'll, uh, we'll go for it. Yeah, because I mean, since yeah, since that since, happened, since there's that been happened. a lot of people talking about it on YouTube videos and stuff. And, you know, not even people who are at TFN are right. talking about it. It's like the original version of the script. And, and, you know, and it's like, yeah. we saw that first. <laughs> <laughs> now that, that thing, well, we that know all about That is brilliant, though, because that's taken on a life of its own. Mm-hmm. It's like Chris and Jim together and independently they've been invited to other places to talk about it like it's a real big thing yeah, um, yeah, yeah. so and that's where i say like the team because really my involvement in that is just looking at it and saying yeah cool let's go like I, there's, there's nothing i need to do there do you know what i mean but like the team we handed that to at tfn to make the artwork and everything mm-hmm. to make it work phenomenal but that only happens because Jim comes to us with a thing and Chris has got idea and like it's a community thing. It, it's not like me sat in a room thinking of ideas. I promise you that not, no good idea will ever come from me. Well, hopefully good ideas, but no entertaining idea will ever come from me. There's, there's a whole big group oh, of give yourself better credit, credit on that, credit. Billy. Come on up. Oh no, yeah, fucking, mate. I've yeah, seen you. some of my ideas. <laughs> Yeah, but it's um, like I said, what would be the same without it? Come on. Well, you started a trend on it. Started a trend on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. 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 <laughs> it wouldn't be the same without. <laughs> what we need, we need that, right? And then we need like two lines of Velcro. Yep. And we're going to print your patches with different words on each day. So one day, try nice. Yes. We need the same amount <laughs> of bacon. Yeah. It wouldn't be the same without Nolsey. Like we can, we can do that. We can make it work. <laughs> we could all, we could all, we can all live without Tony. I mean, yeah. No, we'll love you, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that went from like one to ten. Oh, that's that's a few times, Remember, John, I, I know where you live, so be careful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. <laughs> Uh, well, like I say, every year you sort of outdo yourself, you know, and it's um, and it's just like, how can you better that? And then you go, this is next year, and you go, holy shit, you know, you've done better than, I'm not saying it's better, but you know what I mean, it's fresh, you know, you keep... So that's, so the best person on the crew who describes that is Andrew Turnbull, so yeah. every opportunity I steal this quote and pretend it's my own, but I have credit to him for once now. He always says, it's not about bigger, it's about different. Because yeah, if you yeah, fall into yeah. the trap of how can you go bigger, 
it's like when you watch sequels to a movie. By movie three, there's usually an awful lot. So, like, mm. that's why. So, I'll give you an example Stan Bush. Like, mm. the second we did Stan Bush, like, before we even did the Stan Bush concert, we knew that we were going in a completely different direction the next year. Yeah. Because you don't want to do another concert the next year and it's not yeah. as good. People are like, oh, it didn't work. So, and then hopefully, you are able to do a concert in the future, like Julie's concert this year. Mm. Like it, it's a bit fresh, like you say, it's a bit different. So, um, so yeah, fingers crossed. But that's how it works. So. Adam White has come up with all the cool questions tonight. So yeah, he has, he has. Good job, Adam White. So, uh, Billy, what is your advice to a first-time uh, attendee? Um, Smart videos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm yeah, from videos. Yeah. To, to be fair, though, yeah, because like. Like, I like to think that I'm, like, really trustworthy. So if I'm putting a press release out there, it's because I've genuinely got something and I think you'll like it. Mm. But at the end of the day, even though I, I'm, like, I'm just one of you guys, I was a fan, and then I started doing this, at the end of the day, I'm still running an event. Mm. So, by all means, look at what we're doing. But you're better looking at people like you guys who do videos. Because... Like, I will always give an honest answer, but they know that you will give an honest answer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's mm -hmm. not coming from the TFN website. Um, so I think, no, in fairness, although that was jokey, it's a good tip. My other tip, um, and I always, always say it to people, I'm always careful to say it doesn't matter if you drink, or go to the bar. Mm -hmm. Just go to the bar and say hello to someone. And if, yeah. you're, if you're in any way anxious, like, there are toys everywhere in the bar, right? Yeah, yeah. Here are your, your two things you can say to get into a conversation, right? Politely, obviously. You don't need to barge in on someone. But if you notice there's a toy on the, on the desk, you can either say, oh, I haven't got that one. Can I have a look? And, yeah. Or if you've got it, oh, I've got that one. What do you think of it? Exactly. And really, you're asking really the same it. question. Yeah, and yeah. the reality is... Well, Once see, you see. start talking, you might not talk about Transformers again for the whole event, but it yeah, gives you yeah. that way in straight away. I see, it's the perfect yeah. icebreaker without, without having an icebreaker at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Even if you don't know anything about Transformers, what's that Transformer? Yeah. yeah. What's that yeah. one? That's cool. Like, it's yeah. so easy. I know how difficult it is because I've someone who suffered with that in the past. It's been difficult to get in conversation. I know it. I've been there. But, like, I promise, like, it is good because mm -hmm. you'll make friends. And if you're not sure, like, ask us. We're in, well, maybe not me, but, like, most of the crew are in brightly colored t shirts. We're easy to find. Just ask us, like, hey, no, I'm new. Do you know anyone I can chat to? We'll chat to you. And then we'll put you in touch with, like, some cool people in the bar or something. So, well, I've said well, that I've in my video. I said, yeah, um, you know, yeah, even if. if, if Somebody doesn't know what they're doing. Come speak to me and say oh, I need help. I will come to. I'll say right, right. Come with me. You know, there's a guy in a break He's got a problem. Can you help him? You know, you know, you know what I mean. So it's, it's like I said, because sometimes it's hard to go up to go and ask for help as well. And it's well, and it's. No, well, you've got you guys. You've got mm. obviously theory's not going about. Chris McFeely isn't really on camera as such, but I think people know what he looks like. Yeah, yeah. Like the guys at um, at TF the show, they're on camera, so you know what they look like. Um, the triple takeover guys are not always on camera, but they're visible enough that I think people know what they look like. I'm not necessarily saying find a YouTuber and just talk to them, but no, what I'm no. saying is like it's a really good gateway um, to be like, oh, there's someone I've seen. They're obviously quite friendly. Like they're online. Let's yeah, be honest. Yeah. We're all like around that forty age bracket. I'm yeah. online talking about toys. Like we're probably okay people if we're happy doing oh, that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, just find someone and they'll either welcome you into their group or you'll get chatting and then you'll get into the next group. But that's the cool thing about it, because you've got like an open floor plan bar. Like you, you can go around all the groups all night. Like you, yeah. it's, it's it's not like being in a pub where stuff in a corner sometimes mm. so many people just, just go and say hi that's it that's, that's, why, it. I, I, that's, why, that's why i say to people i've, I've, I've seen I've people sat on their own come and join us come and bring your toys and join us you know yeah 
and then suddenly, suddenly best friends, best friends, friends and, and then you still and then talk, you still talk online, online and the next year you get a big hug from that person and it's like, oh, I didn't know, I didn't know anybody and thanks for, thanks for inviting me in and, and, and you know, yeah. it's just a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant thing. thing. You don't, you don't get, get that at any other convention, actually. actually. Well, not well, real. Not real. Hmm. You know, I've been to other conventions. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking about BotCon or TFCon or anything like that, but I've been to... Star Trek convention, and, 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 yeah, there's groups, groups that are segregated, segregated around, 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 yeah, yeah. One of one of the best things I remember was this is before TFN, but this is two thousand and nine. Um, it's like the first year we we it was auto assembly. It was the first year that and, and I say we, I wasn't working there then. I, I was just you know, I turned up like everybody else. But it was the first year that, that event had gone into hotel. So all of a sudden there's a bar. So like if you're in a hotel and there's a bar you're going to end up in a bar. And like, it was really cool because there were a few people sat apart and then someone had realised, oh, he's got a Transformers t-shirt on. Let's, let's go sit by that person. And then slowly, the circle of chairs got bigger. And then it got to the point where like we were shouting people in. Like, mm-hmm. I, I won't name them, but I remember one person in particular who now is a friend at the time. I didn't know them. I saw them and I was like, you like robots like, i hope that's what they were there for but yeah, like, yeah. Just come and get in here like um to me that's that's still one of the best days mm. um, that i've been a fan of that makes sense because it's just again, again, fans just, it's, just get involved you know? i had a similar I thing it was when um it's 2009 and, and didn't know didn't anybody know from, from you know from, from anyone, anyone else. else i'd seen people, I'd seen people, 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 seen people on people youtube, on YouTube. YouTube. And then walking and then out onto the balcony, and then everybody I watch live in front of me, it was like the most surrealist in the world. And they're all going, they're all going hey, hey Sour Vest, you want to come? Come, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, what do you even know who I am? You know, you know. and then that's yeah, it. And then from then, 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 friends forever, friends forever, forever you, know? you know? Yeah. 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 That's why TFN is such a special event, because it's just... A collective, a collective of people in one of We can we all, can all uh, forget, the forget, the forget, the yeah, forget, yeah, forget, forget about, about everyday, everyday life, life, normal life, normal life. life. Um, uh, and then we can and just we can kind of be ourselves. You know, we can we actually, can actually be in a space where we can be ourselves. We can express and talk about the hobby we all like. Otherwise, outside of the association, we won't be able to speak about it too much. At least that's how we feel. Some people feel. Some people feel. Some people feel. And that's why I love. And that's why I love the the and it's, just, uh, uh, it's the social it's the aspect, aspect that's me going mostly. Um, um, I would quite I would happily quite go happy to Birmingham and, and to that bar, to that bar, sit there with, sit people, there with people over the toys. Over the anything. toys anything. That's just me. That's just me. Personally, personally. No, I, I think that's fair. I think it's like you kind of. There are certain elements you need to, I, I, I think, all of the people who go to the bar, mm. if you could click your fingers, if you had a wish, bang, I'll be there tomorrow with all my mates. There would be nothing else, but I could be there. I reckon all of them can click their fingers and do it. Um, mm. In order to get people to do it at the same time, though, that's why you need the element mm. to make mm. it part yeah. 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 But, yeah. like, we, we never hyped up that, like, the try as hard as we can to, to make the event, but that is to get people in the same place. It is as oh, simple absolutely. as that. Like, that. That's what it's all about. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard enough to arrange it when you're at home, you know, sometimes. It's like, are you coming out? I'm going to work, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. You know what I mean? It's hard enough to do it when you're not there. It's hard enough to do it when you're not there. It's hard enough to do it when you're not there. It's hard enough to do it when you're not there. It's hard enough to do it when you're not there. Yeah, yeah. So, like you said, you've got to have that central nexus. <laughs> yeah, and that's all it is. That's just, and it's like if it wasn't us, it would be someone else. Uh, but, but, like before you said, it was us, it was someone else. Yeah, 
Uh, you, you guys put on a fantastic show as well. So you, it's not only, it's not only you know, you, you come and see friends, you come and see friends. on a good show that's good show, you know, um, different every year, just as exciting, just, just as annoying, just and, you know, and, you know, the whole package, the whole package. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, thank you. I mean, hopefully, yeah. I mean, I'll be honest, the, the kind of what we sort of aim for is, I mean, I mean, it's in the name. Like, so when I asked the team to think of a name for me, um, I had two conditions. The first was I wanted to start with TF, so people know what this thing is, um, <laughs> which means toy fans, honestly. Um, and then <laughs> the, the second part, I want the second part to be some kind of word that means like community or something, because I didn't want it to feel too. G1 or two B scores or two animated or two armada. It's like I want people to know that like as soon as they see the name, we're gonna try and service everyone if we can. Because I mean, let, let's be completely honest here. Like, like the actors are great, but I, I think I can speak for all you guys. Tell me if I'm wrong. Like, if you saw the guest list one year. And you'd already met them all, or there were, there were people from a show that you hadn't seen. Mm. I think you'd probably still come to see your mates. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. So, There's no question. There's no question. Yeah, so, <laughs> so for you guys, although I want to make sure that we do something you're going to enjoy, mm. I kind of got in the back of my head, right, they've got their core reasons. So, what do we need to do for people who haven't been yet? Mm. And that, that's why you'll see us. You'll see us bouncing between G1 and like, like Earthspot. Do you know what I mean? Like we'll, we'll go right up to date because at some point, for all of us, we all had something that made us think, let's go to a Transformers convention. And yeah. Like, yeah. Doesn't no matter what the convention was, there was something that blew you in. It's like, well, I'll, 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 it's another reason. Someone that today as well. There's got to be something. So you've got to try your best to try that. The reason, the reason, where I started, where I started it was, was I'd listened to, listen to um, Dave, Dave and Andy when they used to do Moonbase 2, and they were talking about Auto Assembly of 2009. Nah, nah. And they mentioned, they mentioned Greg Berger, Greg Berger. Berger. and I'm like, I'm like ooh, ooh. Really? Really? UK I'm like, how often am I going to meet a one voice actor? was my rationale for going. And I'm like, I'm going to go to this. I didn't expect it to be 40 years later. I'm still going, you know? I thought, I thought I'd show up, show up, meet Greg, get an autograph, pass and box, and then come home and not really interact with anyone. Anymore. Just to clarify for anyone tuning in, Tony means he has been going consecutively for 14 years. He doesn't mean it was such a long journey. <laughs> and 14 years later, he's just yeah. got the every year, to every two years we don't talk about, <laughs> you know. But, um, but yeah, that's yeah, what I mean. It's like I've gone back every year because of the community, and you know, and and sometimes, yes, it is about the robots. And sometimes, you know, I came on with a black Zara, you know, where are you gonna do that? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And my, the my point was watching the videos. Beforehand, and then yeah, I love the good idea. And then seeing seeing the, the voice actors that were there, uh, James Roberts was there, uh, Jack Lawrence and stuff, and I have, like comic books along with them. And I was like, that just drew me completely in, man. And then just become part of it. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's two sides, sides to it. To I mean, like, like I said, yeah, my, yeah. my my personal draws voice, voice actors personally. personally. Um, um, when I see when voice, I see even, voice, even voice, if I've met them in the past, if it's someone, if it's someone, it's someone it's it's I'm like, I'm like, oh, my oh, money, my money, give you my money. Give you my money. Um, um, I mean, like, obviously, like obviously blue was the draw for me this year. Mostly for me, it was. Uh, more than uh, G1, because obviously she was the voice director, director in Beast Wars. Um, Wars. Sorry, sorry. She played Transmutate in Beast Wars. That's right, that's well. right as well. Um, um, it's mostly it's head mostly bad, head bad, 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 but no, it's but just, no, it's just, it's just, usually the voice talent is my draw, and then maybe like, you know, their voice, their voice, their voice panels having to go to the But but that used that to be used kind of my draw every year. Voice actors, but as I've been going for a half, 
I'm kind of, I'm kind of more, I'm more I'm drawn, more drawn away from the attention of, of the guests of honor. of honor. And mostly going, mostly going to the friends that I've made, it's the friendships. It's, it's kind of like friendships. gone away kind from a specific, gone away from a specific convention wise, convention wise. Right. And then it's and kind then of more to just because, like last year, like I, last missed year I missed every panel, panel because I was, so, I was so, so <laughs> pretty much every panel <laughs> except every panel except ending, ceremony ending ceremony and Gary Cross. And Gary Cross. Uh, they were the only two that I met the two the weekend because I was too busy in the bar talking to people, bar, meeting new people, and, people, and I just lost and a complete lost frame, of, uh, frame, of time, frame of time. Frame of time. Um, uh, and it's easily done at this point. done at this point. People that I am around more. If that makes sense. If that makes sense. Um, it makes um, sense. And you know what, though? Like, some people might look at that and say, like, oh, like, I missed this panel and I really wanted to see it. Well, I would look at the other way. It's like a festival. It's like mm. loads of bands. I want to see them all. If you didn't get to see a band, it's not just that. Because you're having such a really good time doing whatever you're doing. Mm. So, like, mm. if you come and you wanted to see a panel, but you ended up chilling with someone for an hour, and now you're new friends, that's better than any panel. You know what I mean? So it's, Whatever you do once you're through the door to fill your time within reason, fellas, obviously, but like, mm. go for it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Just um, like in the nicest possible way, I don't care if someone watches every panel or no panel as long as they're happy and they go mm. on. Happy. That's, mm. that's just what it's all about. And hopefully, they enjoy some of the stuff we put on. But you know what? If you just stay in the bar, cool. That's, that's just what it is. Yeah. I don't think. I think since I can go into conventions, I know it's different to me because I'm working, but like I've only ever seen like two panels. So I have to remind myself when we're doing the schedule. I don't really know what it feels like to do a panel. So like I'm not the easy person. That's why we get paid for us and not so much, because like we don't every panel or nearly every panel. But like yeah, don't ever feel tied down to I must do this or I must do that. Just like just take it as it comes. I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if it's something interesting, do it. If, if, if you're doing something already, if you're chatting, crack on. It's all good. Well, that's well, it. I mean, there's, 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 no, there's no sort of... Sort of I, mean, I mean, yeah, there are yeah, rules, there's rules there's that you can mention, that things you, you shouldn't do, obviously. But, but, but there are no rules, rules as well. well you know, it's like, you don't have to, like you say, you don't have to see every panel. You don't have to go into the dealer's room. You don't have to get any order. You know, um, yeah. so it's how so you want to do, do it. Do it. If, if you want to go get every autograph, you know, fill your boots. Fill your boots. Fill your boots. Um, um, like I say, I like, 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 I Mm. Mm. And that's mm. why I say about um, um, autographs in the videos, videos and it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like it's one thing or two thing things. things. But, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I have seen, seen it in the past, past other conventions, gone, gone with a stack, stack of DVDs, DVDs and Blu-rays, but Kenny Sam all that. I mean, it's just like, like, to be fair, like, I'll, I'll address that because yeah. it'll be a bit bad if we're talking about it and I stay quiet. But, like, you, mm-hmm. you've probably seen we put out some, like, new guidance on autographs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and that yeah. is part yeah. of that because, like, like, one of my jobs is to speak to the guests, see how they've done and stuff. And mm-hmm. not everyone, absolutely not everyone. But, yeah, some people do go with big stacks of stuff. It, it still happens today. I don't mm. think it's mm. as bad at TFN as it is some places. Mm. But mm. that's why we've clarified the free autograph rule. Yeah. Like we've yeah. always said a couple. Yeah, yeah. But a couple is ambiguous. I mean, it's not, it's two. But people hear yeah. a couple yeah. and they think two or three. And mm. then when you hear two or three, you think, well, no one's going to care if I've got five. And all of a sudden, you've got 48 DVDs, three mm. of them you don't even own. And you flogging them on eBay, and it's like it's not really fair on the guest. But yeah, more importantly, yeah. it's not really fair on like the fans behind you. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. You that's don't it. want to be the next guy, guy stood there, there, and people have got a stack like this. And it's, you know, it's yeah, just not it's fair. Just I don't. Fair, you know, I mean, I only I mean, get, I only get from things at best. At best you know, yeah. the, the reality is the vast majority of them. I mean, some of them. Um, there's one this year, for an example. Some of them have. Con- 
contractual agreement with their agents. Mm. They can only sign a certain number of things, a certain amount of things, and certain brand of things. Yeah, so, yeah. Like, for us, it's very simple. Either we tweak the policy slightly, or that guest can never come to TF Nation. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I don't like that second option. You know what I mean? There's, there's, there's like, cool people that we want to create. So that, that's all it is. Still, hey, I, personally, I still think it's a really good deal compared to, like, a lot of the comic cons where you pay for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, you, you can, can spend, spend a thousand pounds just on all the and you know, some yeah, of them are charging, charging 50, 60, 100 pounds a throw. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Some, yeah. Someone it's, told me just tonight, Tony, and you'll probably know about this because it's a fandom that you like. Mm. I'm not going to name it just because that might not be professional because it's another yeah, event yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing to do with me. Um, but there is an event for another fandom. So if you like ours and that it's just one uh, franchise uh, it takes place at the same hotel roughly the same kind of year and their top ticket something i got told today i haven't looked it up myself it's like three grand what now, what it's like three grand now i know that you could go oh but really you know some actors are more high profile than others I'm like yeah but unless you've got tom hanks if mm, someone mm. of like top top caliber mm, like mm. that's different people would understand that but like what are you actually getting for your free grand um, mm, now, don't mm. get me wrong i'm not suggesting that that means i'm going to do a three grand ticket absolutely not no. but it is interesting because if you only go if the people who only go to that convention only go to that convention they don't know whether that's a good place or not. They're just they're happy with it, and that's cool. And, yeah, and yeah. hopefully they have as good a time as our attendees have. But likewise, our attendees only come to ours. They don't know there's a three grand convention in the same room next week. You know, mm-hmm. so it, it's mind-boggling that the difference is out there, and that's something that we have to bear in mind with all these tickets and prices and stuff. It's it, it's, yeah, it's, it's a it's, difficult it's, landscape because here's the thing: when you're an actor. You might have a part in Transformers and in that show. Mm-hmm. So you might really want to come to us, but your agent's saying, hang on a minute. Yeah. How, yeah. how much money are you want for that one? Why would you go to this one for so much less? So it, it is difficult. But yes, yeah. It's yeah. just one of those things, isn't it? Because, but yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's a bit, bit much. You know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, what do you get for yet? Three grand, you know? I mean, you from get, what yeah. I was told, you do get quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, but I like, still pretty good. Yeah, well, for that kind of thing, I'm 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 so RoboSend, let's use that as an example, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. So, and I know they're coming to TFM, but like I say, genuinely, if I didn't like it, I'd tell you. Like, yeah, yeah. It yeah. doesn't matter to me, I'm always going to be honest. But like, the thing I like about RoboSend is that if you've got the money to go and buy that, that's all. Awesome. Cool, do that, okay? But like, for those of us, and I include me in this, to whom I am never going to be able to spend that on a car sport though at least i've got to enjoy it still because i've got mm. to enjoy it mm. because other people have funded it so mm. Like, mm. i still get joy from that even though i can't own it myself i've seen it in person i've seen it dancing i don't like going dance i've seen it doing action poses i've seen it transforming it's like really awesome i'm really glad it exists yeah even though realistically i'll probably not buy it but like yeah yeah, yeah. I, Think, things like that so it's like swings and roundabouts i think you i understand why people don't like stuff because it's expensive but at the same time sometimes it can filter down and we can enjoy it in youtube videos and stuff like that mm. Mm. oh i i, I, I like that exists uh, <coughs> uh, it's brilliant that it's out there in the world um, well, it's like, uh, it's like, like when you it's see like a display case, case, case and it's full of like the rare Japanese, Japanese stuff, and it's like stuff that you'll never yeah, ever own. But it's nice that nice oh, I've actually well, seen that in there. You know? I actually yeah. think it, it saved me a lot of money over the years. 
because like because mm -hmm. like the Mapes brothers who like are some of the organisers of TFM, like you should oh, you should see their collection. Like I mm -hmm. remember they showed me around these cabinets for the first time, and I was like, I've never seen a black Sarek in person. I've never seen this in person, that in person, and I'm like. I feel like I don't have to spend on, on those now. That's brilliant. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So I can see that. them when I want. It says me, it's not like Sarah, Sarah Lennon. That's why I said it. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, it wouldn't be the same without Black Sarah. Mm. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah it. that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Next year, next year, <laughs> next year. <laughs> wouldn't be the same without Black Sarah. I'm going to have to sign off. I've Work in the morning, so I'm going to be up there. Still, it's no worries. No worries. Yeah, yeah. Less than a week. Yeah, I'll quite nice yeah, to see you. I'll be there Friday afternoon. So. Thanks for thanks for popping on. It's been great it's been to have me on. Me on radians mm. and all who's on our network. Thanks for having me on. Having me on. No worries. No worries. It's been good to speak to your family. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just one with all this to it. To uh, to uh, just uh, YouTube, YouTube comments, comments. that's pretty cool. <laughs> I, I look forward to seeing more robots on those shelves that you set up. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I look to I actually that. have, there's actually a collection video on my channel too, like I sort of went through the shelves and stuff. If you want to check out it? Oh, yeah, we'll yeah, check will it. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, uh, I'll, I'll catch you a little later. I'll see you soon. Very soon. See you in the week. See you later, guys. See you later, guys. Bye. 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 What you should do that's now, John, you should instantly end the stream so that he has to go back and watch three hours worth to see that nothing else happened. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's my top tip. Whenever you've got oh, that's time, cruel, that's cruel. Cruel. <laughs> I'm surprised yeah. people were still hanging around. Uh, to be fair, I appreciate you always have been on all night, so like, kick me off whenever you feel like it's good. I'm just hanging out. So um, I'm, I'm, oh, oh, I'm not working tomorrow, so I'm, I'm all right. So, yeah, I got a job. I'm, I'm all right I'm for at least another half an hour, at least. Cool. Um, I do have to edit my video for normal, normal um, review yeah, for tomorrow. tomorrow. If I'd missed that, Mr. Eric, 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 uh, uh, it wouldn't be the same thing. <laughs> That is true. That is true. I mean, that is true. TF Nation would be somewhat different without TF Nation. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that, is, that is factually correct. Yeah, yeah. It is. <laughs> and Adam White's uh, going through saying two crowns to constantly fall to the horses convention. That was a thing. What? Really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, sadly, uh, and sadly, we had we know we know this up place almost, almost totally, totally about photo sales, sales now, which is true, true. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. There has been some those. I mean, they're all okay, yeah, 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 but not my team. Yeah, it just depends on what you're into, doesn't it? Like, I know some people who absolutely love having photos taken with with guests. I'm not talking. Yeah, yeah. I don't like photos of me, so my view is, it doesn't matter if Gary Chalk stood with me. I'm still in the photo. I'd much rather mm -hmm. just have a photo of Gary Chalk, I'll be honest. So, um, each to their own. That's yeah, it. Uh, and bear in mind, I say that as someone who's going to have a photo of Studio at the event this year. So, like, I'm, I'm not making this stuff up. <laughs> I know people like it, so we're doing it. But, it's not for me. No, no. Okay, Adam's, okay, Adam's come to another good question. Adam's uh, 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 the on, the on. <laughs> Apart from the organisation, how has, how it, been has it been dealing, dealing with the guests this year? Yeah, yeah. And how and much how are they looking forward to their year? The, 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 the guests are really excited this year. Oh, cool, cool. And I'm not saying they're not in normal years. Like the, they're always really happy to come. There's like a lot of our guests are from America or Canada. And like it's stereotyping massively. But Americans and Canadians tend to really like the UK. Mm, so if yeah, you get to yeah. come to the UK and meet friends, like, they're, they're really happy. But like this year's guests are really happy. David Sobolov came to Auto Assembly a long time ago, mm. years ago, and has wanted. So I can talk about this now, but I wouldn't before. But like we've been in contact ever since. He's wanted to come back ever since. And it just it, it had to make sense in terms of the guest lineup and stuff like that. Um, like, we 
so happy, and I know he is as well, that we've managed to make that work in his big movie year. Mm-hmm. Like, just because there was oh, a yeah, point yeah. where I was very used to bring in the year, but generally I pushed you all and stuff like that. But in hindsight, like, this is the year you want to be top one. Um, and Sue Blue is just lovely. Um, I'll probably tell this story on stage, but I'll tell you guys anyway, because who cares? Mm. Like, if, if, if you tune tuning in, you deserve it. You deserve a story. So, like, so one of the things that we do, or that I do anyway, so, like, so in my, like, normal real person job that I've done for years, which I think you guys both know, it's not interesting to it really is, um, one of the things that I would have to do is, like, assess people. Are you telling the truth? Not that our guests would not tell the truth, but like, are you telling the truth? Because it seems you know, reading scripts right now. We can gauge a lot from the way people are talking. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. I have conversations with guests to work out how much they actually remember. So okay. It, okay. it was a job. Not all guests remember everything. And we want to make sure that, like, it's cool meeting someone, but if they've got nothing to say, it's mm-hmm. difficult to do a panel with them. So I'm talking about Sue. I've got like a wiki up in front of me. So, so I'm on the phone, and that's cool. I'm like, oh wow, I'm on the phone to Sue Blue, awesome. Um, and she mentions, oh, I've only been to the UK once. It wasn't for an appearance, it was like for work or something decades ago. So like, she's mm-hmm. really excited already. Um, and I'm thinking, let's throw her a few curveballs here and just see, does she remember this stuff? And I was like, I know you're in Transformers, but like you're in one show here that was only around for one year. Uh, Visionaries, like, do you remember Visionaries? And she's like, Oh yeah, I remember Visionaries. I remember this that, the other. And she's like, but It wasn't the only one year show I was in. How oh, Galaxy? I lost it. Yes, she was. Yeah, yes, she was. Yeah, you were in Galaxy High, and this yes, is the point. Like, uh, in Sue Blue. Me? Me? Exactly. I I didn't remember, and she shouted at me. She was like, Billy. I was the lead girl. Uh, <laughs> like, oh, shouted at by RC, dearie me. But um, yeah, so really excited both of them. Like some days, Sue's lovely. Some days she just emails me to tell me she's excited. Like, she's oh, sweet. sweet. So you'll all really like Sue. And then um, our other, I'm going to mention the other international guests who I've mentioned too, if you would like to. Um, Jeremy Levy, who is Bumblebee in Cyberverse. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. So he has been to the UK before, not for an event, but just because he loves the UK. Like, like, I think one of the things he said to me was, like, like one of his favourite places to be is in, like, a 200-year-old pub or something like that. Oh, yeah, he, oh, yeah. he just, like, well into it. Um, and we had him on a, a big broadcast. He was really nice. Mm-hmm. So... Like we knew he was going to be a good guest to you, we could make it work. And then the other international first time is uh, May Cat, who's, who's written on a lot of the more modern um, TV series. And mm, mm. May's really excited. Like, really, really excited. Oh, so, um, yeah, it's like the, the, they're really excited. But, and that's not me picking that up like that. That genuinely, that's what they tell me, and I believe. So, oh, yeah, oh. I think they're going to be really good. We, one of the things we always try and do is so internally, these are not like a secret, but internally, we have a couple of words for types of guests that we want to do. Okay, what okay. or a couple of names. One of them we call an Uncle Bob guest, Uncle Bob, Bob. Bianski, right? So, the idea with an Uncle Bob guest is we want someone who is not necessarily an actor, but they've done something so interesting that they can talk about it. They're a creator of some kind. Okay, okay. Uh, and Sue Blue falls into that category as well as actor, mm-hmm. because of mm-hmm. all the director work on the you know, police force and stuff. And then the other one, we always call them bar guests. Like, because a lot of them are, well, I don't know of any other conventions, there might be some, but I don't know of any where you just sit in the bar like normally they're paywalled and you don't see them mm-hmm. so not everyone likes it and that's fine but if we can find at least one guest each year who's happy to like chill out with people after the show that's really cool so 
Yeah, because yeah, one year... I think we got them this year, so... Yeah. It was one year, Mark, Mark Ryan, Ryan sat in that, sat bar, in that bar, bar all night, all night like, like 3 o'clock in the morning. morning. Mark Ryan did not just sit in that bar. Well, all right, Mark all Ryan right. owned that bar. Yes, he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I didn't get a chance to speak to him in the bar because he was just surrounded by a thousand people and he had time for everyone as well. It's just... Mark Ryan... I, you know what? I'd, I'd like to bring Mark Ryan back at some point. Yeah, just, yeah, he was, yeah, was a good guy, yeah. Really good guy, really good stories. Not mm, necessarily mm. Transformers, just career generally. So, mm, mm. Yeah. Again, good question, Mr. White. On fire. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lucky81, uh, looking, looking forward to catching up next week at TF Nation chat. Oh, yes. Yes, oh, yes. it's yes. going to be good. Yes, it's going to be good. Yeah, I, I definitely need yeah, it. I, I definitely need it. Yeah. I've had, a, I've had a, a bit of bad luck, a bit of bad luck this, this past year, so past I want to so forget my troubles forget for a few years, years and just years, robots and robots beers and beers and, and, you know, and, and, you know, just bros, it's going to be bros. That's the cool thing, it's, it's gonna be, you can put everything be, behind you for a few days. Mm, mm. Yeah, I'm no doubt I'm going to have to tell you. Well, I mean, to be fair, I, I, I think I think you deserve that. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you're going to go through that experience, you at least mm. think about the story. Mm. Out of it, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write into the story. story. Everybody gather, everybody gather. 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 Everybody Turn it, we've, we've got it, we've got this man on the stage. The stage. The stage. The stage. No, 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 don't want to go home, don't want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. You know, in, 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 this is a convention story, just because just because John mentioned it, I remember. What year did Stan Bush go? 2018? 18. So, I can't remember, I've told you this before, but like, um, the Hilton's own stage, is of whatever height it is. Mm. And like, I've got 3D floor plan software. It's really creepy to like play in TFM Doom, right? It's like really <laughs> creepy. And so I started putting all these people in it, like they're in an audience, and I put one on the stage like staff. It was like the Matrix, everyone had the same face. Okay. But I did it to try and work out what your view would be like from the hall. Mm-hmm. I was like, right, we need a bigger stage. Um, so we went to our AV company and they're like, this is the biggest stage we do. And I was looking at it and I was like, that would work in a really long festival gig or a concert hall. Like, but in such a short room, the angles like steeper. You need a tall mm. stage, you get. So I had to hire a stage in from an external provider. So obviously for insurance reasons, your AV company is not going to set that stage up. Mm-hmm. And TFM at that point did not have the money to pay someone to set that stage up. So me and Dave Rock built this stage, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm there. I don't remember this convention other than this. I remember that. I remember a concert. I remember the original stage. I, I have no memory of the convention like here because we just spent hours laying down underneath the stage, ratcheting these things together. <laughs> and then the very next day, because it had to be picked up again, to ratchet it down again. Just, in hindsight, it was ridiculous, but like, we got the money, what are you going to do? Like, it was that close to the bone that year. Like, mm-hmm. like, oh, like yes, I don't think yes, I, I even saw you yeah. once, once I saw you that whole year. Whole year. <laughs> I, I just wasn't, that. wasn't yeah, there. In yeah. fact, this is really bad, but like, I've watched people's YouTube videos back, and Stan gave me a shout out on stage, mm-hmm. and they couldn't find me. Yeah. I wasn't there. I was. I don't know where I was, but like I was on the door, so I must have been like talking to someone or whatever. I'm like, oh my god, stand up, shout out. Didn't even hear it. So, <laughs> no memory of that year at all. No, you did. I saw you. Well, I saw you on stage during the, you know, opening ceremonies, and then you saw you in the corridor during the year, full Billy intense face. That's just my pain. <laughs> I'll help it. You go, you go. <laughs> it's like, you know, um, oh, what is on? I don't want to use his real name in case he doesn't like it. Because he doesn't have to put King, King Grimmy? King Grimlock? 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It works on like the power storm. Yep. Um, yep. So, like, he comes in season one, yeah. Like, every year he comes in season one. But, like, he comes in season one, yeah, and it's like, we've got a theory. We know how the events are going to go based on how many veins are popping in your head. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, genuinely, I just look like this. Like, it's. <laughs> Somebody else is doing the work. <laughs> not me. I promise. Yeah. I'm, I'm no, 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 we're talking about past year this year. I'm going to count them out. We're going to five there. Yeah, yeah, things are going well. well. Every time I see you, I'll be like, oh, Tom, so wouldn't be the same without you. I'm going to make a point of doing that. Yeah, you're starting to sing now, though. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. It's going on t shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, at the end of the closing ceremony, you can come out and say, but it wouldn't be the same without all of you. To be fair, though, true. That is the one thing it wouldn't be the same without. It's like, yeah, yeah. People generally. Yeah, yeah. There's just some, so, some absolute wonderful people, people, and it's just like, you know. Uh, I can't say I know everyone there, but I know a fair slice, and it's just, you know. I, I, I won't change as well. I'll tell you what, I can guarantee you won't know everyone there yet this year because there are loads of new people coming this year. Mm-hmm. Loads. Like, it's been surprising me because, like, you know, when I go through the tickets and make sure mm-hmm. you know and stuff, I'm looking at it. And, like, the Mapes Brothers, who are wizards, like, they've built a button so I can work out quickly mm-hmm. when the first time someone came was and the amount of people who were coming for the first time crazy so like like if we've got any like veterans still watching like that is your kind of homework for this year that's your billy homework mm-hmm. like be nice to know this like and i know you would but what i'm saying is they might not necessarily approach you but if you mm-hmm. see someone sat on the outskirts of your group just like tony said earlier just like just say hi just bring them in um because there's going to be so many new people, and we just want to make sure everyone everyone's happy. So I mean, I got a lot of people last year coming up to me saying, I, I know about, about this event, event sort of random randomly came up on your video, video and, and, you know, and, and bought, bought me tickets there and, and then. then. Didn't you do oh, that with really? someone in work once? I'm sure you met someone in work once and told them about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I used to work at Entertainer, and the lad came in, he died trying to and it was like, like literally, I think, I think, I think, I think, February, March, sort of time. time. And I said, I'd like to check out TF Nation, and I get a tap on the shoulder, and there he was. You know, TF and then he was then so, so and he was like, hey, this, this is you. you. I'm, I'm so nervous to go meet him. Right, right, come with me, I know, I know. Come, come on, come on. And I introduced you to He was really cool. Like, he was, oh, he's, he is, yeah. He was really but, nice, but, and he, he doesn't... He doesn't like the spotlight, if that makes sense. I know that's yeah, kind of yeah. strange, considering he's on all these big videos and stuff, but, like, he's, he's just a really... I can't, I can't, I can't feel sorry for you because it's been a few times when, 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 when I've looked at him, at him and I've gone out for his sweet and he's just kind of like, like my eyes are kind of met. And I was just kind of like, 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 like the quick candlelight, like, like, me, like, me, 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 Whereas me, Whereas I'll, me I'll, I'll, like, I'll, 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 I'll absorb it. Absorb like, it. Neutrinos. Neutrinos. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm not, I feel I'm like not I should do this. Not, yeah. um, if you like TF Nation, and you like to, do yourself a favour today. Go and uh, go and support Two on Patreon. Uh, look at the big Unicron video. I think you might see something else you like. There you go. Doing a plug <laughs> for you, Two. Done it, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if you, and if, and if you don't want to do that, just just watch it anyway. And when it's free, yeah, yeah. it'll be fine. But there you go. It's all it's all good. I mean, that's I mean, the thing. I mean, it's the fact that, that, that you know you, yeah, you that first that year, first I, year went, I went, you know, yeah. back, way back yeah. in the day yeah. to see yeah. all, all yeah. that we're doing YouTube at the time, and it's delight there in front of you. Just the most surrealist of experience. But good, good, in a good, good. 
I always get like freaked out by like like Nolsey, if you use an example. Like I never realise how tall you are until August. <laughs> I don't know why. But I always see you in August and I'm like, oh, that is that is that is a unit there. That is big. <laughs> uh, and, like, it's always height. I don't know why, but like I'm always quite height when I'm on you. And then you see them in real life and it's like Gosh, you're like this larger than life character, but you do fit into a pair of jeans just like I do. It's like every everyone's real, <laughs> but it's yeah. so strange. So yeah, I remember, yeah, going, I, to, I remember going to. I remember going to twenty ten the first convention, and everyone seemed everyone to think I was this small guy, guy, guy in the room. room. And then, but when they met me, they were like, "How tall are you?" And I'm like, "I'm like four foot." And they're like, "You really don't look foot." In your video, it's weird. And it is odd. It's weird. 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 It's <laughs> like dearie me like he's going in for the hug this is going to be some hug let me tell you <laughs> worlds are about to collide here <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's, um, it's, it's, it's more than anything sunny I think we all do with this time of year yeah, yeah. Well, it's like I've, I've said it's a million times. It's like it's like it's like Christmas, like New Christmas, Year, Halloween, New Year, Halloween, birthday you know, party, you know, party, all rolled into all rolled into one. Into one, into one, into one, into one you know, and it does feel like it does feel like that. Because I could give because I could give two, you know, two asses about these days. August, August, August. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Robot Chris, Robot Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like just like Christmas. I've never seen Nolsey and Sam in the same place at the same time. Just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, you have to share a bus route by a pair of them. It's, you, know, you, can tell you, you tell you this, I've not seen proof. They're the same guy as far as I'm concerned. It's like a pretender shell scenario. Is <laughs> is basically the mirage, mirage pretender? Pretend, uh, <laughs> no, it's like no, your like your hand, hand, your hand, hand, hand and he's a hologram. hologram. <laughs> uh, that does come back. How important is feedback for attendees and do many folks shy away from giving us feedback? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not really that important. It's not really that important. I mean, I'll come to the how important is it part last, because that's probably the most important part of Adam's question. Again, excellent question, Mr. Watt. Mm -hmm. um, but I think generally in life, people only give feedback about things they really love or really hate. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest, I don't mind either way. That sounds weird that I would say, if you hate it, let me know. But like, if you don't let me know, I can't fix it. So. Just be honest, I don't care. Like, it, it, it's good. Uh, but then, how often are you looking at a hotel? You've got to go away for a weekend. And there are loads of three out of five star reviews. It doesn't happen. You get one star and five stars. But that's just the way people are. So, mm. so it can be difficult to get feedback from like a majority. One of the things that we do at the convention. Um, you guys have been before, so you'll know if anyone's watching who's, who's not been before. We have a panel on Sunday, the last panel, and it's called Construct a Con with hyphens, because that's what the team do, we construct the convention. I thought that was a really touchy thing, and nobody else does. Um, I'm like, yes, very good. Very good. in that panel, I mean, really, that panel's for people to ask us questions, but like sometimes we throw questions out. Now, I'm all cautious about it because you're not even going to have half of the people at that point play on a Sunday afternoon. The room's still full, but like, there are a lot more people. But it's the best chance I can get to ask a big group something all at once. So mm. we, we try and do it that way because we know that not everyone maybe has the time or whatever to do a questionnaire. Uh, but as to how important it is, like, it, it's. Ultimately, it's the most important thing there is because, like, 
the show doesn't happen if the attendees don't come. I keep saying mm. show, mm. by the way. I am aware it's a convention. Right? It's just, I say show because we put so much effort into trying to make like a live theatre thing. Like we try and make it like a trader hall plus a theatre type experience, if you know what I mean. So that's why I use the word show, so I apologise. But we, if, if you people don't come, it doesn't happen. So like, and you're only going to come if there's something you want to see. So tell us what you want to see. It, it's just that simple. Like if if everybody got in touch tomorrow, I'm not saying do this because I'm busy this week. But if everyone got in touch tomorrow and said, "Hey, dude, we really love G1, but like actually, we want to hear about these machines." Mm-hmm. Okay. Then I would say two things. I'd say firstly, that is correct because it's the greatest series of all time. Um, well, and, well. Then, <laughs> and then secondly, I'd say, well, I'll speak to the team. But if so many of you are interested in it, I can't really afford that. So it's, it doesn't have to be that. It doesn't have to be no, no. It can be anything. It can be like, I didn't like the way we had to queue, or I did like the way we had to queue. I thought you handled it well, or whatever it is. Like, well, no, you that, do need a bit of criticism. That's, 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 that's how you improve. That's how you can do better next time, isn't it? Isn't it? You know, it's like, well, yeah, you might not have, you know, the dealer's room say let, let, um, layout might not have been the most optimal you can get, you know, but then next year you rearrange it, you know, that's, that's it, that's, that's it. exactly what it is. But what, what, I'll give an example from this week, and this is not to my own horn, this is just because it was me, so I remember, like I'm sure there are other people, but like, somebody messaged, they've never been before, and they wanted to bring in their kitty. And they were like, look, we know the kiddies' tickets are free. Um, it was mum and dad. We know our, our tickets are paid for. That's cool. But we've never been before. It looks different to other conventions like Comic Cons and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, what ticket shall we buy? Um, and so I asked them a couple of questions. How old's the kitty? Kitty's about eight. Big fan. Okay, cool. What about you guys? Ah, uh, like, I mean, I was really for the kitty. Like, we, we enjoy it, but, like, we're not hardcore fans. I'm like, okay, don't buy early access. Save yourself the money on that, because mm-hmm. that's for the hardcore collectors who want to get stuff. Don't think you have to buy that to get the whole experience, because you're probably not going to need that. And then, you know, you could use, what, about eight? Now, that's fine. Might enjoy some panels, but in my experience... Probably about 10 or 11 is when they really start getting interested. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's up to you, but it's going to save you a night in the hotel if you don't buy Friday because you might not enjoy it that much with the trader hall not open. And, like, within two minutes, I've talked myself out of X amount of ticket money that the show needs. Mm-hmm. But I think that's really important because if you get in touch with an event, so what tickets shall I buy? And they say all of them. Mm-hmm. Why would you trust anything that, that event says at that point? You have That's to have it, a, it. an honest answer. So I'd rather just, I'd rather tell people the truth and then they can come. And if they enjoy it, yeah, fine. Buy the next day next year. Like, it's fine. They come on the Saturday. And if you really enjoy it, come on the Saturday. That's cool. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, so feedback from people like that is important because they'll feedback and say, oh, yeah. We do want to come someday, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Is that no, that's 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 it, 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 like you said, they might not enjoy certain aspects, 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 but they might enjoy others. others. And if they, they, they think, they, well, I've got it for the ones I don't enjoy, I don't want to do those. You know. So it's important. Yeah. And to be fair, that's why I won't go into it again because we've had the conversation in the past, but that's why we have the whole each ticket separate. If you want them all, you don't have to buy them all, just buy them whenever. If you don't want them all, you don't have to buy them. Like, just, just buy what you like, it's cool. Um, and if you, you hear things are good and you want to try it next year, try it. But like, we, we very rarely do ticket pushes. Mm-hmm. Like, I'd like to, it's not quite this simple, but I'd like to think if you put on a good event and you generally trying to be nice to people. The tickets will sort themselves out, hopefully, and you'll have enough mm-hmm. to pay for the event. So, like, why upset people by constantly saying, my tickets, my tickets, my tickets? Um, like, and to be fair, I 
don't know any Transformers convention that does that generally, but there are some other conventions that do that constantly. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like that. So, yeah. just, just being decent to people, really, isn't it? So, it's all right. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Because, like I say, say, you, you say, you say you if, if, if they buy every single piece and then come and not enjoy them, they ain't going to come next to each other. Well, this is the thing. I'd rather... I'd rather... Like, it's not all about money, but tickets are money, obviously. Mm. I'd rather you give us less money and enjoy it so much that you want to come back mm. than give us more money and you feel miserable because, mm. because actually um, one day was enough for you. You're really mm. happy for one day. Um, so yeah, that's, it, it really is that simple. And that, to be honest, that's a pattern we see with first timers. Mm. Is, like, People like you two, like, we could do a three-week convention and you'd somehow manage to do that. But, oh, yeah, uh, oh, yeah. but your first time, yeah, yeah. it'll typically come for one day. Mm -hmm. And then the next year, they might come a bit more. Cool. Like, and that's the way to do it, isn't it? Well, it, it, was exactly. yeah. it was like, it was like uh, TFM Minicon. Um, um, I mean, that was the, that first, was the first one, one you guys, guys put on. on. Um, and I, 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 I'm talking, talking to a few people, people um, um, that, that have never been to, to the main one in Congress, have never been before, I've heard, 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 heard a bit of the main thing. And then um, I got talking to a few people, people and they actually, the Minicon worked out very well for me, because it kind of, those that were on the fence going to a main event, they were kind of, Family introduced to the TF Nation in a small way, um, um, and that and kind of, kind of I, I think most of the best time that you've, you've got probably, probably um, um, this year, year that you've that been, been ticket sales. sales. I think, I think maybe, maybe that is that a mini pop, mini pop, I think, maybe. a little bit. I think, no, you're definitely right. I mean, uh, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I know that. Again, that magic button the Mapes Brothers built for me, which saves yeah, me right. hours of going through databases. Like, like I can see from that button, yeah, yeah. some people came <clears> for <throat> the first time at Minicon, and it says they've been to two events. Mm -hmm. That means they've subsequently bought a ticket for this event. Mm -hmm. now, wh whether they bought a you know, weekend's worth of tickets or like a, a Saturday, to me, obviously, I, as an event planner, you want people to enjoy the whole event, but just to me as a fan, I come for one day, I don't care, just come and meet people, and then, you can only ever come for one day, just come for one, just like, just get involved. Uh, so yeah, you, you are right, John, the amount of people who tried it out, because yeah, people yeah. Are, it's a bit closer to home, it's not overnight, I don't have to go to hotel rooms, so I can try it without the risk of spending all that money. Mm -hmm. um, and then they liked it and got actually, yeah, I mean, I, I, in fact, I think I can say this, we, we've got volunteers this year, definitely one, possibly four, who were, I know we've got volunteers who came to Minicon as their first event. Um, well, well, so, cool. cool, I'm really glad we did it, I really am, um, just for that, just, just for, getting new people through the door. That's, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. But the thing is, the cool thing with Transformers is that it does keep changing, like the name says. Like, mm. every, every year, not every year, but like, really, every series of Transformers is a reboot, isn't it? Let's be honest. Like, mm. It's been rebooted so many times, and every time it's rebooted, you get like a fresh batch of young people come in. Like the movies, love them or hate them, they mm. brought in a whole new wave of fans. The mm -hmm. comics bring in a new wave of fans. And it's just really cool because what you end up with is a really like diverse fan. But like, I'll, I'll say this, I don't mean this in a bad way, so please don't take it that way. But like, like when we, those three, started going to conventions, mm. let's be honest, most of the people there looked like us. Mm. Mm. You know, it was unusual to see girls. It was unusual to see people of colour. Everyone looked like us. Um, I'm like, that's, that's just not a thing anymore. And yeah, like yeah. TFN, it's like... Not, yeah, I say TFN because that's the event I work on. I'm not saying it's the only mm. event like that. That's mm. not what I'm about. But it's like, on that last panel, it 
which is really the only time I'm on stage. So I see everyone from Dave Wallace's view that he has all the time. I'm looking at it, and it's just like, it's just like all different people from everywhere. Yes, yes. It's like um, all different countries, and they are. I see where they come from. And like, frankly, it's terrifying how fast mm-hmm. they all come from those but like, They're from all different countries. Um, there are people who look different, there are people with different genders. And like, you just look out at it, and it's like, that's, that's just a nice place to be. Like, that's, like, if you can feel included, that's awesome. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, more people about that, more diverse people about that. Um, Instant diversity and incident combinations. There you go. There you go. But we're getting a bit but, super. But, like you said, you've got to think, like, like yeah, I'm a G1, G1 right? but, but, but every, every series, series of Transformers, be it, be it four, four years, four years old, old, be it two years two old, is somebody's G1. Um, yeah, yeah. And, that and that is, is, is great. Great. You know, what, yeah, like I said, whatever you, you bring it to the mix, it's, it's, it's you like robots. Like robots. So do why? why? Join us. Join us. Yeah. Well, genuinely, I mean, you mentioned Mark Ryan earlier. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Mark Ryan, to Transformers fans, is moving first. Mm-hmm. He's Jet Fire, he's locked down. And like, for a mind, he didn't come this year. He came several years ago. Mm-hmm. And several years ago, the Bay films were still going, and some people were quite vocally disliking them. Mm. Like, like, it would have been easier to not bring Mark Ryan than to bring him. Mm. Mm. And we knew we'd get some comments, but we, it was the exact same thing you just said. But the movies are someone's G1, mm. animated mm. as someone's G1. So, like, yeah, yeah. just try and celebrate everything. And to be fair, I genuinely, I think. And I won't get into a big conversation about the movies, but like, let's say the movies, because a lot of people have issues with them. Mm-hmm. I think even the most hardened Beast Wars fan, or G1 fan, or animated fan, or whatever, there will be a clip in one of those movies that really mm-hmm. gets you, and you're like, that's Transformers. You might not like the whole movie, mm-hmm. but the stuff in there that you'll enjoy. And I think that's the same as all of it. As I say, with the exception of Beast Machines, which is, of course, the greatest series of all time. Start to finish, perfect. So, that aside, everything else has it. <laughs> well, that's... <clears throat> no, you're right, you're right. It's, it's, it's just nice to see that everyone, everyone liking something, something different, 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 yet, yet the same. Hmm. You know? It's Autobots, it's Decepticons, Autobots, Maximals, Predacons, whichever version of that you like, you know, you know. No, Adam oh, said, really? Adam yeah. said, Ken. Um, I've uh, often, I've often curious, curious friends use 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 if you like if it, you like uh, it, we can uh, next year, year if you not, it, if not, 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 that's it, yeah, that's it, yeah. But Sunday particularly, I think probably the reason Adam said that is because like it's, it's generally a more chill day. Mm, um, yeah, it's, yeah. What, it's what I call hangover day. Um, <laughs> not, not everyone yeah, thinks yeah, that's high, but um, yeah, Sunday is a good day for that. If you just it is as well. As well. I mean, you say, you say, dealers are a winner. Start, start, start pack, pack away. You can go in and go get in the last, last um, bag. Yeah, you can just you know haggle, haggle a bit more. more and there's a lot more wiggle room. You know what I mean? And it's and it's that's that's part of that fun as well. It's like oh, I've been thinking about that all weekend. You know, they're closing up. I should buy it. You know, that sort of thing. You know, that sort of thing. Do you know? I'll give you a good example of that. Like at Minicon. Like, I've been walking around all day just doing my staff thing or whatever. And then by the end of the weekend, I was like, I want to buy something from Toy Food because charity. One of the support. Nice Toy Food. Nice. <laughs> so I'm at the Toy Food store, and one of the Toy Food guys has ironically a Beast Machines figure. Okay. Now, as much as it's the greatest series of all time, I cannot support the toy line. But I was like, Do you want to buy this for six quid? No. I want to buy something. I don't want to buy that. And I looked at them, and their table had been like desperate. But they've just stood there. It's behind me, you probably can't see it in this light, but uh, there was a East Wars 2 Galvatron, I think it is, the big pink fella. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I was like, what's wrong with that? They're like, nothing's wrong with it. I'm like, why is it still here? I don't know. 
hasn't sold yet. But yeah, it has. <laughs> and so, like, so, so I had that. Mm-hmm. But I like that as an example because, like, that's a figure I've always wanted. And one which, realistically, I'm never going to get other than a, a toy food store. Mm-hmm. And it was one of the last figures on the store. It'd been there all day. I hadn't seen it because there were so many toys. So you're absolutely right. It's, it's always worth that last look on a Sunday. Like, also, like traders replenish their stock when things sell. Mm-hmm. So they might sometimes, like that figure had been out, but they might put something out that they didn't have room for earlier. And it's like, oh, I, can't, I didn't see that earlier. So, yeah, that's yeah, it. That's it's, it. Really, really. it's always so my, my it's point look. was that having mini bots and uh, mini cons and whatever, just anything tiny that I can get for like a pound of coin. I love it. Mm-hmm. That's, 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 sometimes it's good, good, to, good to rummage. rummage. You know, sometimes it sometimes it feels in the box and the bottle is just just, 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 just gack or whatever. Gack you just whatever. rummage, you do it and you find some Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Pound? Sure, pound. sure. Mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I bought one year. You'll have to help me. Because um, it's the week before a convention, so I'm knackered. I'm <laughs> not losing my words. Um, G1 Headmaster Blue Helicopter Guy. Oh, highbrow. Uh, highbrow. Gorge. Gorge. Right. Gort. Right. I bought one year from Kapow a Gort with no arms. Right? Mm. And like it like a quid or something because it's ragged and it's still my goal to this day i've never replaced yeah. it because it's just the greatest thing ever um, and i tried to convince everyone all weekend the buy of the weekend guys was the endless <laughs> um, but like stuff like that like, you remember that it's got a story it's got a memory attached i was saying because i mean i look at my black zara just to mention him again yeah yeah it wouldn't be the same <laughs> Yeah, they're all the same. But but I look, I look, and there's a, and there's a story there, there. there's a tangible memory. You call them, but I remember this and the moment I got this, you know. Yeah. And, and that's the way Becca held it. Way Becca was like, oh, she's still in the baby Jesus. It was amazing. No, but that's what I mean. I look at my collection and I just think, oh, somebody gave me that. I bought that. I bought somebody or, somebody or you know, I bought that from Kapow or Tofu or, or wherever. And it's just like, and did that mix. And that mix. Just a nice thing to look at. You know? Know? Yeah. You know? yeah. What I find on a, a purely personal level is that, like, every few years I try and fail to thin the collection out. I get rid of it. And I keep it. But. It's always the one I buy myself because I don't. Let me, let me rephrase that. It's always the one that I buy myself off like eBay and stuff that I get rid of. Mm. Because it's mm. probably a nice figure and that's why I bought it, but I can always buy it again in the future and it, I'm not sentimental. Mm. Yeah. Mm. If I bought it at the convention, stood there with my mate, Russell, or whoever, you know what I mean? If I'm stood with someone, there'll be a memory attached to it. That's a token of a moment. It's the moment that I remember. It's the memory that I thought really. Mm. And, you know, mm. That star screen is it's just a thing that triggers the memory. So they're the ones that are harder to get rid of. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But then I, I'm, I'm, then I can't, I'm, I'm like, I can't, I can't, I can't sell, anything sell anything because, mm-hmm. because I look at it and go, look at it and go. There's a reason why There's I bought it. Why I bought it. it, it, it because I wanted it. I wanted it. And, and they become, they become, you know, there's that express you know, doll, that old adage, you know, the collection, you know, you, know, you become part, part of the collection, part of the collection. But do you ever but, buy yeah, anything yeah. and you think, why did I buy that? Do you, ever, do you ever look back and think, that wasn't my wisest decision? Though? No, I just no, look at it. Because it's like, 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 I bought it. Right now, I've got the money's money's limited. It's kind of like, kind of like, that's cheered me up, cheered me up a bit. You know, it's a bit angry and stuff and stuff. Bought a figure and it's cheered me up. I'm going to play with it. And then I got right, I've got a review on it. But I look at my figures and go, these are my boys. I can't get them. You know? You know? Yeah. 
I mean, yeah, there's this. I mean, yeah, a lot of Beast Wars stuff. A lot of Beast Wars stuff. That's a lot of storage. storage. A lot of storage. I haven't seen it for like 10 years. years. 10 years. But I, I can't I bring can't myself to myself. I'm going to set all that with this on eBay. You know, I'll give it to Tony Furl. I can't do it. I can't do it. Something in my brain. Something in my brain. No. No. I think it's. I think it comes down to. Like you said, I can always buy it again, but. I remember trading trading, trading, trading cards with somebody a long time ago, and, and I traded a card that I only just got back there, and I never, never got it back, back, back for years, and years, and years, and years, and years. And it was just, and kind, it was just kind, kind of like, like, if I get rid of it, I might get it again, you know? Yeah. You know? Because I, I did I sell did my unicorn trilogy, so I kick myself every day, every day, because now somebody's going to get money, money. Hmm. And I, and I sold it now, now, now almost twice, twice, twice all the time, but you know, it is what it is, it is. Do you, do you guys know Andy Turnbull from the TFN crew? It's what, sorry? It's what, sorry? Do, you, do you guys know Andrew Turnbull? Yeah, I know yeah, Andrew. Andrew. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So Turney does this thing every year. Um, he's unstoppable. Quite <laughs> it's not worth speaking to him. It's happening anyway. But he will buy something, often from toy and then we donate it to Toy Fair, so they get to sell it twice. Because he's like, I get to buy the toy, I experience the toy, I enjoy the toy, I donate it. He has been known to then buy it back from them again. There was, <laughs> there was one occasion, he tells a story better than me, because I can't remember the figure. But there was one occasion where he had donated the toy and bought it back before posting it. It was still in his house and he was like, actually I could go there again. But technically I've given this to Tom Fu. <laughs> Best pay him for it. So legend. Absolute legend. Um, yeah that's yeah, that is that is, that is that a new, new type of like <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> But there's something to be said for it because like you know in this culture where like obviously right now I'm not going to get political, but like mm-hmm. everyone's got a lot of money because of what's mm-hmm. going on in the world. So, so like, there are these things at the moment where like, like you can hire dresses instead of buying them. For instance, yeah, yeah. Or you can do, like all of this has come down. Isn't it sort of just like hiring a transformer? It's like because mm-hmm. you only own. I mean, you never get money back on the hire, do you? You might get a deposit, but you no, no, so no. Like, you pay for it. He enjoys it for the amount of time he wants it for. And then moves it on and enjoys something else instead. I, think, I feel like there's something healthy about that that I wish I could do, but I hold mm, on to mm. all of this stuff instead. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, the way you know, the way, you know, know like now years old, like, coming to my house and they've passed on and they've just been every, every room full to the scene of Johnson. Those are very. I'm getting very, I'm getting very buried. I'm getting 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 buried. <laughs> what you need not to get morbid if you don't have one you need a will right <laughs> yeah you need yeah. to specify that in it and i mean this in the nicest way to it. And, uh, yeah when you've got a big collection i think we owe it to let our family to have a plan for it and the plan might be they keep it that's cool as long as yeah well. but like <clears throat> the might be the toy food. The, the I was going to say, I think, I think, I think so much stuff. If, if, if I was going to, if I was going to pass, I would, before, before we, we, I, you I would, will have done by the way, it will happen. I would I donate would my collection to the place now, except my Zara, except the very Zara, and my masterpiece, and my masterpiece, and all my other sandwiches, and all my other sandwiches, and the Beast Wars, and the Famagee Wars, and the Famagee Wars. You'll enjoy this, Tony, I was saying to Dave Wallace, I think it was good. Like, if somebody, if John Hasbro came along mm. and he was like, right, I'm going to delete Transformers from history, it never existed, ever, well, all memory gone, but you get one Transformer as the Earth's only reminder of Transformers, then for me, it might not be my favourite Transformer. Quintessential transformer 
I would say, do you want self mm, mm, Absolutely. Because I just think that, because there were so many cars, there were so many jets, and mm, Optimus mm. Prime's a big hero, I'm only one of it, he's another vehicle. Like, there were so many unique things about Soundwave that, like, if I needed to introduce someone to Transformers for the first time, genuinely, that is where I'd start. Just mm, have a look mm. at that. Because it's a whole playset in itself. Um, well, it's that, and you watch that, the cartoons, he's watched the cartoon, like the yeah, yeah, yes, he's got the coolest, coolest voice voices. He's the only he's one that sounds like robotic, like everybody else, else is, you know, yeah, heroic, heroic and, and, and he's, he's a true robot. robot. And then he's got, he's got you can eject laser beams and ravage and all that, so you've got, you've got, you know, that, that, that playability as well. And the fact that robots in disguise, a cassette player in your house, could be an evil robot. Yeah, Honestly, yeah. I, it's, to me, it, he's the quintessential transformer. Mm. It's just, it's sandwich. Um, and it always will be. And I think you look at characters over the years, and a lot of characters just get name slapped for trademarks. But like every sound wave, pretty much, are very nice. <laughs> They're always a bit different, but they always pay homage to that original sound wave. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Lot of except, except, except the bear there, but less or less like that. But to be fair, though, even that, like it wasn't much, but like you got Frank Wild for it. It's like, mm-hmm. it's, it's like there's, there's something like some of those characters were so unrecognizable, yeah, that, yeah. they weren't the characters, but like something about Soundwave, it's like nobody wants to disrespect him too much, so. no, no. And John, I think, I think you're going to pass out there, mate. Is it nearly, uh, is it nearly bedtime? <laughs> I'm alright for, for five hours, hours yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, no, hey, I, I think, think there is something about, about um, G1 Soundwave. Sound like that. That. I mean, even, I mean, even, even, even look at um, um, Cybertron the next time we saw Soundwave again. It looked like G1 Soundwave. It had a laser leak, had a similar sounding voice. Anime had a similar sounding voice and a similar look. So every time every time they're on the sound, sound it's more or less like yeah. you know, even homage is even you see a G1 sound in Cybertron cartoon that you keep pressing the, the play button, 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 you know, amazing, is it? But but no other characters are like that. I mean, you know, Starscream and the others, like you say, when names names like the others, they just keep the trademark. Yeah. You know, but Soundwave is and always will be Soundwave. It's just a really important character. Yeah, yeah. The Transformers just, yeah. If, if, if I could only keep on, be sound with. Because, like I said, I mean, if you look, if you if you look at somebody our age, age, age and have the toys, but not a fan these days, 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 maybe seen them in the you know, yeah, or even maybe not seen not seen. You said you remember Transformers, brother? Yeah, I remember Rams, yeah, Rams, Rams, Starscream, Rams, and the cool, and the, cool, and the tip, 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 with the cool box. Cool box. Yeah, yeah. The amount of people, obviously. Since the movies, it's different. I'll mm. buy the Adam's logging off. I have to wait because he's he's like played a lot of those questions. So. But um, yeah, before the movie, the amount of people I'd ask about Transformers and they didn't remember Megatron. No, no. Um, and that's no diss on Megatron, but they always remember Soundwave. Because cool. he's just because he's, he's the best, he's the best one. Yeah, and, and, you know, and, and, and <clears throat> he just has, he just that, has that. I like the fact that like, if you read the original bio, the original bio, bio every, all the Decepticons all hate him because he knows he stuff about them and knows. they can't do anything about it. <laughs> because, because, because and he's, you know, he's, he's basically he's, Mr. He's, he's Mr. Smithers. 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 Yeah. 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 But does a better job. Does a better job. You know. All right then, lads. I'm right, probably going to bring this to an end, this to an end in, in a couple minutes. In a couple That's okay. Minutes. You all ready? ready? You all ready? I think you should. I think it. I think it looks like it's uh, sleep time. Yeah, four this, hours. Just four hours. Minutes, this was practice. <laughs> four and a half hours. Four and a half hours. <laughs> four and a half hours. Four and a half hours. Too long. Too long. Some people will say it's too long. Too long. Awesome. Well, look. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. It's it's like a once a year thing, but it's always fun. So mm-hmm. always mm-hmm. always cool hanging out with you guys. So thank you very yeah. much. And thank no, you for well, well, yeah, well, thank thank yeah, well, thank you thank for, for taking the time. Out of your busy schedule. It's well. It's well. Spending an hour and a half hours. Yeah, it's been great. It's been great. Always a pleasure. 
Yeah, we'll see you in less yeah, than we'll a week's time. Less than a week's time. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. When are you guys getting there? Thursday. 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 Cool. I will be there Thursday. I think I'll get there Wednesday, but I don't encourage anyone else to. Um, but yeah, cool. I'll see you then, folks. You will. See you soon. Take care. Bye. 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 Still recording, Jeff. Still recording, Jeff. You need to press the button. I don't know. I don't know. Day I'm until you press the button. <laughs> <laughs> no, you hang up. You should go straight into next year's TFM. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See how long it takes John to find the button. <laughs> <laughs> we may be here a while. A while. I found, I found it. it. I found it. Found Tell it. my family I love them. See you soon, everybody. Thank you for having me. It's been fun. Cheers. Bye.